Hi there, my name is Dan Scott, and in this course, you are going to learn how to make beautiful graphics in Illustrator. Now, you won't just learn how to use the tools, uh, you'll learn them while creating beautiful, real-world, uh, portfolio-ready projects. We'll start easy and fun by learning how to draw with simple shapes. You'll finally master the pen tool, giving us amazing creative freedom. You'll be given your own unique mini brief for your very own farmer's market product. You'll explore creative brushes, lines, and strokes to enhance your designs. You'll be empowered to create seemingly impossible illustrations using the latest tools, including some of the new generative AI features in Illustrator. So cool. You'll master how to create and manipulate type like the professionals do. You'll finally learn where and how to pick great type and color combinations. Once you've mastered the tools, you'll have fun putting your new knowledge into creative action. And you'll learn how to get your designs out of Illustrator ready for all sorts of different applications. So if you've never opened up Illustrator or you've opened it and you struggled a bit with it, this my friend is the course for you. We're gonna start right at the beginning and work our way through step by step. Hi everyone, hey, it's time to get started. Uh, first thing we need to do is you need to download the exercise files. Uh, there'll be a link on this page here, so download them and unzip them, you'll be ready for the course. Uh, inside those exercise files, there is a handy dandy, uh, a, what is it called? Uh, shortcut sheet, <laughs> that's what it is. So I've made a shortcut sheet for us. Uh, so print that off, stick it next to your desk and be, really to circle the ones that are really important. Um, so yeah, download exercise files, print off the shortcut sheet. Uh, what next? Oh yeah, download the software. Uh, so go to this link here, uh, download Adobe Illustrator. Okay, there is a free trial. If you do use my link though, uh, Adobe gives me a small reward for sending you there, or you can go to Adobe directly. Up to you, either way, make sure that Adobe Illustrator is installed. The other thing is, is that I can get quite excitable and talk really fast, especially in the morning after coffee. So if you find me too quick or too slow, that happens, uh, there is a cog down in the corner, click on that, find it. There's like a playback speed in most players uh, and set me to a slower speed. I sound a little weird, but you will get used to me. Or you can speed me up, up to you. Lastly, uh, the software updates all the time, really fast. And uh, just check, there might be a pop-up like this one, okay? over here. Taylor does pop-ups if there is just a small change. If it's a big change, I'll re-record it. If it's super new, you might check out the comments. The comments is a great place to see if, um, you know, I might have left a note, another student might have left a note. You might have a really unique problem and one other unique person might be down there having the same problem and found a solution. Check the comments. Um, but for now, let's get started with the course. Hiya, hey, this video we are going to talk about what Illustrator is great at, what it's kind of mediocre at but still gets used for, and what it's not good at, when you should maybe look at some of the other uh, products to go and use. So the things that it are really good at, I'm gonna check my list before I get started, wait there. Okay, hopefully I've memorized them all. Okay, the big ones are things like illustration and drawing, perfect. Uh, logo design, branding, Illustrator's perfect. Uh, flyers, posters, stationery, stickers, icons, fashion, pattern making. Oh, I'm gonna have to check the list. <laughs> Wait there. All right, there was posters and sign uh, sign writing that I didn't say. Got close though. Uh, so you get a sense of what Illustrator's for. What it gets used for by lots of people, and you can totally do it, but it's probably not the right tool for it, just so you know, um, is say web design and UI design is one of them. Um, mainly because there are, you can do it, and you can, you, there's lots of features in here you can do for that sort of stuff. Okay, but there are products like Figma or XD or um, Envision Studio, or there's lots of other products that are just more focused on doing it. You can design them in Illustrator, but adding all the interactivity can't be done here. So it's better to go to those tools. Um, the other thing that it's probably not good at that gets used a lot for is um, newsletters and magazines and books, okay? Um, but earlier on I said it's good for newsletters. It's great for newsletters that are really small, okay? Um, not physical size, but more mm, two pages, four pages, maybe eight pages. The problem with it is Illustrator is designed like under the hood, I don't know why, but it's designed to do illustration amazingly quickly and beautifully and it's great. But as soon as you add lots of volume to it, like lots of pages, it starts struggling. Especially if you start throwing in lots of big high quality images, 
oh, it gets tired and slow. You can do it, but you will eventually go, ah, okay, and that is where something like Adobe InDesign, that's what it does, okay? It does a little bit of what of Illustrator does, okay, but it allows you to do multiple pages, load, you know, you can throw InDesign and say, open a 300 page document, and InDesign will go, okay, now you're open. If you say that to Illustrator, it kind of curls over, dies, and steam comes out of its ears. Like, it just can't do it. Okay, so, a um, few pages, fine, in Illustrator, lots of pages you need to move to InDesign. Um, the other big thing that's in the gang of Illustrator, okay, he's got InDesign by his side, often you'll be back and forth with those. If you're a designer, or a book publisher, or um, <laughs> those things, okay. Um, the, on the other side is Photoshop, okay, where does that go? So Photoshop is for retouching images. Illustrator, you can do tiny changes, you can do tweaks and color shifts, and but you can't mask anything, you can't cut anybody out, that is Photoshop's job, okay, so, any sort of photo manipulation, masking and cutting, um, gets done in Photoshop. Illustrator does all the illustration and creating lots of little elements, okay, icons and buttons and titles and drawings and all sorts of cool stuff. And then um, InDesign is over here for if it gets published in a larger book. Um, did that help? Hopefully it helped. Anyway, that's what Illustrator is really good at. And average at, and can't do it all, 300 pages. Steam. Uh, all right, that is it. I will see you in the next video. We'll actually open the program. Let's do it. Hi everyone. Hey, in this video, we're going to do a quick tour around Illustrator and um, do some of the basics to get us going. All right, first up, let's open up a file. So with Illustrator open, let's go to File, let's go to Open, and I want you to find the exercise files that you've downloaded. Um, one thing, sometimes people try and open up the zip file that comes down, you just need to double click that, okay, and open it. So in this case, I double click the thing I downloaded, and this file has everything that I need in it. Okay, if you don't know how to unzip, double click it. If you still can't do it, just Google unzipping on my computer, you'll get there. All right, the file that I want you to uh, open is something called Getting Started. So open up that one there. It should look something like this. Everyone's is gonna look slightly different. A couple of things I want us to do just to make sure that we're all the same when we're walking through it, yours doesn't look too different from mine, is up here at the top it says Window. I want you to go down to Workspace and you should be on Essentials, give that a click. Okay, and then go back into here and say Reset Essentials, just so that everybody's is the same and looks like mine, hopefully. Next thing is, is that some people are centimeters and millimeters people and other people are inches. So with nothing selected, so what I've got is I've got my black arrow. This is kind of like the default thing that we normally go to as a tool. Um, click on the background in this gray area, okay? So that means you've got nothing selected. And over here under the properties tab, depending on where you are, click on the properties tab. And here it says units, look at that. Pick your unit of choice. The next thing I'm gonna do for this course is I'm gonna make my UI bigger. So everything's quite small, I've got a lot of space, but it's not good for these videos because you need to see everything. And you might find this quite useful if you find everything's just too small to read. Okay, so go up to Illustrator, go to Preferences on a Mac. Okay, if you're on a PC, it's in a slightly different place, it's under Edit. Okay, and down the bottom here will be Preferences. So whichever one you're on, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna go to click on Illustrator and go to Preferences. I'm gonna find this one that says, oh, where is it? User interface, that's it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, do I want it small, medium, or large? I'm going mega large just so that you can see it easy. You pick the size you like. I'm gonna to have to restart. It'll say, you need to restart Illustrator for this to work. And I'm gonna say, okay, and I'll be back in a second. There you go, giant Illustrator for your viewing pleasure. Up to you. So I'm gonna go back to File Open, and actually, I'm gonna hit Cancel. I'm gonna to go to File, Open Recent. There he is, getting started. Handy. Okay, so everything's bigger. I'm pretty sure this will work for the course. It's pretty ginormous, but hey. The other thing that's gonna change depending on when you start this and what version of Illustrator you have is this toolbar changes quite a bit. They add bits to it, they move them around, they cut it down. So uh, let's have a look at it. So see these little dotted lines right down the bottom here? Okay, I've got these currently. Illustrator or Adobe have decided that these are the ones that are gonna be really important. And then they go, Ah, then we're gonna move this one off and shuffle them around. What you can do is if something's missing through this course and you're like, hey, he's got this tool, I don't have it, or I have too many. 
what you can do is click on these little dotted lines down here and there's all of the tools I've ever made, loads of them. So have a little look, you might be like, oh, there's that one he's using. Okay, the Polar Grid tool, which you're not gonna use. You can click on it, there you go, got the tool, click, hold, drag, and you can kind of find a spot for it. There you go, now you've got the Polar Grid tool. I'm gonna drag it out. But if you do lose a tool, it's probably in these little dots down the bottom here. The other thing about the toolbar is that, see this, depending on the size of your computer that you're using, the monitor, okay, small little laptop, big screen, it might be in single or double. Okay, so see this little, tiny little uh, chevrons here, if you click them, two columns, one column, up to you. I'm gonna leave mine one column. Next thing is the page size. So we call it pages, everyone calls it a page. Illustrator call them artboards. Okay, so pages are artboards. I wanna change the size of my artboard, aka page. Okay, to do that, you've got a tool for it. It's this one here. Okay, if I click on it, okay, I don't know how to describe that. Uh, rectangle with little slashes off the side. Okay, it's the artboard tool. It just selected my artboard, I don't have to do anything. And over here, it gives me things like, what's the width, what's the height? And you can go down here and say, actually, I want it to be like US letter, but I want it to be portrait or landscape, okay? Or I can just type it in up here. I need it to be, I don't know, 10 centimeters wide now, okay? So that is how to change your page sizes. I've gone and wrecked mine. I wanna put mine back to that postcard size. This gives me an opportunity for this tool. So I go up to edit and there's undo. Edit, undo, edit, undo, edit, undo. And you can click that like a madman. Um, you can go to edit and see the shortcuts here. All the shortcuts are listed next to it. I'm in a Mac, so mine's Command Z. So I never go up to edit undo, I just hit command Z repetitively to go back. Okay, on a PC, it's control Z, there you go. Undo's forever. Another good point, Mac versus PC, you can totally do this course with either. I'll try and give you the shortcuts for both of them the whole way through, they're the same, same. There's no better using one or the other. I'm using Mac for this course, you can use PC, no problem. Okay, a couple of the basic tools just so that we can get them out of the way. Um, there's the two arrows at the top here. There's I call them the black arrow and the white arrow because that's what they are. Um, but there's the selection tool and the direct selection tool. Okay, so we're gonna start with the black arrow, the selection tool, and it does what you think it does. It's the main tool that you'll use. You'll click on things, okay, and move them. So click it once and then click, hold, and drag with your mouse. That is the selection tool, move stuff around. His best buddy that we use lots but not as much is the direct selection tool. This selects parts of parts. <laughs> so let's click on this part here. You'll notice that I'm going to, actually, we're going to jump to another shortcut. Um, actually, no, 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 hold off on the shortcuts then. And um, the direct selection tool means instead of moving this whole thing, which it kind of can, you got all this other detail. What it means is let's click this top point once. You see it's kind of a dark blue and all the rest of them are white. I can click and drag that. So direct selection kind of selects parts within a part, okay, like little, these they're called anchor points, okay, and you can click on this one, click hold and drag it over. So you get into the details. So I'm gonna hit undo, hands up who knows what the undo key is. Ah, good work. Command on a Mac, control on a PC, and Z. Okay, I'm going back those couple. There you go, we're gonna use these two loads. If in doubt, be on the black tool, be on the black arrow. It's like your default, not sure what tool to be in, be in that one. Now the shortcut I didn't wanna give you is the zooming in and out. Because there is a way, there's a tool down here, it's the magnifying glass, you can click on it, and then you click once to zoom in, okay? Hold down the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and click once to zoom out, okay? Or I click twice, okay? So let go of any key, zoom in, option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and click to zoom out. Nobody uses that, you can though, there's no rules. But the shortcut is, and I'm not gonna go into too many shortcuts, because this is the essentials course, just the basics, okay? Is hold down Command on a Mac, Control on a PC, and hit the plus key. Hey, I go in, and then the minus key. Okay, so hold down Command on a Mac, Control on a PC, plus or minus to zoom in and out. There are many other ways to zoom. If you know them, you're awesome. Leave them in the comments so other people know the ones that you prefer. If you do get lost like this, like I just did, I was clicking away and I don't know where I'm at now. You might be over here. You'd be like, oh, everything's gone. Okay, uh, to get back, okay, you can go to View, okay, and there's this one called Fit Artboard to Window. Okay, that's the kind of get everything back on screen and I'm lost. Okay, so view, fit artboard to window. You can see there's a shortcut there. I wanna tell you that one, but nope. Let's save the shortcuts for a little bit later. The other one you'll need is let's say we zoom in. So what was the shortcut? You remember, command plus, 
control plus on a pc so we get down here and you're like oh awesome i just want to go over there a little bit you can use these guys see there's a little scrubber bars we know these ones right everyone knows these okay it's easier though to learn a shortcut remember not too many just the real ones just the essentials we need okay hold down the space bar key on your keyboard okay you see my little cursor changes from an arrow to a little hand and we can click hold drag around look he grabs it grabbing grabbing clicking and dragging around okay that's how we navigate or drag these Next thing, let's go to file and let's make a new document. Okay, so file new and you can pick from, let's just pick whatever's first in your, whatever one you can see, anything. Everyone's will be a little different. Okay, I'm gonna pick US letter and I'm going to, man, this UI is actually maybe too big. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make it a little bit smaller. Um, cool, let's ignore that and let's go to create. What happens in Illustrator and most Adobe products is you end up with two tabs. Look, this is the document that I made and this is the old thing I was working on. You can have lots of them open and you can get between them by just clicking the tabs. And the last thing I wanna show you is where everyone gets lost really early in the course uh, is uh, something called isolation mode. Okay, so I'm going to go back to view and let's go to fit upward to window. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group a couple of things together Okay, and then show you where you're probably gonna get lost. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to my black arrow. There it is there, I'm gonna click this once. Okay, I'm gonna hold my shift key down on my keyboard. Okay, and I'm going to click this once. And I can select multiple things this way. So I'm holding shift down the whole time, just clicking a bunch of stuff. Okay, and I can move, Oh, what's that? I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> Let's ignore that. Um, so what I've got them all selected, I'm going to go to group. So over here in my properties panel, there's a group. Okay, or you can right click it and there's a group. They are grouped. Nobody's lost. Aha. But if you're a double clicker, if you love double clicking stuff, okay, uh, you will get into this area. So if I click on this, look, it's one unit. But if I double click it, everything else goes washed out. And like, I can't click on this. It's not working. Uh, well, I can work on this, okay, in little bits, but I can't work on this. How do I get out? The easiest way to escape isolation mode, we'll do it properly later in the course, but just to head anybody off if they do get stuck, you can double click the background. Okay, that gets you back out of it as well. Okay, double click to get in, double click to get out, double click to get in, or you see this little arrow here? You can go back and it just takes you out as well. That's where you might get stuck. I can go back a couple of arrows, there we go, all the way out. It's called isolation mode. This is to do with things that are grouped. And if you double click stuff, you'll end up in there. Uh, but that is it, uh, boring walkthrough done. Let's get into some exciting making stuff in the next video. Um, in between videos though, I'm gonna make my UI a little smaller. Look how gigantic it is. It seemed like a good idea, but I can't live this way. Too big. Let's find a middle ground and I will see you in the next video. See you there. Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to draw this sleeping fox. Okay, we're gonna draw it with simple shapes, uh, rectangles, triangles, stars, lines, curves, just basic stuff so that we can learn the fundamentals of Illustrator. We're actually only gonna get about this far, two triangles and a curvy rectangle, but there's lots of foundational fundamental stuff in this video, so don't skip. Plus we'll learn how to bring in images and lock them in the background so that we can trace over the top. All right, let's get going. All right, uh, first up, we are going to create a file. Either click this button here or file new to you there's a bunch of preset sizes along the top here okay we're going to go to an easy one that we probably all know and love we're going to use us letter if you're a metric person just use letter <laughs> okay so i'm going to use letter and over here i'm going to go uh, portrait i'm going to go landscape okay and get started the other thing we're going to change is under color mode down here okay we're going to change to rgb Okay, uh, we'll talk about color later on in the course. RGB is kind of more of a computer screen color. CMYK is more for commercial printing. Ours is gonna stay on the computer. You have more colors in RGB, so we're gonna keep that. Things are brighter and nicer. We're not worried about rust effects at the moment. Leave it whatever it is, and then let's click create. Next up, uh, we're going to all draw from our pitch that I've drawn. Okay, like a hand drawing. We're gonna bring it in and trace over the top of it. Uh, just to keep everybody doing the same thing and not getting too lost. So we're gonna to go to file and we're gonna to go to this one called place. Okay, file place is the same as file import. Uh, Illustrator likes to be different, like the only program ever. Okay, so go file place. And I want you to look in your exercise files. Okay, and there's one in there that should be called sleeping fox. Okay, and before you bring it in, what I want you to do is there should be some stuff down the bottom here on a PC and a Mac. I'm not actually sure if it's on a PC as well, but if you can't see the stuff down the bottom, there's a little options button. Show us the options, because we want to do this. 
template. I'll show you what it does. Instead of just bringing in a, an image, okay, what it'll do is it'll do some fancy stuff for us. Let's click place. Okay, what's fancy about it, Dan? Uh, it is kind of washed it out so we can draw over the top of it. Normally this would be solid black. If we go to our layers panel over here in the top right, okay, it's put it on its own layer. That's this one here. It's locked it so we don't wreck it. Okay, and we can turn up visibility on and off so we can see it, but it, see that little lock there? It's locked it and it's made another little layer for us to draw on. So it's just a tracing layer. That's why it's good. They call it a template. Thank you, Illustrator. Okay, go back to properties and we'll start drawing. First thing we're gonna draw is we are going to draw a rectangle. Very exciting, there it is there. Click on it. Okay, if yours is somehow on something else, okay, any of these tools that have, see the little uh, chevron or the little triangle in the bottom corner? That means there is, if I click hold, hold, hold my mouse down, there's stuff underneath it. Some of them don't have it, but a lot of them do. Okay, so if you've got something other than the rectangle tool, click it, hold it down, pick the rectangle tool. Okay, so what we're going to do is draw the body here. So I'm gonna start at a point I can see, click my mouse down, hold it, and just kind of cover it. We're gonna be really rough here. We're not gonna be like surgical precision, but you can kind of see that looks like it kind of covers the body. Nice. Once you have drawn it, if you've done it terribly, what we can do is we can resize it, okay? And that is the black arrow. See this one here? Okay, remember this has kind of like really big movements and the direct selection tool does little parts. So let's click this top one, okay? And you can grab any of these uh, squares in any of the corners to go, yoop. Okay, and move it around and kind of get it close and drag it along there. You can grab the corner ones and resize it. Okay, there you go. So get it something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now what we want to do is play around with the stroke and the fill. So depending what you last drew, yours might look different from mine, yours might look the same. Um, we've got over here a fill of white and a stroke, which is the line around the outside, of black. I want to give it a fill. So click on the little, uh, this little square here next to the word fill. If it's not there, okay, grab the black arrow. Okay, if it's gone, you've got to click on the object. Okay, and if you can't click on the objects, maybe click on the edge of the object. If it doesn't have a fill, it means you can't click the center, so you might have to click the edge. So black arrow, have it selected. You should see the fill over here, and we're gonna pick a fox color-ish, anything you like. You can have a green fox, a blue fox. Okay, next thing I wanna do is I just click off and that little panel drops back in there. I'm gonna get rid of the stroke. At the moment, if I click off in the background, can you see there's a black stroke around the outside? If I select on it and say you, my friend, so click on that box there that has the stroke color. Okay, you might have this one here, you might not. This is the none. The little red line means I have no stroke. You can do it with the fill as well. I can have no stroke and no fill. It's not very useful <laughs> as a rectangle, okay? And it's really hard to select afterwards, so uh, don't do it. You can grid the edge though, okay? But I'm gonna have a fill and I'm gonna have a stroke of none. There we go. We've done a rectangle. Only took us a couple of minutes. <laughs> we'll get faster as we go. The other thing about fill and stroke, we're using this one over here. You can totally use this one over here. Same, same. Okay, I can click the fill. Actually, I gotta double click it. And I can drag this slider up and down to pick different colors. I can move this little circle around to pick colors within, uh, shades within that color. Okay, and same with the stroke. I can click on this one here, the stroke of the background. Double click it. Okay, and and the same thing here, I can drag this around and drag within the hues of here to pick a stroke and a fill color. I'm gonna hit cancel and to get rid of this, I can go up to here and just pick orange, that'll work, but I can use the undo. So undo is under edit, undo. The shortcut, it's one of those shortcuts you're gonna use a lot, okay? It's on the shortcut sheet that you've printed off or write it down, okay? On a Mac, it's command Z, control Z on a PC, okay? And you can go back, loads <laughs> i don't think there's a limit on it okay so just keep hitting undo either coming up here or using the shortcut to go edit undo until it's back to where we didn't break it all right the next thing we're going to do is the radius of the corners let's do something fancier now with my black arrow okay i can click any of these uh see these like little targets in the corners if i click hold and drag it look at that we've got rounded corners look at us but you'll notice that if i move this out of the way i only want two corners done so i'm going to undo undo Okay, remember mine's Command-Z on a Mac, Control-Z on a PC. And what I want to do is actually just do one corner. Okay, so I can click on this once. You can kind of tell, can you see the target looks a little different? Yeah, <laughs> it just looks different. Uh, click, hold, and drag that one. Look at that. Same over here, click that one once, drag that up. Cool, don't worry for this video, we're just making it good enough. But if you did want it to be perfect, I'm undoing again, you can click one, hold, shift, and click the other. Holding shift and clicking multiple things will kind of select both of them at the same time. 
Now, with nothing held down, I can click and drag one of them, and look, they're both perfectly the same. And my drawing's not perfect, so don't sweat it if yours isn't. Okay, I'm sweating it because I want to move it out. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there you go, rounded corners, awesome. Next up, let's draw the head. We're gonna use the polygon tool, which is uh, a triangle's a polygon. There's no particular triangle tool. Okay, we've got the polygon tool. Remember to get to all these other tools, just click, hold it down, hold, 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 and pick polygon. Now by default, it probably picks this. I just clicked and dragged out. Okay, I don't know, octagon? No, that is a pentagon, hexagon, pentagon. I think so, anyway. And um, what we can do, if we want all the options, because we want triangle, we just want three sides. Okay, what you do is with the tool selected, just click once, and then you get given things like the radius, which is the size of it, and how many sides. I'm gonna want three, because I want triangle. Whatever gets drawn, will do. Okay, it doesn't matter if yours is bigger or smaller or if it's crooked or not crooked. Okay, we have got a triangle. What I would like to do now is scale it and rotate it to kind of sit over the top of this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, show you how to scale and rotate. Grab the black arrow. Now, you can do it over here. Look, if we want it to go 90 degrees, you can just type it in 90 degrees. <laughs> I didn't want it to go 90 degrees. You can get it to go minus 90 or 270, whichever you prefer. Okay, so that's one way. The most common way of doing things is actually just doing it with the black arrow tool. So look at this. And when I'm hovering above these corners, there's two options. There's this one, the little double arrow, and then the one just a bit further out, there's this like no man's land, right? Like this, this one here is actually scale. We'll do him in a sec. But the rotation one is not there, but just a little bit further out, but not too far, because <laughs> it goes back to the arrow. Somewhere in here is this magical land of rotation. So what we're gonna do is click hold once we see it, okay? If you can't see it, remember, have this selected, find the magic zone, click hold and drag it. You can drag it any which way you like, okay? What I wanna do is get it to lock into kind of commonly used um, angles, which is holding the shift key down. So I'm still dragging, hold shift, and it goes in 45 degree angles. Boop, 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 boop. There you go. So I want it pointing that way. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is play around with size. Okay, and we kind of saw it before, any of the corners you can rotate or do size, doesn't matter, um, up to you. So I want this little stretchy arrow thing, okay, and I can drag it any size I want, okay. If I want it to be like, I don't want it to kind of distort, okay, you can hold down the shift key, like we did with the rotation, that really common, that shift key, okay, to get things to kind of go to normal sizes, or in this case, it constrains the height to be the width as well, so it kind of gets proportionally bigger. So get it close, move it. I'm gonna grab the center of it. Sometimes you need to grab the edge of it if you don't have a fill. Okay, I'm gonna get it close to it. Hold my shift key down. You can hold shift before you start dragging or afterwards. Get it close enough. All right, so we've got a head. It's a big triangle. And um, I want to do a couple of things, but I need to be able to see the thing in the background. So we've added fill and removed the stroke and all of this. I want to select this, hold shift to select the head as well. Okay, so we've got them both selected. And then I'm gonna say that fill that we just picked, I'm gonna switch you to none. And the stroke, okay, I have to kind of click off to get the little box and close up. Okay, so I just kind of click off in the background. If you do click off in the background, like I accidentally did now, kind of on purpose, not really, okay, is even though I can't see it, it's got no stroke, no fill, I can kind of hover around and eventually there's this thing that says, hey, there's something here. It's got no fill or stroke, but I can click on it once, hold shift, try and find that one. Now I've got them both selected. They both have no fill, both have no stroke. Let's give the stroke black, okay? Just so I can see the outside of it. And clicking off the background, because what I want to do is get this to be the right size, okay? I pretty much got it before, it's close enough. Okay, uh, I want to play around with the corner options down here. So I'm gonna click off, and click here. Now I want the corner options down here. I want around this one. It only has one target at the moment, okay? So what I can do with a triangle is we've been using the black arrow. I told you that you use that mostly and use the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow for little pieces, okay? Because what it really wanted to do is just do all the rounded corners. Just kind of ignored these down here, okay? Just didn't have them. So if I go to the uh, like direct selection tool, which is like the details tool, it gives me more details. I'm gonna click on just this target, okay, and drag this one up. Nice. So you end up toggling between these two loads. I'm back on my black arrow. It's my like default tool. It's the one you end up falling back to. Now let's draw the nose. We're gonna do another triangle just to practice. So we want the polygon tool. Okay, I'm going to, if I click out and drag, you notice it going from a pentagon to a triangle automatically. It just remembers the last thing you've done. 
what I want to do is that I want it to come out at some random shape and angle and size. I'm going to hold down, maybe the key that kind of constrains things. Do you remember what it was? That's right. Hold down shift key. You can see it kind of locks it into position and I can pick a rough size. And for good measure, we are going to look at the black arrow and we are going to get in that no man's land, not size. We're going to rotate it, hold down shift. So it kind of gets it into the right angle that we want. Now it has no fill. I can see no fill, no stroke. It remembers the last thing we did. Okay, and I'm going to drag it over. You can either, I end up dragging the, the line. You can drag the dot in the middle. Okay, that if you find that more handy, okay, I ended up dragging the line for some reason. So we're going to get it down to kind of where we need it. And then we're going to zoom in. <gasps> Who remembers what zooming in is? That's right, plus. That's right, command plus on a Mac, control plus on a PC. Come in nice and close. Remember, hold down the space bar with a hand tool just to kind of get it in position. And what we want to do is we want this. I've got nothing selected, so I just click in the background. I want this to line up perfectly with this. Sometimes, if you try and do it, watch this. If I grab the edge here, so it's this is what happens. It's easier to have it deselected because I want this point to line up with this point. If I grab it to start with, and what you'll notice is there's all these words, right? Okay, they're called smart guides and they're helpful. It says, do you want to grab the anchor? And you're like, yep. Do you want to grab this path, which is the line? Nope, I want to grab the anchor. Okay, if you can't see any of those words, go up to view and make sure your smart guides has a little tick next to it. Okay, and what we're going to do is grab the anchor and say, you go and match that anchor. And it kind of gets close to it and it should snap in. If you're zoomed out, which is command or control minus, it's a little hard to do it. Watch this. If I try and do it out here, it kind of it's a bit jump. And that's what can frustrate people in Illustrator. But if I zoom in, it kind of says, I'm really focused on this area. Okay, so I can drag you. And it's just a little bit, you know, nicer to work when you're zoomed in. Okay, and you see in this case, what it said was intersect. Would you like this anchor to intersect with this one? Yes, please. It's a bit big, so I'm going to hold down my shift key and make it smaller, then grab it again. So remember, I deselect it off and then just grab the anchor, get it in there. Look at that. What I like to do is give it a fill of black. And does it need a black stroke? It can, it can't. I'm just going to turn it off. Okay, so it has a fill, but no stroke. Command or Control minus to zoom out. There we go. Got a head with the nose. All right, it's a long video and we haven't done a whole <laughs> a whole lot. What we can do is we go to our layers panel. Let's turn the visibility of our template off. And this is it. <laughs> we hit the big time. Uh, but it's giving us a sense of the tools. Let's get on to the next video. We'll draw the eye and the whiskers and the stars and all the rest of it and start coloring it in and making it look awesome. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, in this video we draw all the rest of the stuff. Stars and grass and ears and whiskers and things. Okay, we're going to learn primarily the line tools, the arc tool, the star tool, but there's just so much other foundational stuff that we'll cover in this video. So let's jump in and draw more fox. Quickly before we get started, um, I was looking just about to get started and I was like, my pencil has a line through it. I know what's wrong, but if you were following me and kind of fiddling around with your layers like I was in the last video, actually I did it for the intro, and it was because I had locked that layer or turned the eyeball off on it, okay? I can't draw on it. It goes, well, I can't see it, okay? So you can't draw on it. So if you do find yourself locked like this with a pencil that says, uh-uh, okay, uh, make sure the layer is turned on and you might have to click on the word. You see it goes blue? Means that I'm working on that particular layer. That's more important when you have multiple layers, but there you go, you know. All right, let's actually get started. Okay, my properties panel, I am going to draw the whiskers. Okay, so what I want to do is let's grab the line tool. The line tool is hiding underneath the, uh, all the rest of these ones. Okay, so rectangle tool, hold it down, line segment tool. Just drawing a straight old line. Okay, I'm going to zoom in again. So command or control plus, space bar, hold that down, move it around. Or remember, if you prefer, you can just drag the little sliders. And I've got one, two, three little whiskers to draw. So all I'm going to do is click, hold, and drag down there. Okay, so click one, hold, and drag. Mine looks weird because it has no fill, no stroke. See there? It remembers that because that's the last thing I did at the end of the last video. I was messing around with fills and strokes. Okay, so what I want to do is I've still got it selected. If you've lost your selection, okay, so remember black arrow. Okay, click off in the background. I'm going to click on my line that I can barely see. I'm going to say you have a black stroke. Okay, no fill. You can have a fill on a stroke. So this line here can have a fill, but you'll never see it because it's just one single line. Okay, so I'm going to go back to none. And um, the next thing I want to do is with it selected, I want to bump up the width. At the moment it's a bit thin, one point. Okay, a point is the default that Illustrator uses. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, I don't know, four, 
four, five, four, five. Okay, I'm gonna use five points for this. Okay, I'm gonna grab my line tool again. Okay, I'm gonna click, hold and drag this one. Remember, it remembers the last thing I did. I'm gonna try and do this one as well. It's kind of overlapping this, that's okay. Now one thing I've done is I've made sure to draw these separately just to make this exercise easier because watch this, if I try and get them all from the same point, like one and I go two, <laughs> <laughs> two. I'm trying to draw from that corner there, but it just keeps moving it. Okay, if you do want to do that, okay, grab your black selection tool, click off in the background. It's called deselecting. Back to your line tool, then you can click and drag. Okay, black arrow, click off, line tool. There are quicker ways of doing all of this. We'll get into them in the course, but that is the easy peasy way to get them all going from the same point. But I just made them all separate. Okay, so one, two, three. The next is going to be the eye. We're going to use the arc tool. Okay, the arc tool used to be in the tool panel here, but they've gone and moved it, like I said at the beginning, under these three little dots. Lots of tools. We It's shuffled over here because not many people use it once they've learned the pen tool. The pen tool, which we'll learn later in this course, is a little bit trickier to learn than the arc tool. So getting started, scroll down, scroll down. Where is the arc tool? I can see it. There it is there. Okay, so I'm not going to drag it over into my toolbar because we're not going to use it much, but it's really handy to get started to draw simple things. I'm going to click on it. Okay, and over here, I'm going to click, hold, and drag something. Now, it's not going to line up perfect, and I'm okay with that. Okay, so I'm just going to draw something that kind of resembles the right arc, and then I'm going to rotate it. The right arc <laughs> is up the wrong way. It's okay. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'm undoing, and I'm going to start over here and get it kind of right. It's closer, but now I need to rotate it. But we know if we go to our black arrow, okay, and we grab this random area, we can rotate it around and get some sort of arcy goodness. Here we go. Perfect. The arc tool. Now we're not going to do it in this video because I drew no circles, but your eyeball could be open. And we could just use the ellipse tool, which is hiding in that same group. And we could just drag out a circle. If you want it to be a perfect circle, imagine what key we could hold down. What could it be? <gasps> it's the shift key. There you go. You could draw a open uh, or an awake fox. That's not what I want. Okay, so I'm going to grab this. Drag the stroke over here. Here we go. If you are finding it hard to move, remember, grab the actual line here, maybe not these edges. Okay, these will just resize it. But if you grab that line part, you should be able to move it around, making sure you use the black arrow. Woohoo. The next one we're going to do is the star tool. Okay, so the star tool is mixed in with all of these fun guys. There he is there, star tool. Okay, and I'm going to click, hold, and drag out and kind of get it close. Knowing that later on, I can grab my black arrow and I can resize it. Okay, holding shift so it doesn't go all squidgy and I can rotate it, okay, by clicking in that kind of like no man's land. So practice drawing the first two stars. My stroke remembers the thick stroke I had here. So I'm going to switch him back down to one for the moment. Actually, no, one up at five. There we go. And grab the star tool, click and drag this one. If it's in the wrong position, black arrow, grab the edge, not the fill, because I don't have a fill and just kind of get it close. And um, just a quick little note for the star tool. If you want something other than the traditional uh, star, okay, like we do the triangle, just click once. Okay, and you can get how many points? Well, if you want your stars to have six points, uh, there you go. If you want to, I'm going to click once again. Uh, if you want it to be more spiky, you can make the distance between these wider. Okay, so at the moment, these are half and half. You see 12 and 6. Yours might be set to inches, but it'll still be half. If I make this say 20, can you see it's more spiky? So the inner radius is that one there and the outer radius is that. So if the further apart they are, the more spiky it gets. You can do the same where if you get this pretty close, if I make this 18, you get a pretty lame star. All right, and click once, go back to, I had 12 by six and I'm gonna do five stars. I use the tab key to go through these little fields. You don't have to, but I did it and I forgot and I assume you're gonna go, how did he do that? There you go. Um, so there we go. We've got one, two, do the third one, rotate it around, and then I'll show you another thing we'll do is instead of just using the star tool, we can copy and paste these. So with it selected with our black arrow, uh, copy and paste. On a Mac, it's Command C, Command V. On a PC, it's Control C and V. Okay, your normal copy and paste. I'm gonna go copy, I'm gonna go paste, and then you can go, yep, yep. Okay, and make your own sound effects, doing it. Okay, copy paste, and let's do this last one. And another one. All right, let's zoom out. And um, sometimes it's good to just zoom out completely. So instead of going uh, command minus minus minus, you can actually just go command and hold down 
that's control minus 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 on a PC. Instead, you can hold down the command key or control key on a PC and hit zero on your keyboard. See in the top layer there, there's one, two, three, hit zero, command or control zero, it just kind of goes out to the full screen. And then we have our stars, woohoo. All right, let's start coloring this thing back in. So I'm gonna select on the edge of this and I'm gonna go, you have a fill of that. You also have a fill of maybe just a lighter version of that. Okay, I'm gonna have no stroke. I wanna do it to both of these. Okay, so I'm gonna select this first one, hold shift, grab both of them and say the stroke is none. Okay, you see this is a fill. The fill says, I don't know. Why is it saying question mark? It's because I have two different fills, a lighter orange and a darker orange, and it doesn't know what to display. It doesn't matter, okay, but that's what that is. Next thing I wanna do is, everything's looking all right. Let's do this air here. So I wanna use my triangle tool again. So it's under polygon. I'm gonna click once to make sure it's set to three. Perfect, black arrow. Okay, I'm gonna move to my shortcuts for the black arrow. If I hover above this um, tool, can you see it gives me a little example of it, but it also has the shortcut key. Same with the direct selection tool, it's A. So I use V and A loads. Look at my toolbar over here. Okay, if I go V and I go to A and I go to V and I go to A, okay, just toggles between those tools, just save some time. You don't have to, uh, it's on your shortcut sheet, but there you go. So I'm my V key and I'm gonna go, yep, I'm gonna drag you close enough. I'm gonna give it a fill, I'm gonna give it a stroke of the, um, that light orange that I'm using. And I'm gonna give a fill of white because that's the kind of thing I want. I want the stroke size to be up. I don't know, four looks good. I'm gonna zoom in, okay, command or control plus, and I'm gonna resize it to make it look kind of like the hair that I had. Just to make it a bit bigger so it sits behind the head. Now, we're gonna bring up a very important point, layer height, or they call it a range. Okay, at the moment, the last thing you drew is on top. That's worked out so far, but now I want this behind the head. So I've got it selected. I'm gonna to go to this one that says arrange, and I'm gonna say send to back, okay? And it will send it all the way to the back. Okay, so now it's at the bottom of everything. There we go. You can select it and right click it and say the exact same thing, arrange, okay? There's a few different places you can get to it, even shortcuts eventually that you'll get used to. All right, so my ears behind it. Let's finish this off. Basically, we're gonna kind of use flavors of what we've already learned now. So you can skip ahead if you're like, I can make that tail, go and make the tail. If you wanna watch and do it together, let's do it together. So I'm gonna go with my rectangle tool, click and hold down, okay, grab my rectangle tool, draw them out, okay. Remember with smart guides on, it should snap. Can you see it snapping to the bottom of the tail there? And I'm gonna do a couple of things. I want it to have a fill of the orange that I'm using the orange, I'm gonna have a stroke of none. I'm gonna play around with the corners because I can't remember, black arrow. What do we got? That one and that one. So I'm gonna go U, hold shift and grab that one and drag them both up. Perfect. Now I've got two options now. I can draw another rectangle to get this kind of center bit and do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna go copy paste and I'm gonna shrink it down. And I'm gonna put them in there. I'm gonna give them a fill of white. Okay, because this is what I'm looking to do and get them kind of in there, drag them this way. Oh, he snapped there. Weirdly, watch this, I can't make it any smaller, okay? And I was like, huh, it's because of that big radius, watch this, when I get down to here, you see the radius is kind of forced and it won't go any further, and you're like, huh, oh, why won't that go any further? Okay, so I'm gonna say you get smaller so that I can shrink this smaller. Do you get what I mean? That radius is still holding it open, but not as far now. So I'm gonna do something like this, and something like this, Something like that, good enough for me. Now while I was drawing it, I'm thinking, does a sleeping fox have his tail up? <laughs> I think he should be like this. So holding shift to click both of these. So generally what I do is I go click once, hold shift, click the second one, give him a wiggle. That way I know I've got both of them selected and I can use my rotation. I totally missed it. <laughs> give me a rotation, holding shift so it locks down. Like, is that a better sleeping fox? I might have to change the color of it, but Maybe that's better sleeping. Anyway, you decide, my ones are like alert sleeping. So he's gonna be, I'm gonna hit undo a few times. So it's back to where I got it. All right, there's the tail. What else we need to do? Um, we're gonna change all the colors of these. So you can go click once, hold shift, grab the edge, grab the edge. That works totally. But sometimes with the black arrow, you can just drag a box around stuff. It's easy because there's nothing else in the background. If you drag a box around all of this, watch that, we'll grab too much of the fox, that's bad. So I'm gonna grab all of these and I'm gonna hold shift and grab these two. That could be a little bit of a time saver. 
Otherwise, shift click them all to select them all. I'm gonna make this stroke uh, orange. I'm gonna finish off these guys, okay? My little uh, grassy things in the background. So what I might do is, actually I might just pop him over there. I'm gonna grab my uh, polygon tool and I'm going to draw out a triangle. Hold shift to get it perfect. And then you're gonna go hit the V key to go back to my selection tool and just kind of make some grass parts. Okay, so I'm gonna go something like that. Q. I wanna make mine kind of like an off gray color. It's gonna be like that nighttime scene you saw at the beginning. So, ooh, I'm gonna go copy paste. So I've got two of them. Okay, rotate them around. Actually, I might shrink it down first. Then rotate them around using any of the corners. Use your own zoop shortcut voice uh, sound effects. Okay, I'm gonna get mine to kind of overlap. Same here. Sometimes it is tricky to get the rotation. You can see me, master of Illustrator, <laughs> clicking and dragging and missing. I'm gonna shift click all these, copy and paste them. So I've got two copies. And then this one can be over here. I'm just gonna shrink the whole lot of them. Okay, holding the shift key down. This is just the smaller one there. Okay, next thing I want to do is uh, Command minus, Control minus to zoom out. Put this back. When I want to put this back, I want it to kind of snap in there. So I'm gonna go U, snap in there. Remember if it's not snapping to stuff properly, you need to double check that view and the one called Smart Guides is on. All right, last thing I wanna do is put a sky in and a background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. Okay, there it is there. And I'm gonna start in this bottom corner, drag up. I wanna kinda of get it so it, you'll see it kind of like sneaks to the bottom of my fox. It's pretty good at snapping to the edge. I'm gonna go fill that same light color, okay? And now I'm gonna do another rectangle, okay? That goes up the top there, covers everything and ruins it. But we know that I can say, actually let's give it a fill color. I'm gonna give it a dark gray color. And I'm gonna go arrange, sand to back. There we go. Look, it's our fox. Cool, huh? Just some simple shapes and lines and I don't know. You can get quite far in Illustrator just with the basics. Um, a couple of takeaways before we move on is that it can be easy to draw over the top of something. Uh, especially if you don't have maybe a history of illustration. It might be easier, like me, to draw it first, trace it, use an image as a reference from, I don't know, Google Images, okay, and draw it over the top of that. Stay tuned to the end where I show you my actual drawing. All is not what it seems. The other thing to remember is that we are sticking in this course just to the basic shapes. You'll end up doing kind of combinations of tools to get the desired result. Some shapes, some pen tools, some shape builder, all the stuff we're going to learn. We've stuck to just the basics here, so there's loads more to come. And the other thing is that if you have got lost, okay, like I said in the earlier video, if you double click anything, you end up in isolation mode. Everything grays out, you can't click on it. Who remembers how to get back out? You can hit away at this arrow for a while or just click, double click on the background anywhere or hit the escape key. Okay, that'll get you out as well. So if you get stuck in isolation mode, escape using the escape key. There you go. Oh, and one thing before we go is that we've covered our background. So under our layers panel, if you do not have this, I'm just clicking it and hitting my delete key. You can see all the lines poking through in the background. To turn it off, this is our like visibility icons. So if I click on this, okay, it will remove that template that we're drawing over the top. Remember if I turn it back on, turn the top one off, is my drawing gone? So I don't need this now, but because if I go undo, undo, undo a few times, undo, undo, I've covered mine, so it can be on, it can be off, nobody's gonna see it, but if you can see the background, you might wanna turn it off. And last thing I said I'd promise is that we've been following this drawing here. Oh, look how sharp that is. It's not sharp, but it's very clear, right? The actual drawing <laughs> that I would have drawn from was this one. Oh, wrong screen, there he is. Look at that, Jim. <laughs> That's the design I was going for. So what often what I'll do is I'll draw it by hand and then would I scan that and redrawn it in Illustrator? Probably not, too rough. Okay, this one could have, okay, could have easily just scanned that one or take a photo of it, bring it into Illustrator as a template and drawn over the top. This one here, <laughs> not quite, a little bit rough. All right, so that's it. You don't need to be a great drawer to uh, work in Illustrator. I just rough it out on paper. You don't have to, you might choose to. Sometimes I go straight to Illustrator. Um, but yeah, there you go, that is it. I will see you in the next video. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the exciting world of scaling stroke and effects and corners. Woohoo! I show it to you early because this is gonna happen. You're gonna select your fox and you're gonna want him to be smaller and you're like, okay, cool. What's happening? What happened to him? Okay, the stroke stayed the same size,
but the actual object got smaller. So these just end up with these big chunky lines and not sure what happened to his whiskers. They're the exact right size they were, but they didn't scale down. How do we fix that? Sometimes the opposite happens. You've drawn this, okay, to try and match this, but it's the wrong size. Let's make it bigger. <gasps> okay, I've got it the right sort of size, but the lines got really chunky. Now I want the stroke not to scale. How do I do it? Let me show you. All right, to find the settings, uh, you have to have nothing selected. Okay, so either just click in the background like we've been doing. There is the long way, select, deselect. Okay, if it's grayed out, it means I've already deselected. It's done. Okay, and if you've got nothing selected, you'll notice over here in my properties panel, there is these two scale corners and scale stroke and effects. I can't think of a time where I have only one of them on and just the other one off. Okay, I turn them both on and both off. I'm sure there's a really good use case. I don't know what it is. And what we'll do is let's with it off. Okay, let's just move this background over here um, just so it's a little bit easy to select. And watch this, if I scale it down a little bit, so I've selected everything, black arrow, grab it all, and over the top here, I wanna scale it proportionally. What do I hold down? That's right, shift. Okay, so it scales down. If you do this, you'll probably not notice. I'm gonna turn the background layer off just to tidy things up. Okay, you'll probably just notice, like, it looks fine. But once you get down to this, look what happens. Look what happens to my poor fox. <laughs> okay, it's so a command or control plus, plus, plus. Okay, and oh no. Okay, so it is keeping it's not scaling the strokes and it's not scaling the radiuses as well, the corners. Weirdly, it's clearly scaling these ones, but not this one. That seems to happen when we do just two of the corners, not the whole thing. If we did all four corners, it'll scale like this one here and get, it'll try and retain the original corner radius. Okay, so we wanna turn that off. So I'm gonna undo, so it goes back to giant version, uh, command or control zero on my keyboard to see it all, okay, and to scale this properly, we'll have nothing selected, okay, and go over here, scale stroke effects and scale corners. Now, when we make it smaller, okay, it all comes along for the ride. Look at you, command plus, 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 or control plus on a PC. Okay, so there'll be times where you need it on and off. When do you need it off? Because most of the time you'll have it on. That's the good default, just have it on all the time. Uh, the time you'll need it off, let me show you for instance. So I'm gonna undo till it's big, command or control zero, and I'm going to grab, or you can all do it. Go to file open, okay? And in your exercise files, there's something in here called the icon heart. Okay, so open that up, okay? And I've got it here. I've drawn a little heart for us. We'll draw hearts later in the course. But let's say that using our current tools, we've got this icon. I need a search icon, which is gonna be, we're gonna use the ellipse tool. Okay, and I'm gonna draw out an ellipse. Actually, I'm just gonna click and drag it, holding shift, so it's a perfect circle. Okay, and I'm gonna get it to about this sort of, so I'm gonna do mine a bit weird, like, let me just do mine too small by accident. Okay, so you're either drawing in different documents, bringing people's different icons together. Okay, the other tool we know how to use, line segment tool. Okay, and I'm gonna go click and drag. There's my fancy search icon. So why did I do this? Because icons, they need to have the same uh, width to be consistent, right? The stroke width has to be the same. So if I select this and go, or well, have nothing selected, okay, and say, those are both on, okay? So I Dan said, leave them both on most of the time, unless I select both of these and I go, oh, I need you to be a bit bigger. Can you see it's scaling the stroke and now they don't match. This one's got a big, thick, chunky stroke of 76 and this one has the appropriate 40. Okay, so you'd be like, ah, oh, how do I do that? <gasps> it's because I can select them. They've both got 40 now, but I can say, nothing selected, turn those both off, grab you and scale it up and it keeps the stroke width. Okay, it doesn't change it. Over here, with it off, it's a pain in the butt, okay? Things get smaller, oh, there we go, select, hold, shift, scale. Okay, it kept the stroke size in the rounded corners, and we didn't want it, okay? Whereas in this one, it's handy to have them off because we want to get it to the right size, but keeping all our strokes and all radiuses so that things match up. A bit advanced, but I guess I can't show you one without the other, and people run into that problem all the time, okay, by scaling things and things just not doing as they expected. Let's play it out a little bit more just to drive it home. So I'm gonna select both of these, copy and paste it from this document, which they're an appropriate size, let's say, to our fox. I paste it in here, you're like, ginormous. Okay, and if I have this uh, scale stroke and effects off, like it was, okay, select all three of these, quite tricky. Okay, and scale it down. Oh no, so the thing that was useful in this document, <laughs> matching them, is now a pain in the butt. Okay, so I'm gonna undo, 
turn this off. Okay, and there's actually two ways to getting to that uh, scale stroke and corners. Okay, there is the way I've already showed you by having nothing selected or see in transform under this because I don't really want to deselect because it took me a little bit of ninja selection to grab all three of these. Okay, so what you can do is go into here. They're hiding in here as well. So in the tr properties, transform, it's because I've got some stuff selected. I can do the exact same thing. There's no difference. Okay, just means I didn't have to deselect and try and reselect these. Ah, perfect. Now they're going to be great icons for my, I don't know, <laughs> Fox app. Okay, so there you go. Scale, stroke, and effects. Um, a couple of things I wanted to point out is um, you can get to it two different places. You often turn them both on together. And actually, that's all I wanted to tell you. I'll show you one other example. We do this later in the course. Okay, we redraw some uh, famous logos. Okay, so with it off, so with it off, we have massive problems. <laughs> okay, um, with it on, there we go. It works perfectly. So there's lots of occasions where you actually just want things to scale. So you have them on and there's occasions where you want to turn them off. Wow. Long winded version of this, what I thought was going to be this video. But there you go. Hopefully you got a good understanding of scaling stroke and effects. Let's get on to the next video. I'll see you there. Hello, you've been holding your breath. So have I. He's like, he hasn't saved his document in this whole video series. It's still untitled three. <gasps> what will happen if his computer crashes? That is a very good point. I've been not saving just because I wanted to have this video in the course. We're going to talk about uh, saving to the creative cloud versus just saving locally to your desktop like we normally do or have done. Let's talk about the pros and cons and let's get it done. All right, so let's save it. I have been holding my breath. Um, it's been a few days kind of over making these videos. And I'm like, <laughs> luckily the software and my computer have played ball and nothing has crashed. So don't do this. I just wanted to save it for this particular video so we didn't have to cover it too early in the course. Okay, so uh, I'm going to hit save, which you should do just after making a document. And you'll get this option, which you might have bumped into already. And you're like, hey, I'm going to save to my computer. Go away. So the thing you can do is don't show again and it'll remember the setting that you want. OK, um, but this little thing is a good talking point. So let's talk about why you would save to computer versus cloud. When this first came out, I just went save to computer because that's what I knew and loved. Now I only save to the cloud. OK, there's very few times where I save to my computer. And um, so why is the cloud so good? You can still save to computer. OK, no big deal. It's the same as it's always been. OK, but the cloud has some perks. The big perk, well, the big drawback, what people think is the problem is if I'm offline and I've saved to the cloud, I can't get my file. That's not true. OK, there's a special file on your computer that will be up to date that you can open it even if you don't have an Internet connection. And when you do get your Internet connection back, it syncs it up with the cloud version. OK, so it works like exactly like working off your computer. OK, um, this one here is great. I don't use it that much. So syncing to all devices. If you're using more than one computer, OK, you can have access to this file without having to share it with them or put it in Dropbox or it's just available in your Creative Cloud account. So if I've signed into my Adobe account on my I've got a PC as well as a Mac, I'll have access to both files, which is handy. I don't use it that much you might be switching between computers and that might be super handy. Uh, this is probably the biggest one is it's always auto saving. So, you know, if you save it to your computer, if you haven't saved for a few hours and it crashes, you're doomed. Whereas the Creative Cloud one is always syncing and always updating. And it's not like if you've got a really big, say, Photoshop file open or Illustrator file open, it isn't trying to upload that huge thing every time. So if you've got a really weak um, internet connection, it's pretty clever. It only updates the things you've tweaked. So only the layers that you mess around with or it's only updating the new text layer that you've added to the file. So it's quite mm, precise. Nice. Uh, version history we'll talk about later on. You can go back through your documents. We know, well, you might not know, but with a desktop version, once you've closed the document, you can't go back and go undo, 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 undo. Okay, you can do it while the program's open, but with the Creative Cloud version, you can keep going back to when it was first created, all the different stops, anything that was accidentally deleted, you can go back to. For me, one of the big perks is sharing. Okay, it's called Invite to Edit. I can share it with other team members, colleagues, people, and I can share this document. I don't have to like email them a link or I don't have to, um, you know, email the file or try and zip it up and send it to them. You can just share it. Um, there's an option up here, which we'll cover later in the course. So there's loads of perks. What happens if you fill it up? 
I haven't filled up mine yet and I use it, you know, I'm pretty heavy user with the Creative Cloud. I think I've got 100 gigabytes. Check your plan, how much you've got. It'd be around that sort of number. Um, yeah, uh, if you're on uh, Teams or an enterprise license, it'd be a lot higher, you get terabytes. But for me, I still haven't bumped into my 100 gigabyte limit. You can pay to upgrade that, okay, or clear it out or, but. I haven't um, had to worry about that just yet. So there's loads of storage. Um, so I'm gonna save to the cloud. Actually, let's put the don't show again in case you've done this already. And I, if I go save to cloud and you're like, oh, I wanna save to the cloud now. There's an option to say save on computer. Okay, and over here, switches back to save to cloud. On your computer, save to cloud. It's a bit kind of confusing. So if you have ticked that off going, I'm never saving to the cloud. Okay, you can get back to it there. Okay, and back to cloud document. So I'm gonna save mine. Uh, mine's going to be called Sleeping Fox V1. Okay, and I'm going to save it here. Now in our case, we have a document uh, that is linked to this document. And in our case here, we have a file, okay, the traced image, maybe the hand-drawn one that is actually linked to this file. And it's just saying that this is on your computer and not in the cloud version. When we get to the end of the course, when we're a bit more handy with Illustrator, I'll show you how to embed them so you don't have to worry about this. But for the moment, it's just letting you know that we have a file on my computer, okay, that is currently not saved with the cloud version. Let's click OK. If you did then, okay, get to this and you're like, ah, I don't want it to be on the cloud, you can go to File, Save As and save it on your computer. Now the last thing with the uh, difference between desktop and Creative Cloud is when I close this, either hit the cross or go to file close. Okay, so we're kind of out of that. Um, you've got a couple of ways of opening documents. Okay, often I'll be at home. This is probably the easiest way because down here you'll see stuff that I've worked on. Uh, there you go. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter if it's on your desktop or if it's in the Creative Cloud. Okay, that little tick means uh, it is available offline and it is a cloud document. This one here is just something on my machine. And this is one of those things where you're like, hey, why has he saved it to his computer? There are times where I do it. A lot of the time it's for your exercise files for this course, okay? Because I want to give you a nice handy zip file. And often I'll do things like that is actually something that was 3D printed and needs to go off to a, uh, my 3D printer here. So it can't be on the cloud because I need to actually stick it onto a USB stick and carry it over to my 3D printer, okay? So home is the best place to open these things. You can get it open, okay, like normal, and it can go to your desktop, okay? Or you can open Creative Cloud Documents and it opens up this one. Again, on your computer, opening Creative Cloud Documents and you can see stuff you've been working on. Another way of opening uh, files that you've been working on is actually probably the handiest one of all is file open recent files. Okay, and it's got stuff that I've been working on. Okay, and there it is there. Many ways to open files. All right, let me know in the comments. Are you a Creative Cloud person? Were you old school and want it on your computer all the time? Let me know if it's just habit or whether there is some special things you need to kind of be aware of or in your job. And if you're watching this video, take a look at the comments. There might be something that is useful to you to know about the differences. All right, saving files. Who'd have thought it'd be such a long video? And now I can finally <laughs> close Illustrator. It's been open for a few days and because I've got finally got a save file. All right, on to the next video. Good morning, it is time to talk about exporting. Uh, I've had lots of caffeine and I am bursting with enthusiasm. Luckily, we're talking about exporting, which kind of tames it down a little bit. Um, but we need to do this early on in the course. We're not gonna get too deep into exporting now. Okay, we're gonna do that at the end of the course. You'll see there's a big chunk on getting really good at what and how to export. Um, for the moment though, early on in the course, I want you to share your files. So I'm gonna have to show you how to share files. So we'll just do a little run through of exporting. So let's jump in. Okay, to export, just go up to file, go down to export, we're gonna use export as. Okay, and there's a few formats down the bottom here, okay, that you should be able to go to the drop down. And there's some that you'll recognize, some that you won't. The main food groups in terms of exporting images is PNG, JPEG, and WebP, which is the new one. This is the one I'm gonna encourage you to use through this course. Okay, it's new, it's great, the quality is great, the file size can be kept very small, and it's the kind of new kit on the block and it's really well supported now. Let's do this one first and then we'll use PNG as a backup. So do WebP, okay, and I'm gonna put mine on my desktop in an exporting folder that I made. I just made a new uh, folder to stick stuff in and I'm gonna save this. Um, now, in terms of these settings here, okay, from Illustrator, we're not gonna get too much in the weeds here, we're gonna go lossless, okay, and down to resolution, okay, 
screen tends to be too small. Medium is great. High is too high for what we need in this course, unless you're going out to print. Again, we'll cover it in more detail later in the course, but the basics is lossless and 150. Leave everything else alone and you will be perfect. Let's click OK. OK, so we have a WebP. The file size is nice and small. It looks great quality. OK, the other one, WebP is newish. If you're like, oh my goodness, I'm not using WebP. It's too new. Um, we can go to File. We can go to Export. There will be stuff where you might be uploading it. It'll go, I don't understand what a WebP is. OK, and in that case, go to File, Export, Export As, and go to the alternative that is almost just as good, okay, a PNG. And do the exact same thing. Let's go to export. And in this one, use medium as well. Often, screen is too small, high is too big, print, really crappy version. Medium is great, right in the middle. Again, leave everything as is, and you'll end up with very similar files with very similar file sizes. Can you see the PNG is just twice as big, and the quality is indistinguishable. That's why we like WebP, especially on the internet where file size is, is super important. If it's going out to print, your t-shirt printer, your sticker printer, it won't matter. And you might find that WebP is not accepted because, I don't know, it is really common-ish. <laughs> but you'll find some systems that are old and just go, nope, I don't know what that is. I don't want it. Give them a PNG instead. Uploading files for this course, WebP. Unless you get stopped somewhere and then use a PNG. All right, so we'll cover the, again this later in the course. There's an exporting section, okay, where we can get nerdy on this. I love getting nerdy on it. Um, try not to get too nerdy now because we're trying to keep you enthusiastic about Illustrator. And we're not going to talk about raster settings and lossless and all sorts of other good stuff later in the course. We can nerd out together. Uh, for the moment, that's it. Uh, that's how you export from Adobe Illustrator. Let's get on to the next video. Hi everyone, it is class project time. That sounds like homework, Dan. It is not homework. It's a class project. It's very different. It's not very different. But I promise you, the people that go to the trouble and bother doing these small little class projects that are throughout the course are the people who are going to remember the tools better, get better at their creative work. So how do you get started? Um, so in the exercise files, you will find a PDF in there called class projects. Open it up. It'll tell you what to do. I will walk you through now. Okay, so if you haven't signed up for Illustrator, the software, you should have by now, but you can do it. There's my link. And um, then I want you to go to this thing that me and the team created called randomprojectgenerator.com. Okay, you'll end up here. And go look for the one that says Illustrator Essentials. Click that. And then enter these two things. And we're going to give you a brief to work from. Why is this useful? It means that we're going to all create stuff throughout the course that's not the exact same thing. We're not all drawing the same fox. And we'll kind of build on top of things as we go through the course so that you've got something for your portfolio at the end. So do the class projects. That's my advice. To get started with your own very unique random project, enter your village. So I live uh, in Adir, okay, or very near Adir. That's my little village town suburb. And then pick a name. My hint down here, you can pick anything you'd like. Uh, I've said use your own name, use your grandmother or grandfather's name, or your child's name, your dog's name. I don't mind. Okay, so I'm going to use my Nana's name. Her name is Merle. She is awesome. And we're going to uh, create my project. And there you go. I've kind of made something kind of unique, but we're all doing the same thing. So we have been asked to make a farmer's market uh, product design. So Merle has come to you, or at least the person who is making Merle's special sauce. Okay, yours will be different. It'll be your name plus random uh, farmer's market product that I've put in there for you. So I've picked all the ones I could think of. That's will make your branding unique. Let's talk about what we're going to be asked to do. So you've been asked to create a brand for a new business uh, called Merle Special Source. You can read. I'll read it to you. Uh, so the client is a small company. They're looking to sell their product at your local farmer's market. Okay. Uh, they make and package everything themselves. Hopefully you get the vibe of what, it's kind of like small time stuff, right? Making in their basement or in their kitchen, whatever it is. I've got a target audience. Okay, women, higher average income levels. That's the generic age for people going to farmers markets in general. Okay, a little bit more about them, have a little read. Now what they want is they want from you a logo, a flyer, product sticker, business card, and some social media stuff. We'll do that through the course together. Now for this video, this is the main part, is they want you to pick an appropriate creature. Okay, so think of something, not a fox, because that's what I'm doing for my special source through the course. Um, so pick uh, anything. Um, and I we're going to use it to draw 
and practice throughout the course and we'll use it in the branding. So save it down the bottom here. We've got a download as PNG, should be WebP, okay? But uh, download as a PNG, save it so that we can use it as part of the course. So you remember what product you got, don't hit retry. And what I want you to do is just use whatever you got. As my uh, farmer's market product, it's great to push yourself outside of things that you might not know. And so yeah, don't hit retry. Definitely don't hit it three times, whatever you do. You've been warned. Okay, so we've got our brief. Uh, let's have a look at the class, this class project. So it says, do that, we've done that. Okay, enter your name and location, we've done that. Uh, save it to your computer. Okay, draw your creature. So choose a creature, don't spend too much time. Don't spend half an hour searching the internet for creatures you might use, just pick one. Doesn't have to be particularly well aligned with the brand. It's not really what, it's kind of more of a technical uh, course, okay? But I don't want you getting hung up here. That's what I'm saying. You can change it later on. I'm not gonna know. Cool, and your actual project that you need to do for this one is you need to draw it. So I want you to create a new document in Illustrator, okay? Save it, give it a name. And I want you to use the basic tools we've done for our sleeping fox, okay? So no more than what we've learned here. Some basic shapes, some rounded corners, add some color. Don't get too deep into it, okay? Just limit yourself to the simple shapes that we've used so far. Even if you know a little bit more of Illustrator, just keep it simple. Now in terms of drawing your creature, that can be tricky. You might do what I did in this, is I drew it first, okay, and then um, traced over the top of it in Illustrator. You might do it that way. Or you might find an image on the internet, okay, find it, download it, and do the exact same thing. Bring it in as a template and draw over the top of it. At least get the basic shapes in there, or just make it up wing it and this is the big part don't stress if it ends up being an awkward animal just leave it just pick one it doesn't matter if it comes out not your most exciting fun amazing thing that you had planned get in there do it we will get better as we go as well through the course and you come back pick a different creature or just live with the crazy creature that you picked what I don't want this project to be is a kind of a roadblock for you doing any other class project through the course because they're really important. So when you've done it, I want you to save it. Okay, remember we did the file save as in the last video. Save it as the WebP or PNG. Just save it as WebP if you find it troubling trying to upload it to places. Most places accept WebP now. You can do a PNG. Then what do you do with it? There's two things, okay? There is, there should be a class projects, okay? Or a comment section on the page that you are now, okay? Upload it there, okay? And the other thing is I'd love to see it on social media, okay? Good, bad, ugly. Do this, because I bet you, you will find if you put this one, and especially if it's not your best, it's okay, because you can say, this is my first ever thing in Illustrator, and you can kind of diffuse the tension of like, oh, this is not amazing. Why is everyone else's amazing? Get yours up there, and if yours is bad, guess what? It helps other people who have bad ones go, huh, <laughs> my, mine's not as bad as that one. <laughs> okay, so get your bad ones up there, share it, and the good thing about it is later on in the course, when you do get a little bit better, you'll be like, ha, huh, look at that one. Look how much better I've got. So there you go, share it with the assignment section and on social media. Here's my main places, uh, follow me. Okay, Instagram, Twitter, those are great places. Make sure you tag me, okay, or put it into these groups here, these public groups. So there's a Facebook group here called Bring Your Laptop Online. There's a LinkedIn group with the same name, whichever your flavor is. Upload them there, I'd love to see them. One thing is though, is I can't respond to everybody's questions. There are hundreds of thousands of people doing the course. <laughs> it's mad, I know. So I can't get to everybody. So there's a rule for doing the course, okay? If you upload something, one thing, you upload your little creature, okay, I would like you to comment on two other ones. That's the way this thing can work, because I can't get to them all. And the comment, it can just be positivity. It can be, love what you did here, great colors. And if you're new to Illustrator and you're thinking, what have I got to say? Use that, kind of the commenting, as a really good excuse to practice your critical feedback. Okay, and it doesn't have to be bad, or like I don't like what you did here. Okay, if you're going to have something that's maybe critical and say, I love what you did here, but that often is a great way of framing, especially at this kind of level where everyone's quite new. So I love the face, and but I think you should try the legs using the oval tool, or you might experiment with using um, you know, triangles for the ears. So try and diffuse a little bit of your harsh critiques because everyone's just getting started here, but everyone loves feedback and comments. So a bit of positivity, maybe a little bit of critiquing, keep it positive, keep it in the what you might try rather than you've done that wrong, get the vibe. So we're all gonna have to chip in. I chip in loads for the comments, but I just can't get to them all. So 
you help me upload your stuff. Don't be afraid. If it's bad in your eyes, that's okay. We're at the beginning. So go get your brief, create your crazy creature and post it. It's probably my funnest part of a whole course is seeing all the different creatures that come out. Good, bad, ugly, beautiful, um, get it out there. Love to see it. Enjoy the process uh, and be comfortable where you're at. We will get better through the course. All right, that is it. I will see you in the next video. Of course, only after you've done your like not homework. Okay, go do the project and I'll see you in a bit. Hi everyone, uh, in this video we're going to cover something called the Shape Builder tool. It is by far my most favorite tool or most used tool in Illustrator. It's going to let us go from this kind of real basic shape that we start with to these things super quickly, super easily. Joining bits, breaking bits off, coloring them. And if you wait right to the end, I kind of find like some mystery shapes in that same shape. Look, it looks like a heart and leaves and then somehow I think I found a, is it a lion? kind of monkey thing. Can you see it? <laughs> Could just be me. Anyway, loads of shapes to find in these few circles. Let me show you how the shape builder works. All right, first up, let's close our sleeping fox down. Let's go to file. Let's go to open. And in your exercise files, you're looking for one called shape builder 01. Open that one up for me. Now I'll show you how I made this at the end of the video because it's not really the purpose of it, but um, we are here to learn the shape builder. Okay, and so I just, it's just a bunch of circles, All right? You can pull it apart. Okay, but at the end, I'll show you how I made this. It's not very exciting. What is exciting is the Shape Builder tool. So what we're gonna do is the Shape Builder tool needs uh, everything selected. So I'm using my black arrow because there's nothing else in the document. We can go to select all, okay? Or what I tend to do is just drag a box around the things I want selected. Great. Then we're gonna go to this tool. This is one here. It's the most magical, best one of all of Illustrator. Okay, and we're going to click on it once. And what it allows us to do, there's two modes. There's the add, can you see the little arrow has a plus next to it? If we hold down our option key, there's a minus, plus, minus. Okay, it has one other secret power. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna join some stuff up, okay? Because at the moment they're separate shapes, I can't color them, there's lines in between everything. So what I can do is watch this. I can click hold, my mouse key down, click hold and drag a line between these two. <gasps> and I joined them, look at that. Man, this tool is cool. Okay, you can decide how you wanna join them. Okay, I'm gonna draw all of those. Look at that. We've made a, I'm gonna deselect on the background, click this edge, drag it out, a giant apostrophe for a tadpole. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna undo a few times. Remember our shortcut, Command Z. What do I wanna make? I got a rough idea. So back to the um, Shape Builder tool. Okay, and I'm gonna drag, I'm gonna make that little, I showed you at the beginning, right? So I want to do, it's hard to visualize it, right? Like, let's do, that one. So we can start down here, go you, 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 you. Yeah, let's do those ones. How many were that? Four. Let's try and do the next one. One, two, three, four. Oh, we're doing it. We're doing it. Cool, hey, we've got this kind of like, I don't know, photo lens, uh, Microsoft Edge logo thing going on. Let's undo it a bit and show you one of the other ways we can use the Shape Builder. So I'm undoing, undoing, undoing. So I'm gonna go back to my Shape Builder tool. Okay, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna delete these ones. Okay, so to delete them, you hold down the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and my little arrow goes from a little plus to a minus, plus, minus. I can just click once, look at that. Gone, gone, gone. I can click and drag a bunch of them to get rid of them. Cool, huh? All right, I'm undoing again to go back to the beginning. Remember, I'm using the shortcut, edit, undo. Okay, um, the shortcut I'm using Command Z on a Mac, Control Z on a PC, and I'm actually gonna copy and paste it. So I've got two versions of it, black arrow, and try and move just one of these over. Okay, grab all of these and drag this one over. I'm using my black arrow, and I'm gonna have two things. Okay, go two different directions. Um, the shortcuts along here, okay, you know, I use uh, Shape Builder all the time. Can you see the shortcut? It says Shift M. So that's the one I use loads. Hold down Shift on your keyboard and hit M. And then I toggle back to the V key, which is the move tool. Okay, I use these ones so often. Can you see the selection tool? It says, uh, is the shortcut is V. This one has the shortcut of Shift M. There we go. So Shift M, I've got everything selected. I'm going to go and do two different options. You play around too. Okay, I'm gonna do this one, this one, and this one. And I'm gonna delete all this chunk. So I'm gonna hold down my option key. Okay, Alt key on a PC. Okay, and I'm just gonna drag all of those, they're gone. Look at that, it's like a surfy wave thing. Now I was playing around with this before, remember spacebar to move around, select them all, shift M for the shape builder tool, best tool in the world. 
I'm going to delete these because I ended up with something that looked like a croissant. <laughs> so let's go you, 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 drag, 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 drag. Man, it's hard, right? It's like Spirograph. Anybody hands up who remembers that? Let's delete this bottom one, delete that one. So I'm holding option. And I just, in that case, instead of dragging across, which works, you can just click once as well if you just want one chunk to go away. There you go. It is a cloud. I thought it looked like a croissant. Now it's more of a cloud. But have an experiment with that, okay? Get to a point you're going to end up undoing because you're going to get rid of too much or it's going <laughs> to not work out. It took me a little bit to practice to make two things that looked kind of interesting. And once you're ready, uh, let's show you the other secret ingredient for the um, Shape Builder tool. Let's do it with this one. So I'm selecting it all with my black arrow, which is the V key. I'm going to go Shift M. Okay, back to my Shape Builder tool. And I'm going to go over here and it's really good at filling things in. So I'm going to say, I would like you now for whatever I click on to be a color. So I'm on my swatches. You might be over here. Pick on your swatches and just pick three colors. I'm going to go four with three. Actually, I'm just going to pick three random colors. When I say random, I'm going to pause the video and try and pick three great colors. Let's start with this one. We're going to hope for the best. Okay, the cool thing about it is this little thing that pops out needs to kind of go back into its home before we can actually do anything. Often what I do is just kind of click off here in no man's land in the toolbar. That closes down. Now, look, my tool has special powers. And I'm going to go, boom, click once. Oh, cool, eh? Click once, click once. I can start, Oh, why can't I fill this one? You know, because I didn't select it first. So if I undo, 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 and I want to do all of these things, have them all selected. Shift M to go to my Shape Builder tool, pick my color, okay, and then I can go bam, 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 bam. Nice, eh? All right, uh, I'm going to go through and pick a couple of colors. You wait there. Okay, I'm blaming the limited amount of selection in the, uh, oh, it came out all right. Cool enough colors. If you want to get rid of the lines, you're like, oh, I don't like the black lines. Select it all, okay. We looked at this earlier. Over here where it says stroke, click on the little stroke icon here. Okay, and say you, I would like no stroke, which is the little red line. Okay, do we do this already? Can't remember. <laughs> it's been a small break in between making this video and the last one. So uh, let's go to none. So it's got no stroke. So click on the stroke and say you have none, which is the little red line. Then click off in the background, click off in the background again. And we've got nothing selected. Look what we did, just with some simple shapes. Practice coloring this one as well. If you have used Illustrator in the past and you're kind of like doing a refresher and you're thinking, could we just use the Pathfinder? This is kind of the replacement for Pathfinder. There is a small use cases where the Pathfinder is still good. If you have no idea what the Pathfinder is, don't worry. For those of you who do, you know it's the click undo, click undo, click undo until you find the right setting. But the Shape Builder does pretty much all of the jobs. Go to the Shape Builder. All right, we're going to use it more in the course. But for now, let's leave this here. And I promised at the beginning I'd show you kind of how I drew the parts. Just You can skip on. It's just I'm going to draw some circles and <laughs> line them up if you like. I probably got that. Um, move on to the next video. If not, I'm going to show you how I got to that point. So I'm going to grab my lips tool, you know, the, the point of when you opened it up. Okay. Um, so I grabbed my lips tool. I had a white fill by default. That was what the program kind of came with. So I drew out a circle. Who remembers what I hold down to get a perfect circle? That's right. Shift. Okay. Then I drew another circle. Okay. And I just guessed it. I went, oh, about that sort of size. I want them to overlap. It needed to be a little bit bigger than this. So remember, I can hold shift, grab one of the corners. There you go. So now I'm going to go back from my ellipse tool to my uh, black arrow, which is the V key. You got it. And what I'm going to do is click off in the background. And you'll notice that when I move around here, can you see path, 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 anchor, path, 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 anchor. This is like, like the tippy top has an anchor point. This mm, <laughs> tippy side <laughs> has an anchor point. Okay. What's this? I can go to this one. Here's my anchor at the top. Okay, I can click it, hold it, and because smart guides are on, it'll do things like intersect. Okay, if your smart guides aren't on, go to view, go to smart guides, make sure they're on, and then I went copy paste, clicked off in the background, found that anchor point, and then found it there, copy paste, and that's what I did. There are fancier ways of doing it, but probably just as quick to do it this way, and we haven't covered that in the course yet. So this is how I got almost to where we're at. All right, the only other thing I did was I selected it all with my black arrow and went, you have no fill, which is none, which is a little red line. And that is the thing that you saw when you opened up this video. There wasn't anything special other than just a bunch of duplicating circles. But if you do it with the smart guides on, you can line things up. Now, select it all, grab Shift M, and we can start destroying it. 
Oh man, look what we found. Well, there's a cool shapes in here. Not you. Oh, we found loads of cool shapes. Why am I so excited by the shapes? Kind of like a leaf heart thing. Anyway. All right, that is it for this video. The Shape Builder tool is awesome for making things, but loads more to go in the course, more awesome tools. Uh, let's get on to one of them. Hi everyone. Hey, just want to jump in here, see how you're doing, check in on you. How is the course going so far? It's going good. It is going good, right? You made it this far. If it is going good, can you give the video a like on YouTube? It helps out. Uh, subscribe to the channel as well. I've got loads of other content coming in the future. You don't want to miss out. Um, the other thing is, is I wanted to jump in here and explain that this is, remember, the, a short part of the longer uh, Illustrator Essentials course. So if you do, if you're like, man, this is awesome, I'd like to go further. Guess what? There's a lot further to go. This is like the first maybe 20 videos of like a 100 video course. So uh, there's a link in the description for that. Um, come check out the full course. Uh, there you go. Um, otherwise, enjoy the rest of this kind of snapshot at the beginning and maybe I'll see you in the full course in a little while. All right, on with the video. Hi everyone, in this video it's class project time, not homework time, fun drawing icons time. What I've done is I've drawn, like hand drawn some icons, okay, just so that you can redraw them using the skills that you've learned so far. Mainly the um, Shape Builder tool, okay, and I want you to redraw over the top and they'll end up something like this. They don't have to look perfect, okay? I'm not worried about whether things are balanced and uh, perfect, and there'll be a little notch probably in this, and this kind of looks more like a beach hut. And this is a phone. <laughs> I had to add the little rays here, because um, <laughs> no phones look like that anymore, and I don't know, I simplified mine for this task, so it's a phone. I want you to try and redraw it. But they go from easy to hard. Don't worry if you don't get the whole way through. What I've done is the very next video is the completed version of this where I just go through and redraw it. But I don't want you to skip there. I want you to start here. Make sure on your layers panel, you're on the drawing layer, not the background layer. Sometimes that happens. And if I use my line tool on the locked background layer, it doesn't work. It's got to make sure we're on our drawing layer, back at properties, start using any of the shapes, okay, like we did with the sleeping fox, so rectangles and triangles and lines, okay, to start drawing it, and then start kind of like adding and subtracting so that we can, uh, sorry, using the shape builder tool so that we can get to here. But again, doesn't have to be perfect. You don't even have to get the whole way through. You might give up halfway through. It's totally okay. See how far you get on your own. Then in the next video, you can compare your way of doing stuff to my way of doing stuff. It is in the class projects. Okay, where are we? There's class project doc. So open that document, use any of the tools we've used so far, especially the shape builder. Give them colors, pick one color for them all. And the deliverables, I'm just gonna say save an image now. I'm gonna assume that you know uh, WebP, PNG, export as. Okay, so save an image like we did in the last one, upload it to the assignment section. You don't need to share this on social media because they're all gonna look the same. <laughs> okay, so if you're doing the class projects, do that. Okay, upload it to that section but don't post it social media. You can if you want, if you're really proud of it or you do it better. Um, but for the moment though, it's just a practice for us to do on our own. All right, my friends, good luck drawing icons. Take as much time as you need and I will see you in the next video where I reveal what I did. All right, see you in a bit. Hello, hey, uh, how did you go in the last video with the class practice of the Shape Builder tool, making the icons? Um, this video, I'm just gonna do the exercise that I set for you um, so that if you got like, I don't know, only a little bit way through it and got stuck, I can show you the solution. Or if you got to the end, it might be interesting to see the different ways of doing it because I bet you whatever way you did it, I did it slightly differently, okay? Um, so yeah, let's jump in and let's build the icons together. All right, so I hope you tried it on your own. Uh, you shouldn't have run into this problem, but sometimes um, I've got a background layer that I've locked that's got my drawings in it, and then I've got another layer on top um, where we can draw from. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem, but it might happen in the future where you've got the background selected, you grab your first tool, and you get nowhere, and you go, it just won't draw. It's a bit advanced, but I guess it's what might happen, so I just want to mention that. So make sure you're in your drawing layer, that's what I should leave it on, so when you open the file, it's ready to go. All right, next thing, zoom in, command plus, spacebar, hold, hold the space bar down and just click and drag the mouse and let's check out this guy. All right, we're gonna start with the, let's do the rectangle tool, this is an easy one. I'm gonna click, hold and drag. Dan's drawing is not perfect, so it's a bit wonky. It's all right, we're trying to draw these, I don't know, <laughs> perfect duh. Okay, and what I might do is to see the center of this, okay, I want to turn the fill to none, just so it's a bit easier to see. 
Okay, what I want to do is grab any of the, I need to close this down, click off in the background. Okay, and I can grab any of these targets in the corner. I can just drag it till it gets close to my drawing-ish. Good enough. The next one is a triangle. Okay, so remember it was the polygon tool. If you're like, there was no triangle. Okay, there it is there, polygon tool. Who remembers, did you remember? How do you get it to go? Cause like when I draw it, it goes pentagon. Okay, who remembers how to get it to do a three side? Oh, you remember, good work, click once. Okay, sides three, radius I'm not worried about because I'm gonna change it. Back to my black arrow, okay, and I'm gonna do the rotation, remember is just outside here, so not that, yeah. I'm gonna drag it around. How do I get it to lock into um, kind of like even increments? Hold shift, you got it, okay, and it goes in nice big blocks. I'm gonna scale this one down. Okay, I'm holding shift again, okay, but I'm using that little stretchy icon. Okay, to get it down to something appropriate, grab. If you're finding it with no fill as well, and you're like, I can't drag it, it's not dragging. You can either grab this dot in the middle, okay, or I end up just, you'll see in this course, I just grab the line, that's what I end up doing. All right, shrink it down, move it into space. A little tip for you early on the course, you with something selected, you can just use your arrow keys. Can you see, you just kind of like nudge it around. There we go, close enough, and that is good. Next, I need to shape builder it. Okay, so I'm gonna select both of them. This is where everyone might have done something different. Okay, there's lots of different ways of doing this. I'll do it one way. If you got to the end your way, high five. Let us know in the comments that the way that you did it was different from mine, yours might be better. Okay, so I've got them both selected. Remember I could fill with a color if I just go to my shape builder tool. Okay, where is he there? Uh, and I'm gonna go a fill color of, I'm gonna pick a color for all of them. Uh, pick that one. Okay, and remember, click off to close that thing, and then you go there. What I'm gonna do as well is I'm gonna go stroke, no stroke, that is totally optional. Why didn't it work? Okay, it didn't work there. I didn't even realize it didn't work in that case. Okay, so I went stroke, no stroke, and didn't disappear. It's because I'm using the shape builder tool. I'm kind of doing something a bit different. I'm trying to like mess around with it. So if I grab it with a black arrow, okay, black arrow, select it all, and then go to stroke, no stroke, here we go. We've got a little icon and I can see through it. Look at that. All right, so there's my first icon. Let's go on to the second one. How do we do this one? First of all, it's a bit wonky. That's okay, wonky roof. I'm gonna start with my polygon tool. I'm going to probably click and drag because I don't need to click once because it's already um, you know, a triangle. I've already changed that setting. It resets every time you close and open the document. Hold shift to get it into the right spot. And then what did you do? How did you get it to be like this? Did you do what I'm gonna do? Zoop. Here we go, <laughs> good enough. Oh, there's a rounded corner at the top. How did I get a rounded corner at the top, but not the sides? Because if I do one of them, look, they all go. And I also want to go fill, no fill for the moment. I've got no fill, no stroke. I'm going to have a stroke that is, I'm going to pick a crazy color. This tends to be what I do. I pick one of the neon fluorescent colors so that I can see it against the background. Sometimes black's not a very good contrast. So if I click in the background, I can see green easier. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to get just the curve at the top. So I'm going to grab my black, no, nope, white arrow, the direct selection tool, and I click just this top point. And now I can just work on one of them. That might have caught you out. That's all right. We know now. All right, how do we do these two? I'm probably going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to go zoop. Add your own sound effects. Uh, I can probably do all the corners because I'm going to slice that off. I'm going to copy and paste it. So I've got another one back to my move tool, which is the V key. Okay, and I'm going to try and line them up. And if yours is not like doing cool stuff like this, intersecting and lining up, um, remember, go to view and make sure smart guides is on. The handy shortcut, command U control you on a PC. Okay, what I find as well is when you're over here, it's gonna try and line up with his buddies, but if you find it doesn't, okay, I kind of move it closer and it gets more easier to know it's lined up. And also Illustrator knows a bit better about like, oh, you mean this guy that you're really close to, not this thing that's all the way over here, okay, to line up. So if I get it close, can you see it kind of like locks in? And then I can just like drag it straight out, straight out, straight out. If you spent ages getting these perfectly distanced apart, we're not doing that today. <laughs> you could draw a rectangle on this side and use it as a spacer on this side. We're not going to. I'm just going to like close my eyes, well, squint my eyes, poke my tongue out and go, mm. yeah, close enough. Why aren't I following the drawing? Because I have a teeny tiny ledge this side and a big one that side. 
Um, this top one here is nice and easy, rectangle tool, and I'm just going to draw something like that. Now we're going to grab the Shape Builder tool, okay, black arrow actually, select all of this, going to go to my Shape Builder tool, Shift M, and I'm just going to color it all in. I'm going to pick my fill color again. You can do this afterwards or before. Okay, I'm just going to go you, 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 you. I'm going to get rid of the stroke, which we know I have to go back to my selection tool. So you have no stroke, buddy. There we go. What you can do as well is go to layers and turn the eyeball off on the background layer. So you can say, how's that look? <laughs> it looks not much like a house, but it's going to do for this video in our business card. All right. And so let's have it on. Let's go back to properties. How did you do this one? Now, I said in the last video, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not going to do it perfect here because we don't quite have the tools yet or the skills yet to do it absolutely perfect. We're going to get it perfect-ish. So I'm going to start with ellipse and I'm going to drag it out. Holding shift to get it perfect circle. Black arrow, get it in the right spot. I'm going to go fill, no fill, stroke, neon green. Okay, that's good enough. I'm going to copy and paste it. Oh, what did I copy and paste? I didn't copy it. Copy, paste. Okay, I'm going to line them both back up. And I want it to get bigger. Actually, I'm going to make it bigger first. Grab the center of it. Okay, and try and get it close to that guy. Is that good enough? That's good enough, Dan. Now, how'd you do this? Did you do it with a triangle? You can so do it with a triangle. Okay, click and drag, get something kind of perfect. It's roughly the right size. Rotate it around, go to my um, selection tool. Okay, which is V on the keyboard. Hold shift to get it to be pointing down. And this is where it gets a bit tricky. Okay, getting this thing to line up perfectly is where you might have spent a lot of time. Okay, I want mine a little bit more stubby. And it is tricky. Can you see I can kind of get it to intersect? It's not going to be perfect. There is a way of getting these things perfect, but it's kind of some hardcore skills we need later on. You might have spent some time just kind of getting it a little bit taller, a little bit out. And can you see this? You might have just done this. Can you see if I drag this out? but also be close to this. Can you see it still goes to the right point because I'm still dragging this right hand one. Okay, but if I kind of still drag the right hand one, if I follow that line, can you so you can kind of get it to where the apex is? <laughs> Come on, apex, that'll do. And this one here, good enough. There we go, good enough. Now in terms of the rounded corners, I'm probably gonna grab my direct selection tool. Okay, we're gonna end up going back and forth between the selection tool and the direct selection tool. This one is V, we kind of know that now. This one is A. A on my keyboard, V on my keyboard. A, V, A, V, A, V. Toggling between those two tools. I'm going to be on A, click on just the bottom one, and go, yep, kind of roughly to what I had in the drawing. Now what do we do? Select it all with a black arrow, go to your Shape Builder tool, go minus these two. So I'm holding down my Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC. I want a join of these so I don't hold anything down and we're kind of there. You might have cleaned it up. I remember saying in the last video, don't worry if there's bits left over, but let me show you what we can do. So we'll go to now layers. Let's turn off the background so we can see it a bit better. And you'll notice on my one, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. This is like little bits hanging off. Okay. And what you can do is grab your black arrow, click off in the background. They probably are just click on the once little bits kind of hanging out. Now mine looks perfect. It shouldn't. If yours looks like it's got a big kind of like donk in the side like this, eh, probably not that bad. But like if there's some sort of weird bend in the side, that's what I expected. And that's when I'm practicing this lab happened. Some reason today I made a real good one. <laughs> but don't feel bad if yours has a bit of a ding in the side. Don't worry. We'll fix that later on when our skills get better. For the moment, something roughly like this. All right, what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now I could select it all and grab my shape builder and fill it with color. Okay, like we've done in the last two. But because this is kind of a solid shape now, let me just select with a black arrow. Let me see if I can just fill it with my color. There we go. Give that a try. Yours may or may not be able to do that if it's not a complete shape. Should be. Or just use your shape builder tool. That's a good way of coloring any old thing. And also I'm going to go stroke, no stroke. There we go. I'm going to turn my background on and let's do this last one. Oh, how did he do this? Okay, this one you probably spent ages of and either gave up and actually, I've got mine crooked here. Um, what I'm going to do actually now is, I'm, now that I'm thinking, I'm like, man, let me draw that crooked. You'll notice in the last video, it was kind of perpendicular, straight up and down. So I'm going to go and do that now and be right back. Fix the file. 
because trying to draw it crooked, you do it at the end, you kind of just rotate the whole thing. But uh, let me be back in a second. All right, we're back. I just kind of moved it around in my little Photoshop scan. So this one, how do we do this? Let's just get started, eh? Let's start with the easiest bits. Okay, let's go to the rectangle tool and draw this thing. It remembers the last fill and stroke you have, which is these. Um, so mine keeps going back to that, even though I go and change it here, okay, to these ones. If I draw something now, it'll remember just whatever the last fill and stroke you did. So let's have a look. I want to do just this side. So it's roughly this right size. I'm going to grab my uh, A tool for my direct selection. Okay, grab the U plus U and some holding shift. Okay, to grab both of those and then just drag one of them and get them kind of close. Now I'm going to go back to my black arrow. This might have been interesting. Watch this. You might have bumped into this problem where if I have that selected and I go copy paste, it kind of worked but left chunk of it behind it was only selecting those anchor points that we selected with the direct selection tool so if I have just one thing selected and I go copy paste I end up with just the line so whenever you're copying and pasting make sure you're doing it with the the kind of default tool the move tool the selection tool what do they call it here selection tool okay so copy it I'm just selecting it copy paste and I'm gonna have two of them okay move the space bar to move along make sure they're lined up ish and when you are dragging them Okay, when you're dragging them down, you can hold shift. So say so I get them lined up on top of each other, right? You're lined up on top of each other. Okay, if I drag it down, it'll probably line up. There we go. Actually, it perfectly does. There's <laughs> a pink arrow. You can hold shift while you're dragging things. Remember, shift is kind of like the resizing things proportionately, drawing complete perfect circles. It's the same when you want to drag something in a complete straight line. Hold shift while you're dragging the edge of it, and that's going to be good enough. Now this part, so let's grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a rectangle here. Is that what you did or you do something different? Because you could draw a rectangle, add circles. It could be an ellipse in there. I don't mind. Okay, uh, I'm going to do that-ish. I'm going to go U-ish. Here we go. I've just dragged them all because I'm actually going to bend all this stuff. And next thing I want is the ellipse. Okay, all the circle. And I'm going to go U. And what's, is it going to be a perfect circle? Probably not, because I want to try and get that edge there. So dragging it with the selection tool. Am I going too fast? Otherwise this video will be forever. So you might have got through really fast, or you might be struggling and you can pause the video for the bits that I did. Probably needs to be just a little bit bigger that way, a little bit bigger that way. Use my arrow key to kind of line it up. And that's probably going to be good. How do we do this? There's two ways of doing this gap here. Okay, so you can grab a rectangle and just go zoop, and it should line up. I'm going to copy and paste them, so I got two. Okay, one down the bottom as well. Or you could do it slightly different way. You could use the line tool. This is a kind of a secret bonus for watching this epically long video. Is I could grab the line tool and just go zoop. Remember, how do I get it to go straight? Hold shift, and I've got that. And that'll work the same way with the um, shape builder tool. So I can grab my uh, selection tool, I can grab all of these, I can go to my shape builder tool, and I can say uh, option on a Mac, alt on a PC, so go away, go away. And I'm gonna say you go away as well. And there's a line at the top here or a rectangle. I can actually just click on these lines to get rid of it, holding option key down the whole time or alt on a PC. These bits here I don't really want to kind of mess with. I wanna see if I can go back to my black arrow and go, yeah, you get rid of that. I don't want you. What's the stuff down here? Get rid of you. Get rid of you. You might have run into that problem, like what to do with all these extra shapes. You could join them all up and delete them. That would work too. I know that they're experienced that, you know, if they if I haven't messed with them, the good stuff is probably still underneath and I can just kind of peel it off. Or again, you could start hacking away with the shape builder tool. It's up to you. Now, how did he do these? I feel like, hmm, you worked it out? Did you do it with ellipses? That's the long way. The quick way is we looked at it kind of briefly earlier on. Remember the um, sleeping eye on the fox? Ah, you're like, oh yeah, I forgot all about that. Where do they hide all those weird tools that we don't really use very often? Under the edit toolbar, little dots down here. Click on this one. There is my arc tool. Okay, and I'm gonna try my very best to do an arc. Mm, that'll do. Remember, it's kind of hard to draw stuff. I got it kind of the right arc. Now I'm gonna grab my black selection tool. I'm going to rotate it around, give you, 
I'm going to go you. I'm going to make it a bit longer. Squish it up a little bit. Actually, not the corner. I'm going to use this side. Squish it up a bit. Rotate it around. There is better tools we're going to use later in the course, but we're using what we got. And what I want to do is give it a stroke of the color that I'm using. I'm going to give it a nice big thick stroke to kind of match what I've got there. And then I'm going to go copy paste. And I'm going to go, this one's a little bigger. Probably a lot bigger. And there we go. One more copy paste and make this one bigger again. Yep. Too big. All right, that'll do. How'd you do the rounded ends? I wish I didn't draw them because <laughs> it's a later part of the course. But that's all right, let's do it now. Select all the strokes, go to stroke, Shh, advanced stuff. Don't tell anyone, but under stroke, if you click the word, there's this one here. Okay, click on round cap. By default, we're on this unfortunately named uh, capping. Okay, so move to round cap and you'll get that in there. You had no chance of figuring that out. That's all right. If you did do it, let me know. Okay, you might have done it with circles. Ooh, not sure how you might have done it, but let us know in the comments if you did do it. I'd be interested. Okay, with these ones here, I'm going to select them all and I'm going to go to fill of that or and a stroke of none. Or you could do, if you're not sure, is you can select them all, grab your shape builder tool and then pick your fill color. Where are you? Fill. And if you go no stroke here, you can say bam, bam, bam. It doesn't remove the stroke though. <laughs> Go back to the black arrow, then remove the stroke. All right, let's turn the background layer off. Gaze at our amazing icons. Remember Command or Control Zero on your keyboard to go all the way out, see everything. Let your OCD kind of line everything up a little bit better, Dan. There you go. OCD is not quite there. Oh, it's just ignore it. It's laid out good enough. So how did you do? Other than this looks more like, I don't know, some sort of beach hut than a house. I think we did good. Hopefully you figured it out. You might have done it a different way. You might have a different look. That's totally okay. I don't mind. It's practice. If you did run into other troubles, let me know in the comments because other people will be having similar problems and they can check out your problems and solutions. And if you see one down there that you worked through, chime in. Answer their comments, say, hey, I was doing that and I tried this, but this is the way I figured it out. All right, my friends, we made some icons. I hope it was helpful seeing me make the icons. Um, See you in the next video. Hi everyone, we're going to talk about layers. Is this little tab here? I'm going to start off by saying we just don't use them. And in the original version of this course, I just ignored them because we don't use layers very often in Illustrator. Um, but it confused lots of people because they really want to touch them <laughs> and click on them and add them. So this will be a little kind of like overview of what layers are when you use them why we don't use them a whole lot in Illustrator and we use things like a range instead. But we'll make some layers, we'll get them working, we'll lock some stuff, move stuff around, and I'll try and convince you why we don't actually use them that much. Great video, Dan. Uh, show people how to use a tool they shouldn't use. <laughs> uh, it has to be done. Uh, let's jump in. All right, to get started, let's close down anything you've got open and let's open up a new document. Okay, when I'm opening up a new document, either file new up the top or click this button over here. Okay, and just as a good starting point, let's go for something that's 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. It doesn't really matter about the size at the moment. Okay, but getting a new document set up, probably the main thing is to make sure it's on RGB. We'll cover that later on in the course properly. But basically, RGB looks better on a screen than CMYK. This is more for print, more for screen. All right, 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. Let's click create. Okay, so we want to draw three things, the text, the circle and the background. We're going to make the background color. So by default, you get given one layer and often with Illustrator, you can just leave one layer and just never do anything else. Unlike Photoshop, let's check out Photoshop. Okay, I've got my layers over here. If you've come from Photoshop, you'd be like, we have multiple layers. Illustrator doesn't really use layers that much. Whereas Photoshop, let's add something real quick. Okay, bit of a cross sell for my Photoshop course. If you haven't done it, go check it out. I'm gonna put in a classic car. Some of the generative fill stuff is pretty spectacular. Wait there. It's pretty amazing what it can create. But in creating that, it created a new layer for us. And by the end of a large document, you might end up, it's not uncommon to have 20, 50 layers, okay? Whereas in Illustrator, actually before I go, you should check out my Photoshop Essentials or Photoshop Advanced course. Go do those. All right, back in Illustrator though, 
often you can have one layer and that's it. I'm gonna show you a for instance where we don't. Just so you, know, you get a sense of layers, you might open somebody else's document. I don't want you getting lost. So let's do a couple of things. So let's go rectangle tool and go back to our properties. Let's make sure the your smart guides are on. Okay, little tick next to it. So that when I'm hovering in the corner, it says intersect. And I drag out this nice big box. Yours is probably gonna be white with a black border. Whatever you want, I'm gonna pick actually, I'm gonna grab the fill and I'm gonna give it this kind of gray color here. One of these gray colors, that one there. Doesn't matter which one it is. Make sure if you're on color mixer, go to swatches, pick a color. I'm gonna have no stroke, okay. Next gonna do is gonna have some type. Okay, we're going to type more detail in a bit, but for the moment, click the type tool, okay, and just click once, okay, and this is going to be the impossible triangle. We're gonna do this more in the next video. We're gonna actually create the triangle. For the moment though, pick a font size so you can see it, and with the text selected, uh, go and pick a fill over here. All right, so we've got this, we've got this. Okay, let's draw a regular triangle that's not so impossible. So go to polygon, how do I get to, because at the moment it's gonna do that, you know, click once, pick three sides. Okay, and this is an unimpossible triangle. Okay, just a regular old shape. If you're not sure what the impossible triangle is, don't worry, we'll do it in the next video. But for the moment, we're looking at layers. And I show you this because I probably wouldn't touch layers. For most of this course, the only time we've used layers is when we're tracing on top of stuff. But when we're drawing stuff like this, there's no need to have lots of separate layers, just the one. What's tricksy about Illustrator is that, see this little chevron here, this little arrow, click on that. Look at that, we've kind of got layers inside of there. There's my polygon, okay, turn my eyeball on and off. So that is my, um, that is my triangle. There's my text saying impossible, and there's another rectangle. So they do have layers without you asking. What you tend to do in Illustrator is you forget about layers, never go to the layer, never go to the layers panel. And what you do is go, actually, I want the, and let's change the color of this. So I'm gonna change it to some other hideous color. Okay, and let's say that I want it behind the text, okay? In Photoshop, you'd have to go and arrange the layers. Whereas this one, you just go right click, okay? Or actually over here is probably the way I've shown you so far. You go to arrange, and you can either do two things. You can send backwards, or send to back. What that means is back is all the way at the back. So it's gonna go behind the text and the rectangle, which is maybe what you want. I don't want it in this case. So I'm gonna to go to edit undo. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna to go to the other one where it says arrange, and I'm gonna say send back wood. What that means is it's gonna go back one step. Instead of all the way to the back, it's gonna go just behind one thing. Nice. If I have this one here, I've got an ellipse now, that is another color, okay? If I say arrange backwards, where is it gonna go? It's not gonna go, if I say back, it's gonna go all the way to the back, right? Undo. I'm gonna say backwards, and it's gonna go behind the text, but not the triangle. So backwards, is that where I need it? Maybe we need it a little bit further back. So backwards, you get the idea, it's just one step, okay? Like a stack of cards on top of each other, to back is all the way to the back of the pack, whereas, backwards just goes one down. And if you've got like 10, 50 layers, <laughs> you can be hitting backwards quite a lot. And if that is the case, there is a shortcut, okay, under object, arrange, so the exact same thing, you can use this version or this version here, you can see the shortcuts there. Backward is on my Mac, it's command and the first square bracket, and on a PC it's control and the first square bracket. All right, so layers, you don't use them <laughs> very much. Um, the times where I would use them is this background, it's kind of a pain, because you're like, I just want to deselect the background. Oh no, I've clicked the background. Oh, that, why are you moving? Okay, so what I do is let's go to layers, and I want a layer, okay? The layers are all the way down the bottom here. See, way, way, way down here, hello. Let's go to create new layer, okay? And let's go over to here and double click it and say, let's call this one background. So, I've got a layer called background. There is nothing on it. How do I know? Turn the eyeball on, off. It's because I drew everything on layer one. So what I wanna do is two things. I want to move this thing to the background layer. I can do that two ways. Let's select it with my black arrow, U. Let's go to edit cut. So instead of copy, cut means like regular cut and paste, right? So we're gonna go cut, so it's in my clipboard. Now I'm gonna say on the background layer, make sure the blue's here and this little triangle's here. Can you see kind of it moves around? Okay, where you click it, so click on the word background and then just go to we're gonna to go to edit paste, and now it's on the background layer. Excellent. Trouble is the background layer's on top of the layer one. 
you imagine you're a bird looking down from the um, top of my computer or from the sky. You see the background first, then layer one. So we need to grab this, click, hold, 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 hold. Can you see I can kind of, I don't want to drag it inside of layer one. That's bad. I want to drag it underneath. See the little line? So there. Now it's underneath. If it goes into it, go edit undo. The cool thing about this now is that all of this, okay, I turn the eyeball off on layer one, is on its own layer, this is on its own layer, and I can lock this layer. The For some reason, you're meant to know that this magical empty spot here is the lock. <laughs> you know now, but like this, yeah, this empty blank bit, there's a locking icon. What does that mean? It means I can't move the background anymore. I can select you on this other layer. Let's we'll give it a better name. Let's call this one uh, triangle triangle okay and that's good enough for me or maybe it's just foreground because i'm gonna have everything on this layer you could have another layer that's called text i double clicked it instead of just yeah i double clicked it and that often i double click it over here getting the word and i just type it in there text if you double click kind of any other area it opens up the bigger version you can type it in there as well if you want okay so let's grab text i can cut it and I can select the text layer and I can paste it so it's on this layer. A handy trick, because it kind of puts it back right in the middle of the layer. So you notice it was there and I cut it, went to text and paste it. It stuck it right in the middle of where I'm looking. So what I want to do is instead of just pasting it, we're going to use this special one. It says edit called paste in place. It means I'm going to get it back in the place where I got it. There you go. So it's on the new layer now, but just in the right spot. Now I could lock that layer if I wanted to and only mess with these guys, okay, my shapes in the foreground. I guess I show you this because A, I want to prove to you that we don't use layers very often, but you're going to get other people's files, you're going to wonder why we aren't doing layers, and yeah, there you go. <laughs> we do use them sometimes. One last little handy, or two last little handy things is, um, we've done a lot of cut and pasting in place. Okay, to go from layer to layer. Another little trick is I'm going to unlock this one. Let's say we want the text. Okay, which is on its own layer to go back to the foreground okay i can uh, cut click on foreground and go edit paste in place okay there is a sneaky trick watch this see this little random dot okay so i've got the thing i want to move got it selected okay um what you can do is you say i want to move it to the foreground watch this you can just drag that Doop. and he moves across to what is the blue layer Okay, that's the other thing I wanted to show you. So moving from one to another, I'm going to unlock them all. If I want this text to be on the background layer, I just click it. I So I go you, select it, drag the little dot to you. Now he's on the background layer and he's underneath the foreground, which is the triangle and the circle. Getting the hang of the layers, too much information. Let's get it back to the top. And the other interesting thing about layers is they get given their own default colors. Okay, so if I select this, can you see the, the copy has a green triangle around it. Watch it. If I move it to the blue layer, it's still the text, but it's got a blue. Let me move it so it's closer. Can you see it's got a blue thing around it. See the red layer, which is the background? If I do that, it's got a red thing around it. Just so that when you're clicking on stuff, what layer is this one on? The blue layer. What is this one on? The red layer, which is the background. It gives you kind of a, just a visual cue of like what layers things are on. All right. So if you do nothing else, I want a big rectangle um, that is gray in the background. I'd like it locked and I'd like a foreground layer. I'm gonna get rid of my text layer because I don't wanna confuse things. I'm gonna move him to the top and eh, you guys can stay there for the moment. We're gonna delete you in the next video when we make the actual impossible triangle. All right, so that's layers 101. Hope it was useful. Let's get into the next video. Hi everyone, in this video we are going to learn how to align, distribute, rotate, do math in some of the fields, which is super handy in Illustrator. Okay, all the while making this super cool impossible triangle. We're going to start with these just simple, just a whole bunch of lines, but we're going to use the shape builder to convert it into this, the impossible triangle. And in all honesty, I get so lost in this video, breaking stuff, things not going the way <laughs> that I'd planned when I prepped for the video. I want to re-record it, but... I know that you're going to probably stumble into these problems, so I'll leave all of it in there, but it is going to ruin any illusion of Dan's awesome can't be failed in illustratedness, which you, I don't know, at least in my head, I see myself as the illustrator master. But anyway, we get lost, we fix it together, you will learn, I get humbled, and we get to make a cool triangle. All right, let's jump in. And by jumping in, I mean we get lost straight off the bat. <laughs> let's go draw an invisible line. Good work, Dan. 
All right, to get started, um, uh, if you've skipped the last video, just make a new document, make it 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels, make sure it's RGB and click create. Okay, I've already got one of those. And um, the only other thing is, is that I've made a background, big gray rectangle, I've locked it, and I've got a layer on top. Okay, I'm gonna delete these guys, I'm gonna leave that text there. All right, so I'm working on my uh, foreground layer. Remember, if you're working on your background layer and then you grab the tool that I want, which is the line tool, remember, hold, hold, hold down that one, whatever it is, uh, rectangle or ellipse, grab the line segment tool, and it won't work. You gotta be on the layer that's not locked, which is the foreground, and go back to my properties. So I'm gonna draw, Oh, this is gonna be good, okay? Accidental learning, okay? I wanna drag out a line, and who knows what I hold down on my keyboard to make it go straight. Okay, we've done this particular thing before. Well, similar, okay, hold shift, okay, and it kind of locks it into nice, specific kind of directions. I want mine to be nice and straight. Okay, how big? Something looking like that. And this is really interesting. Have a look at this line. If I'm gonna go my black arrow, click in the background, it's gone. Mystery, where did it go? It's because when I was drawing with it, the last thing that I drew, Okay, had I think a white fill and no stroke, and I'm drawing with the line which is the stroke. So it just went, all right, I'm a line with no stroke. Here you go, it's there, <laughs> it's mysteriously there. Okay, so if you are drawing lines and like you can be using any of the tools, so let me grab one of the one. If I grab the pencil tool, which we'll do in a little bit, with no stroke and I draw something, I'm like, oh yeah, look at that. And I click off in the background, it's gone. <laughs> it won't print, you won't see it, it's there. Oh, there it is there. Okay, so just make sure when you're drawing, okay, that you draw with a stroke or afterwards you can drag around, select it and say you are a white stroke. I'm gonna bump it up to one, two, three. So this is a bit thicker so that we can see what we're doing. Okay, um, what do I want? It's too thick, two pixels, two points. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in. So we came here to align and distribute, Dan, but we figured out how to accidentally not draw a line and we fixed it. So what I wanna do is select the line with the black arrow, copy and paste it, so I've got two of them. Okay, mine's edited up on top of each other, paste it again. Okay, I've got one, two, three of them. And what I would like you to do is I'm gonna zoom in. I wanna kinda of get them kind of, I'm gonna not line them up on purpose. You can use the smart guides and try and line things up. I'm gonna do it on purpose, a little bit wonky, because I wanna show you if I select all three lines, notice when I'm selecting, I use the black arrow, I don't have to go around them all, I can just grab all the ends. You see, I can go just new, grab the ends of them. Okay, got all three. What I wanna do is over here in my properties panel, you'll see the align panel. You've got some of the align. Okay, so we're gonna look at the first one, which is aligning left. In this case, because they're all the same size, we can align left, align center, or align right. They're all the same length. What I want is I wanna find some of the distribution. So there is, uh, I don't wanna align top. Okay, what I want to do is distribute them because at the moment the gaps are uneven. I want them to be exactly the same. So the align panel, like any of the panels here in the properties panel, see these little dots? There's so much more hidden in there. They try to make them nice and like, I don't know, make the UI easy to look at, okay? Rather than having every single setting available, but you can dig into them easy enough. So in here, I want the one that says distribute objects and you can look at the little icons or do what I do and go, that one, no, that one, no, that one, that's the one I want, okay? <laughs> so uh, I just keep clicking on them until I find the one I want. There's a lot of clicking and undoing. Anyway, so we've aligned them up center, we've distributed them, excellent. Next thing I wanna do is I would like to, actually I want them a bit tighter, watch this. If I drag this one down, so this one and this one will define where this one goes because it will always be the center. So if I wanted to make them really far apart, click them, go to my distribute, distribute centers, okay? So whatever the one is on the outskirt, okay, will kind of define um, how far apart they are. You got it. So I'm gonna say align center and distribute these guys. I'm going to copy and paste them, okay? Actually, I didn't copy and paste them. I'm gonna select them, copy, paste. Okay, so I've got all three lines, and I wanna rotate them around to be that triangle that you saw at the beginning. Now, I know it needs to be like, I don't know, <laughs> a triangle and this is where math in the fields really helps me out I'm terrible at working out numbers my brain just kind of mixes them all up so what I can do though in C rotation I can go into here and say oh I know it needs to be 180 okay nope 
<laughs> it flips it upside down. <laughs> uh, 90, okay, 120, okay. I can click on these and try and guess it. You probably know where it is, like, um, I'm gonna go back to zero. What I like to do is I know 360 is the full thing, but I can do math in these fields. So I don't wanna flip it all the way around. I wanna go 360 divided by three. Here you go. It's 120, Dan. Okay, so you can do math in all these fields. Okay, so I'm gonna line this up kind of here. I'm gonna go copy and paste again. I want it to be what? Um, 120 times two, because <laughs> I can't add either. Okay, so the times in this case, um, the editor would have zoomed in. Okay, you can see this often uses like an asterisk. Okay, that's the computer version of times. So you can go plus two, you get plus two degrees. Whoop, plus two degrees. It's not really what I want. Okay, I want it to be times two. You can minus, you can divide. It's awesome. Times two. Okay, so we've got all this. I want to kind of line these up. It doesn't really matter how much they line up. Holding spacebar to get my hand tool, moving around. Okay, it doesn't really matter actually. Okay, so that is the core of my impossible triangle. You can see it in there now, right? And again, we're gonna, even though this is a line and distribute, we're gonna end up doing some combo skill stacking. Okay, we're gonna do some rotation and also grab the line tool and do some shape building. So what I wanna do is, where are we gonna draw? I'm gonna try and connect there to there. So make sure your smart guides are on, click, hold and drag. Okay, I'm gonna go U to U, oh, nice. Okay, space bar, click and drag, U to U. Space bar, click and drag, U. You're looking for the intersects, that's what you're looking for. Okay, so we're nearly there. Now I'm going to grab my uh, black arrow, and this is the important bit that I might have not highlighted as much, is everything needs to be selected for the shape builder to do its job. If you miss a few bits, it's gonna leave these lines out down the bottom, even though they kind of look like they're um, selected. Watch this, see, not selected. So grab everything, grab the shape builder tool, shift M, and I'm going to start trimming it up. It's really cool, watch this. If I hold down my option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC to minus things, watch this, I can just drag a line through all these lines. <gasps> Look at that, cool eh? I love just kind of trimming it up that way. If you've used the scissor tool in the past or the trim tool, oh man, it's a pain. Whereas this, I can just start dragging these through. I can click on these, oh, do I wanna? All right, I kind of had a bit of a meltdown there and I was like, why isn't it working? And I was like, do I re-record it to look like a professional or do I show people, because you're gonna run into the same problem. So let's diagnose what happened there. You don't even know what happened. Uh, let me explain it. So I'm using my shape of the tool and I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna like, uh, what, what's going on here? Why is this thing doing some weird stuff? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in and what I didn't pay much attention to at the beginning, okay, is that, see my line there? I didn't draw the line across, you know, from that point to that point. I just kind of drew an arbitrary line. I just went zhuk, and I wasn't really paying attention. I was too busy trying to sound professional on the video. Okay, so it's kind of just not working very well. So I've got it all selected. I'm gonna grab my um, shape builder tool. I can kind of delete it, but it's kind of not working. Okay, just because I didn't line up the lines properly. So there's a couple of ways of getting around this. There is going back in time, hitting undo a million times and just lining it up properly so it'll work, or Double click this option here, okay, Shape Builder. Just double click the tool. There's this thing called gap detection. Mine's off at the moment. I don't know, normally it's on. I'm using a kind of a new, new version of Illustrator. Oh, it's normally on. If yours isn't on, go into gap detection and say gap length small, okay? Or large, it depends on how badly you drew it. <laughs> if you've got like the line nowhere near touching, you might have to crank this up the large. Gap detection, I'm gonna leave mine at small. Okay, let's click okay. It means now that tiny gap, where is it? Oh, problem with zooming with something selected, it goes right into the middle. Okay, it's a little bit of a pain. Spacebar is there's a tiny gap in there, just the teeniest, tiniest one. I'm gonna use my uh, zoom tool and drag around and drag around, and drag down. Look at that, the teeniest, tiniest gap. And by default, that's normally on. Check yours now, just see, let me know in the comments, is yours on? If it's not, okay, turn it on, and if you're, if the gap is like way out here, you might be able to get away with medium and large. This is really good when you're doing more hand drawing stuff, okay, and illustrate later in the course, you can actually turn this gap detection up quite high to fill in big gaps. There you go, 
little bit more advanced for this uh, video, but there you go. Now I mean, we can do what we want. If you get lost like I just did, was I zooming in, zooming out? I wasn't sure. <laughs> Command and control zero. This video has gone a little bit sideways. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay, so I've got them all selected. Got gap detection turned on to small. Okay, I am going to uh, hold down my option key. Oh, can a PC, get rid of that one. All right, where were we? Now we're going to make that little impossible triangly thing. Okay, so this is quite the tricky brain teaser. Basically start from the inside, go all the way to the outside and then along. That's how I remember it anyway. And um, so again, start from the inside, go all the way along to the outside and up. Start from the inside, this inside, all the way up and down. That's kind of it, right? The last things we need to do is just click and drag across these two. I'm not holding anything down, just join these up. Thank goodness for gap detection, eh? All right, I'm gonna leave it there. We figured out align and distribute, lots of extra settings are hiding in the little dots. We worked out we can do math in here. Okay, I'll do one more bit of math before we go. So this is at X and Y coordinates. If I wanna move it across maybe 10 pixels, I can say plus 10, and it will just move over 10 pixels all the math in any of the field. You need the stroke to be twice the width, or three times, times three. That did not work, because we didn't have it selected with the black arrow. We were on the shape of the tool. It didn't know what to do. Another good tip. Man, this one's full of getting lost, <laughs> but we're all working it out. Okay, so we tripled it. Don't worry about the little points. We'll talk about strokes in a bit more detail later on. So math and fields, align and distribute, Getting lost, we needed to upgrade the uh, gap detection. I bet you yours is probably on and fine. And there you go. Actually, before you go, if you have been drawing with me, save it. Call it Impossible Triangle. I'm going to save to the cloud. In the next video, we will actually color it and set it as a little class project. So let's do that in the next video. See you there. Hi, everyone. It is class project time, the Impossible Triangle. I want you to draw it, okay? And then I want you to color it. Okay, change the background color, change the color of, the, or at least add color to the um, possible triangle, and then submit it. If you do have time, you'll see in the notes here, it says add some creative flair. It's optional. But when I first created this tutorial many moons ago, okay, I assumed people would just color it and submit it. And then everyone went crazy. Check it out. These are just a couple of examples I got from the class projects. I just went through and grabbed the last few of them. It's just amazing what people went and did with it. So I figure give you the license to go a bit mad with it as well. It could be subtle, it could be crazy, up to you. Basics are, I just want the colored triangle, but if you do have time and you do want to tinker around with it, go nuts. And once you're done, save an image, upload it to the assignments, and share on social media. Love to see what people do with these things. Now the expectation is just to use the skills you've learned so far in the course. If you do have other skills, you can go do that as well, but don't feel like, oh, I don't know how to do gradients. Don't worry, we'll do gradients later on. Just a fun short exercise. All right, go do that, and I'll see you in the next video. Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take this simple line drawing and redraw it using something called the Curvature Tool. It's really good at drawing curves, hence the name. Also, if you're one of those people who have used, or at least tried to use, the Pen Tool in the past and gone, it's too hard, not doing it, then this tool is for you. It's like the Pen Tool, but easier. So let's jump in, start using the Curvature Tool, which is super awesome, super easy, and much better than the Pen Tool. If you have no idea what the Pen Tool is, we're going to do that later. It's fun, don't worry. Ish. All right, alien time. All right, first up, uh, close everything down. Let's go to file new. And just to be different, we're gonna go to print and we're gonna use either US letter or A4, whatever uh, zone of the world you're in. Okay, I'm gonna use US letter. I'm going to go landscape. Okay, so it's kind of like lying down. I'm gonna leave everything else and click create. Okay, let's bring in an image that we're gonna trace. Let's go to file, let's go to place. And in your exercise files, there's one called redraw image. And what I'd like to do is let's make sure it's a template and click place, puts it in the background on its own layer that's locked, helpful. All right, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Command plus, 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 space bar, that's control plus on a PC, hold space bar down on either Mac or PC, click, hold and drag, and we're gonna use the curvature tool. Also, this thing here is kind of a new thing that's just appeared in my version of Illustrator. I bet you it's been there the whole time for you. I'm just gonna move it by grabbing the corner and just pop it down there. You wait there, we'll talk about you later. All right, let's grab the curvature tool. It is the fourth tool down at the moment. These change, so look for the one that looks like a pen, but with a little tail coming out of it. Okay, so that's the one we want, the curvature tool. If in the past you've tried the pen tool and you're like, oh man, that was too hard, the curvature tool is your savior. 
It's the one I teach new people first because it's just so much easier to understand and work with and make stuff. We'll do the pen tool, but it's a bit more advanced and you can get by with the curvature tool most of the time. So how does it work? Let's just give it a demo. If I click once on the top of his head there, nothing really happens except you get a blue dot. And let's go around to the side of his head and click once. Nothing really happens until you kind of move your mouse and you're like, oh, look at that. Not doing anything, just kind of like starts appearing. It tries to connect them up with a curve. That's why it's called the curvature tool. Now we're gonna go around and start adding dots everywhere. First of all, what we probably need to do is, can you see this like weird white line? It's kind of, if I go over here, can you see this white thing? Okay, it's the fill. So I'm gonna undo and I'm gonna say fill, have no fill. Thank you very much. Click it to go back in there. Now, where do these little dots go? Okay, because like, where do I put them? Like, I don't know. I'm gonna undo, 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 undo. I'm gonna show you the technique. So first of all, I'm gonna say fill has no fill. Okay, I got my first dot at the top. There he is. Okay, and then I do my second dot. And what you're looking for is the apex. Okay, like the biggest change of direction. See here, if I say that's a curve, okay, look for all the curves. Where's the highest or the most direction change? It's kind of somewhere about here. It doesn't have to be in the middle, okay? Just kind of somewhere where it seems to change the most because I'd consider this a different curve because it's bending the other way. Okay, so just kind of see if you can spot the big turn. So somewhere around here, there it is, feels good. Now there is a little bit of just clicking, getting them in there and then fixing them afterwards. So where's the next big apex? Let's say that's a curve, kind of somewhere in the middle here, click once and you're like, that's not working until I'm not doing anything. Just moving my mouse out to, if that's that curve, there's another curve here. So where's the apex? Kind of at this point here, right? Clicking once, see how we're doing here. Okay, the top's not quite right, but that's okay. We'll fix it up later on. There is just kind of getting the apex, um, they're called anchor points, getting those in, fixing them afterwards. So where's the next apex? Say that's a curve, probably somewhere in there. Then this one here, probably there. You get in the flow for like, if that's a curve, kind of somewhere in the middle, if that's a curve, somewhere in the middle, if that's another curve, it takes practice. Like that's the one thing I can't give you in this course is, you know, experience drawing lots of mad things. I'm gonna try to, okay? And there's an advanced course to go to after this to get your skills right up, but it just takes time to kind of go, all right, that's a good place for the anchor point, And that's a good point. And I need one there. I know that. You might be like, I'm just gonna go there. And you're like, oh, okay. But after a bit of practice, I'm gonna undo. You go, okay, I probably need one there to kind of like keep it out. There's another curve there, but it does come with a lot of practice. Okay, so I'm hitting all these apexes, boom, boom, boom. After a while though, once you've got a bit of experience, it's amazing what you can draw quite quickly. Okay, let's go all the way around and get our not quite finished. And um, we're getting back to the beginning here. This is important. So it'll just keep adding stuff forever until you get back to where you started. And watch the icon change. It goes from the little squiggly line pen thing to that. If you've got this target the whole time, you're like, oh, mine's a target, it's not a squiggly line. Okay, it's your caps lock on your keyboard. Everyone tap caps lock, you know, that makes it go upper and lower case on your keyboard. That's the difference between yours and mine, potentially. This is more accurate, the little target, but it's not very fun. The fun icon, look at that. To be honest, I don't care which one it is, whatever one happens to be on, but if you are uh, concerned, uh, hit the caps lock key. All right, next thing is, what do we do? Can you see when we get back to here, the icon changes from the squiggly line to a squiggly line with a circle. It's gonna kind of complete the circle, or complete the path. Path is another word for the stroke around the outside. Okay, so I'm gonna click once, and you're like, that didn't work, it's got a pointy head. It's not exactly what we want, but it's okay. We kind of got the basics in. How do we fix this? Okay, so what we're gonna do is stay with the curvature tool. Sometimes it's just moving them. I'm gonna zoom in again. Okay, I'm gonna say this one here probably just needs to be up there a little bit. Okay, so once you've made them, you can move them around. The other thing you'll notice is that it's trying to snap to stuff, which can be good, but in this case, at the moment, smart guides need to be turned off. Because I actually wanna be quite precise. I don't want it kind of jumping around. So that's why that shortcut's quite a handy one. Uh, command U on a Mac, Control U on a PC. So now it's not gonna try and jump around, it can be quite fiddly with it. And this one here probably needs to be down here somewhere. And this one can be down here somewhere. So you can adjust this by moving them around. But you can only get so far by moving them around. It's trying to like average between them all. There's only so far you can get. But depending on your drawing, you might actually go, that's enough. 
or let's say that you want this, but you think you just need a little bit more control, maybe another anchor point somewhere. So I'm gonna put that one there. Say so I just want another anchor point here to drag it down. All I need to do is same tool. I've make sure I've got the line selected. Okay, go back to my curvature tool. And you'll notice that when I hover above the line, it goes from being this to a little plus. See the little plus there? Okay, I can say add one there. And then I can click and drag it. Okay, and you can get a bit more detail. What ends up happening is the more anchor points you have, the more control you have. The problem with more anchor points though, the trade-off is more control comes with not as smooth. Can you see this is nice and smooth? If I try and do this, look, yep. Okay, and we're getting there, right? But if I select off, can you see it's a little bit janky through there because it's trying to go through a lot of points? It's not too bad actually, okay? But the more points you have, if you're looking at yours going, oh, mine doesn't look very smooth, it's probably just got way too many anchor points. You can get rid of anchor points by using the curvature tool, hovering above them, clicking one of them and hitting delete. Okay, and you can say, okay, get rid of these guys. And I'm gonna go back to just having a couple of points. The least amount of anchor points you can get away with, the more smooth it'll be. Sometimes though, you just need more. Like this one here, probably needs a curve in here. Now, curvature tool is great for just kind of like throwing things in. Where the most control or adjustment comes from afterwards is you throw in all your points with your curvature tool, then you switch to the white uh, arrow, the direct selection tool, and click on any anchor points. These magical handles pop out. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. These are the kind of hidden things that are controlling that line. The curvature tool just says, let's just do it nice and safely. Nobody's getting in trouble here. It's not too messy. It's not very confusing, but we want to get confusing because we want the control. Go to the direct selection tool and go you and kind of drag. You can drag the anchor points. You can drag these things around. Okay, and what happens with anchor points is, first of all, if you've never done them before, don't be scared of them, okay? The anchor point is where the line has to run through. That's the anchor. These things called handles kind of help direct the way the line goes through it. Grab any one of them, okay, of any of your anchor points and just give it a wiggle. I want you to experiment with like what it does. There's two things you can do with it. Kind of go around the clock, okay, to get it to go different angles, okay. And also watch this. If I go in, it's quite a sharp. And if I go out, it gets more smooth through that point. Can you see it's quite a, it's smooth out that side, but there's a little jinky bit there. Kind of goes junk. okay. It's because this is really tight into the anchor point. But if I smooth that out, can you see it goes through there a lot smooth. And it's a bit of a balance. Watch this, if I drag the, because this is too high, it's kind of, this is forcing it down, this is forcing it up, and there's this kind of like balance going on that Illustrator is trying to find. So what you want to do is say, okay, I want you, maybe it's a bit of you. Maybe it's a bit of you go up now. So there's a little bit of jiggle this, jiggle that, jiggle this, jiggle that. Same with this one. How do I get this line? I'm gonna go anchor point. Are you in the right spot? Mm, that's about right. Now these two guys are fighting this line and I'm gonna say you go maybe in and maybe up a little bit. But when you are adjusting it, learning, go like this, wiggle it around, see what it does. Okay, and then kind of slowly slow down your wiggle, slow down your wiggle until you find something that might work. And if you can't get it with that line, it might be this one. Didn't click on them, go grab those tiny little dots. These little anchor points are quite hard to select on as well, the anchor points. I leave it at this because I'm quite um, experienced with it, but I find when people are new, it's better to go up to under on a Mac, go to Illustrator, go to Preferences. On a PC, go to Edit, go down to Preferences, it should be around here. Okay, and we're looking for the one that says, can't remember, I think it's User Interface, click on that one. Okay, and there's one in here that says, actually I lie, it's Selection and Anchor Display. So at the moment, they're at default. We can make these bigger. I'll make them ginormous oh, just to show you. Watch this. Let's go on anchor points. Look how big they are. Should we leave it on for this course? They're a bit big for my normal using, but hey, they look kind of cool here. All right, last thing we're going to do is we're going to fix this one here because I want them to be a curve, not a little pointy head. So I can select it with my uh, direct selection tool, the white one. Okay, and over here, it says convert. Would you like it to be a corner? A corner means the two handles kind of like are broken in the middle, but a curve, boom. They are like a seesaw. We can't have one without the other one being influenced. You can go to this one and say, I want you to be a corner. I want you to be a curve now. I've wrecked my side of my head. So I want you to work your way around. Okay, curvature tool to get started. Then use the direct selection tool to kind of start editing things. Well, if that happens to you, like I just did to me, it's best to grab the handles to wiggle them. If you grab the line, it kind of works, but you know, it's a little bit tricky. Grab the giant, um, what <laughs> now a massive meatballs now, okay, because uh, I increased the size. But grab those handles, anchor point, and actually we'll do two more things before we go. Um, this, we're gonna do this eyeball. 
So I'm going to grab the curvature tool. Now, what you might be keen on doing is going one, two, uh, oh. Okay, so you can't draw a circle with only two dots because you can't. You can try and do it with three. One, kind of two, three. You'll end up with a really strange kind of circle-y thing. There's just not enough points. Basically, with anything that's kind of an ellipse, okay, doesn't have to be perfect like the eyeball. It really needs four anchor points. Uh, I'll show you in Illustrator. If I draw an ellipse and I draw it out and then grab the anchor point tool, can you see one, two, three, four. Okay, they have four anchor points with the handles all equal. That's what makes a perfect circle. So just, that's the kind of minimum for a round thing, for a good control. So I'm gonna go curvature tool, one, two, three, four, five. Nope, didn't click it, five. Nope, still not clicking it. Why is mine not going to the end? Weird, mine wouldn't kind of connect up for a second there. I don't know, yours does it. It shouldn't, it's never done that before. <laughs> I just went undo and then clicked it and it joined up. You can see there, pretty reasonable one. Now I could grab my uh, direct selection tool to adjust this, okay, but I can use the curvature tool as well to do the adjusting. One last thing that kind of is annoying for me and people that are new is the zoom. If I have nothing selected, it just zooms in. I'm using Command Plus or Control Plus on a PC. It just zooms into the middle of the screen. And then other times you're like, it's zooming in and like hidden over here. You can see it zoomed into the alien. Okay, it depends on what you have selected. If you have nothing selected, it will just go like, see the, the kind of, I've moved it so the owl's right in the middle. It'll just go into the middle of the screen, undo. If I have something selected though, it doesn't matter where I am, watch this. If I hit uh, Command Plus, Control Plus on a PC, it zooms into the thing I have selected. So just be aware of that. Often, it's good to select the thing and then hit zoom. Otherwise, it kind of just zooms into the middle of the screen. But now you know. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to finish off our alien. Okay, get it as close as you can. If you're struggling, don't worry. We're gonna use curvature tool and, and lots of the other techniques throughout the course, but have a practice, get the alien going, draw both eyes, fill in with a color, and I'll see you in the next video. Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna use the curvature tool some more. We've done straight curves in the last video. I'm gonna, in this one, show you how to do straight lines and then show you how to combine them. We're gonna do straight lines and curves. Look, straight bits, curvy bits. Awesome ninja drawing. I hope you're ready for this. The curvature tool gets more awesome. Let's jump in. All right, let's start out by uh, zooming in on the crown. Okay, we're gonna use the curvature tool. So the curvature tool naturally wants to do curves, hence the name. Okay, so if I click on all these kind of like edges here, I get this kind of like, kind of works. Okay, but I end up with a bit of a wonky looking crown. Comb, I don't know what that is. Best description in the comments gets a, I don't know, a thumbs up, I'll check. <laughs> What is it? But anyway, a couple of things that might be happening to you while you're drawing is you might be getting this, doing this weird stuff. If that's happening while you're drawing, it means that you've got a fill, okay, that you don't really need a fill right now. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the fill off. I'm gonna click on fill and say no fill. I just want a stroke and I'm using kind of this um, slimy green color. So how do we fix this? I'm gonna grab my black arrow, select it all, delete it. Let's grab the curvature tool. And the way to make it go straight is just a double click. So instead of clicking once for a curve, Okay, I double click, double click for a corner, double click for a corner, double click for a corner, double click for a corner. You get the idea. Just keep going and double clicking. There will be times where you forget and you go click once. And what does click once get you? <gasps> it's a curve. What do I do? You can just go back. You can undo, obviously, and just use the double clicking. Or you can go back and convert it. To converting, you just double click it. And it goes from being a corner to a curve. Corner to a curve corner okay so if you do forget you can just go back and double click it so remember i want a corner what is it double click i want a corner double click double click and eventually we double click enough come back to the beginning this last one is a weird one if i double click for that one <laughs> it kind of like connected it up and then i clicked it again so that's the only wonky bit about this so double click for all the corners but when you get back to the beginning click once how will you remember that don't worry, because if you don't remember, you double click, you end up with a curve. <laughs> okay, so there you go. That is the curvature tool doing straight lines. And you're like, why, why are we using straight lines? I could use a straight line tool. It's because most of the time, we're gonna be doing a bit of both. This is ninja time, okay? It has straight lines and curves. This is more indicative of the work you'll do. Okay, so let's work our way around. Let's start with an easy one, a corner. That's clearly a corner. How do we do corners? Is it a single click or a double click? That's right, double click, double click for a corner. Then you go, okay, I'm gonna go up here. No, look, there's a curve in there. 
So what do I do for a curve? Halfway through the apex, I click once. Go, cool, got a curve. Then what do I do here? That's right, double click for a corner. And then up here, do I need a curve? Nope, just double click here, double click here, double click here. Don't be tempted to go there because that's not a straight line. There's a curve. Click once, double click for a corner. You get the idea. Let's keep going, uh, kind of a round circle. Okay, so we know kind of from remember the ellipse that I showed you before, it's kind of like, because oh, it's a curve, click once. And then, because that's the weird thing, you click once, you're like, I've done it wrong. And then you kind of move your mouse over and you're like, oh, I did it right. <laughs> click once. Again, you're like, oh, I did it wrong, but kind of coming over here. That's why there's a little bit of like doing it a hundred times and you'll be like knowing where the anchor points go, where they all stick out. But while you're learning, there's a little bit of just following Dan and trusting and just getting better and better. I promise you, there's nothing you can do other than draw lots of stuff with the curvature tool. So where are we? Corner or a curve? Corner, click twice. Uh, remember if you do it wrong, okay, and you click once and you go over here and you're like, no, double click it to train, you know, kind of convert it back. Again, click once for a curve, double click, double click. Now this one's tricky. Where do, what do we do here? There's a curve and a straight. So what do we do? Um, there's a curve that kind of ends there. Do you see that's the kind of ending of the curve? So right in the middle of that, the apex, I'm gonna click once for my curve. And then this is where the straight line starts. So I'm gonna double click for a corner, or at least kind of, yeah, it is a corner. Okay, double click again for a corner, click once for a curve, double click for a corner. And then down here, we should be able to just click once. There we go, let's look at this one here as well. Let's do this um, around the eyes. Okay, where should we start? Let's click once for this corner point here, sorry, curve. Okay, down here is another tricky one. This is the same kind of idea as this, like should this be a corner or a curve? This is a corner because it's kind of going into a straight line. So I'm gonna double click and you're like, that doesn't work. It's not working, Dan. Have faith, my friend. Watch this, double click for a corner. Click once for a curve, double click. Oh, look at this, it's working. Double click for a corner and then back here, click once, it all comes back to life. There you go. And if you're like, why didn't he just grab a rectangle and then grab all the corners? <laughs> that's what he should have done. Okay, and that's what I do normally, but we're learning the curvature tool. Same with the circles in the middle. I'm gonna go with my curvature tool, and I showed you before, they tend to look better when there's a curve point in each four quadrants. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. What's it mean? Go with the curvature tool. Okay, yes, I just used the ellipse tool again here as well, but we're learning. All right. Give that a go, and the problems that you'll run into, okay, is when you've got a corner when there should be a curve. We know how to change those. So we'll select it first with a black arrow. So grab the line around the outside, then grab your curvature tool. And let's say that you just forgot that point. Well, you've got too many points. You wanna get rid of it, hit delete. But now you wanna add one. You just click once. You want it to be a curve, not a corner. That's kind of a curve. I just click once. It's just kind of not out far enough. Can you see it goes into a line and then kind of, I'm not doing anything, just, yeah, a curve needs some sort of like trajectory. It needs to go from this point out to something. Okay, but let's say it's now arm spikes. We wanna convert it. There's two ways we can do it. We can double click it, or we can do what we did earlier when we we're working with the alien. Grab our white arrow, get into way too much detail, click on this. I want you to be a corner. Okay, and you know arm spikes. Now the cool thing about the um, direct selection tool is you can grab stuff. You've got this like finite control. Okay, so really tight and close. Don't be afraid to move the anchor points. If you're trying to fix something and it's like this, you're never gonna get it because it's not actually on the line. So grab the center and move it across or using the curvature tool, you can do it. Okay, and the curvature tool has a really weird shortcut. I use it all the time. See, it says shift and then it's that apostrophe. You can see that there, the editor, thank you very much, will be zooming in. Okay, so it's that shift plus that weird key. Hopefully if you're on a non-English keyboard, you can find that one. Um, or it might be different, um, but should be there listed. Okay, what it is, um, shift apostrophe. It's up near my escape key on my keyboard, but I know it's different on lots of different ones. So, uh, shortcut key, you can move this around here. All right, we're gonna call that one done. So mixing uh, curves and lines together, you can get a ninja. If you are struggling, don't worry, everyone struggles with the curvature tool at the beginning. We're gonna introduce this a few other times through the course, get better and better. I'm gonna show you tips and tricks as we grow and move through the course. So if yours is a bit of a wonky ninja, that's totally okay, don't worry, we'll get better. For now though, let's wrap this one up and I will see you in the next video where we start doing our stuff, or at least I make you do it. All right, I'll see you there.
Hi everyone, it is class project time. I want you to practice your curvature tool. There's kind of like two projects in here. I've snuck in two for, for the one class project. So uh, sub project one is, I want you to redraw the owl. Okay, so just go through and using the tools that we've got so far, redraw the owl, give them some color, color all of your little characters as well. Curse a little bit because it's not doing what you want. Mess with it a bit, get it close enough. If it's not perfect, don't worry. We're gonna be doing the curvature tool a few times through this course. Once you've done that one, the next thing I want you to do is, I want you to, sub project two, is I want you to find an icon version of your creature that you picked for the course. Okay, so remember in our brief, you picked a character or a creature. I'm using a fox. Okay, you can use whatever you like. You can change it if you find the last thing was hard to find. Okay, so pick your creature and I want you to find something you can draw over the top of. Okay, basically we're tracing other people's work here. And while tracing is, you know, we don't want to copy people's work and use it. Okay, but in terms of practicing, it's the best way. It's good to find other people's work, practice, 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 redrawing over the top of it. But that's why in this, uh, the deliverables for this one is that I don't want you to share it on social media because we're copying other people's work. Upload it to the assignments for sure, but because we're copying somebody else's work, I don't want you sharing it around. And if you do want to use it for anything, you gotta make sure that you go and get the appropriate license. But the way to find something good to draw is, okay, go to Google Images, type in fox, or whatever your creature is. If it's a cat, type in cat, and then put in either icon or logo afterwards, and it should give you some results. And what you're looking for is, you're looking for something simple. Don't go and think, I'm gonna make that. Okay, because that's way out of our league right now. We'll get to there. What we want is something that only has one color and just simple shapes. So I'm saying no to that, no to that. What am I saying yes to, Dan? Mm, wait there, that's doable, okay? Probably not the two half tone. You could definitely do the two half tone. This one here, really nice, easy shape. Okay, I picked this one. This one's getting pretty tricky. One of these could work. Okay, so just have a look and just keep it simple. Don't bite off too much at this stage. This one could be done, but tricky. That one there, perfect, nice and simple. So find some stuff, do some practice, upload it to the assignments if you are doing the class projects as we go along. Another good word is silhouette. So a word that I can never spell, silhouette. <laughs> okay, might be a better way to go. The trouble is, is it can be quite detailed. So use those terms, either your creature's name and use icon, logo, or silhouette. And you'll find something hopefully that is drawable. We like that, looks drawable, practice it, upload it to the class projects. The one thing I will say before we go is we might run into problems. We looked at this way back at the beginning of the course is the dreaded isolation mode. You're like, what's happened? I can't click on this. It's grayed out. Okay, and I can, what's, why is this on top now? Everything is lost. The world is ending. What do I do? You remember, you either just double click in the background to get out of isolation mode or double click to go in. Okay, hit these arrows a few times and come out. Okay, that's one thing you might be getting lost in already, but there you go. Use the tricks we've learned so far using the curvature tool. Draw the owl, redraw your creature for a bit of practice, and then I will see you in the next video. Don't skip the class projects. All right, next video. Hello, hey, in this video, we are going to take our previously sleeping fox and put them under some moonlight. Go on, we're not gonna do a whole lot, right? We're gonna add a moon, but we're gonna start using a few of the tools in combination. I call it skill stacking. Okay, so we're gonna draw simple shapes, then we're gonna use the curvature tool to draw curvy lines and stuff, and then we are going to use the shape builder tool to kind of slice bits out and recolor them. It's definitely a more of a real world use case of Illustrator, rather than using all of these tools in isolation, like we do in the videos, we're gonna combine them, stack some skills make some shadows. All right, let's jump in and make some moonlight. All right, to get started, open up the sleeping fox that you've drawn. If you haven't drawn it or it went horribly wrong, okay, you can open up the file called catchup01 in your exercise files. Okay, and you can open and work with my one, up to you. All right, so you're ready to do some skill stacking or combo tool doing stuff. Okay, so we're gonna start with a really basic one, shapes. That's what we started this course with. We drew lots of shapes. I'm gonna draw a moon that has no stroke and a white fill because it looks kind of like a moon. Now we're going to use a curvature tool. We're gonna to say, I want the sun kind of hitting it that side and the, you know, the shadow of the moon on this side. And I'm gonna say, click once for a curve, click once for a curve, click once for a curve. Now we could keep going around like this to make the shape, okay? Or we could just leave it actually. And what I might do is give it no stroke and give it a fill so it's a little bit clearer to you what we're doing. So I've drawn that curve. 
I don't want to finish it off. If you're like, what do I do now? This thing's attached. <laughs> that is a very good point, Dan. Hit escape. Or just go to your move tool, okay? Or your selection tool, the black arrow, okay? Either way, you'll disconnect it. And we've got a line, a curvy line. And now we get to do the third part of the things we learned. Shape, curvature tool. Select them both, not the background. So we should lock the background. We should, I'm not going to. What I'm gonna do is click this first one here with my black arrow, hold shift, grab the line so they're both selected. Go to my shape builder and I'm not going to trim them off. I'm just going to color it. Watch this. I'm going to go darker gray color and I'm going to go poof. There we go. Now what do we do with all this junk that's lying around? The exact same thing we did when we did the impossible triangle. Look at us using all our cool tools. So the shape builder tool, maybe hold down option on a Mac or on a PC and you can get rid of the lines. You can draw a line through them. Okay. So what we did in the last one or just click them up to you. And look at that. It's a moony shadowy thing. I want to do that better, but That'll do for now. Let's do another one with the head, kind of a shadow cast down the bottom here. So I'm going to grab my curvature tool and I'm going to, instead of just doing a curve, I'm going to do a curve and a line. You ready? I'm going to show you one of the problems that happens when we do start combining tools. Okay. You might run into this where we go, all right, click once for a curve, click once for another curve. Then I want to start a straight line. So I double click and great, got a straight line. But then if you get close to the edge, Watch what happens. It kind of selects the shape underneath and you're like, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so that's one of the quirks for it. Okay, so I'm gonna undo um, and often it's easy just to go past where you need it to be. Okay, so I'm going past there and that's gonna work. I should probably make that a double click. It doesn't have to be. Again, I could fill it up, but I'm actually just gonna switch it from being no fill to having a black stroke. Remember to let go of this. You can hit escape, okay, disconnects it, or you can go back to your move tool, okay, or selection tool. I call it the move tool because it's called that in Photoshop. They call it the selection tool here. I call it the black arrow lots too. All the same thing I'm talking about. So black arrow, um, I've got my line selected, hold shift, grab this, and I'm gonna color this part of the draw in. So I'm gonna say I would like it, actually I'm gonna go to my shape builder tool. Where is he? I'm going to pick a fill color to go in there. Okay, I'm on my swatches. I'm gonna pick something kind of in this swatches, the foxy colors that I've got. And I'm just gonna click once, there we go. Now I don't want it to be that kind of orange color, I want it to be slightly different. So I'm gonna finish with the Shape Builder tool. So I'm gonna hold down, I'm gonna delete these. So I'm gonna hold Option key, Alt key on a PC, and delete these little lines. And what I'm gonna do is go back to my selection tool, the black arrow, okay, deselect off, grab this. Now he's like one chunk by himself. I'm gonna show you a trick that I do all the time for just changing the colors of stuff. It's a bit advanced, but hey, why not? Let's go to this one here. So we've been using swatches lots, Go to color mixer, okay? And yours by default will either be on RGB or CMYK, depending on the way that you started this document. Both of those are not very good. The best one is HSB. Doesn't sound very sexy, but H is hue, S is saturation, and B is brightness. It's really useful. So I'm going to, the hue is changing the color, okay? Uh, the saturation, okay, is how bright that color is. You can wash it out, make it super strong and saturated, and brightness is how dark it is. Okay, so I find that good. So I'm gonna undo, because I kind of wrecked it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you are that original orange color. And then I'm gonna go to this, my HSB, and just make it a bit darker. So that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> kind of looks like he's got a beard. He's sleeping. All right, let's do some more. Uh, let's put a line across there. So let's grab our Shape Builder tool. You can probably skip the rest of this. I'm just gonna work my way through, make a few shadows. It's not particularly new and exciting. Watch me on fast mode if you're keen, otherwise you can skip along. Okay, so I'm just gonna add some more shadows. So this one here, I'm going to add a line, no curve. So just double click, double click. Escape key a couple of times to disconnect, grab your black arrow. I got this selected, I got this selected. And you'll notice I didn't bother going and changing the stroke in the fill to be black line. That's not essential. I just did that because it looks better on screen, but you can just leave it like that. I have a line with no stroke and a fill means I can't even see it, but it's there and the Shape Builder recognizes it's the most important part. So Shape Builder, I'm gonna pick a color. I'm gonna say, for my swatches, I'll probably pick just a slightly darker color out of there. Actually, I'm gonna pick the same color I used before and just go through and say, I want that color, but I'd like it to be a smidge bit darker. There we go. That's gonna be my shadow thing going on. <laughs> what do we think? It's kind of a shadow. Here we go. Let's do his back. And again, let's go to the curvature tool and I want it to be a curve, so click once, click once again, double click here, double click here. It is a bit tricky to know what we're doing, right? So 
I use my shortcut V key to go back to the black arrow, grab you. So I got them both selected, shape builder, shift M. Okay, I'm gonna go to my fill and I'm gonna say actually whatever color I've got, let's make it a bit darker and go bam, there we go. The one thing I've got though is I've got this left over that sometimes happens. I'm just gonna delete it on my keyboard. All right, next one I want is this tail. I could use my curvature tool again, but you might be like, why don't you just use a copy of the shape? That's a really good idea. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So I've got two of them, make one a bit bigger and then kind of lay it over like this. Let's change the stroke so you can see. Not necessary, but let's do it anyway. So no fill, I've got a black stroke and I'm gonna get it, I don't know, kind of like that. Maybe like that. Okay, shift click both of them so they're both selected. Go to my shape builder tool and I'm gonna fill this one with one of those oranges, but a slightly darker version. Boop, there we go. Now all of this stuff, see all these lines, we can delete with the shape builder tool, which we happen to already have selected. So I'm gonna hold down my option key and go bam. And there you go, I ended up with that stroke. Okay, like I said before, sometimes you end up with a stroke depending on what your original shapes were. So now I'm just gonna select on it with the black arrow, say you, actually, do I need you? I don't, you're just sitting on top. There you go. Let's do one more, let's cast a big shadow off the fox. So I'm gonna grab my shape builder tool. We could use the line tool here, because we're only just gonna draw a line, but let's practice using the shape builder tool. Uh, what do we need for a straight line? That's right, double click. Ooh, and it did it, look. It's connected this up, so it's added a point to my rectangle. So the curvature tool, just so you know, can be used in conjunction with like, let's say I use an ellipse, and then I can grab my curvature tool and go and add a point to it and start messing around with it. Okay, that's not what I want right now. Okay, what I wanna do is actually grab my curvature tool. I'm gonna deselect the background, so I've got nothing selected. Curvature tool, I'm just gonna start quite far out here. So I'm nowhere near the edge of that line. Okay, space bar, click and hold and drag. Okay, and I'm gonna cast a line maybe down here. Maybe double click for a line. And that's good enough. Escape to disconnect it. Grab my selection tool, that selected. Hold shift, grab that selected. Now I'm gonna to switch to my shape builder tool and I'm gonna say a fill of the slightly darker version of that. Fill that in and hold down the option key, alt key. And I can delete it or I can grab my black selection tool and afterwards go and find it and delete it. Doesn't matter which way you do it there. And this, my friend, is my finished fox that now has a moon casting moonlight on them. I'm selecting all these because I don't like them with that line. I'm gonna make them white with no stroke. That looks nicer. All right, I hope you find that useful. A uh, little project for you to do. And the cool thing about it is that it is what tends to happen when you're drawing an illustrator. You use shapes, you use the curvature tool, you use a bit of the shape builder tool, you use all the other tools we learn in the course. And last thing I'm gonna do is that seemed like a good idea, but it doesn't seem that great now because it looks like he's just got a, like a, is it a five o'clock shadow? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click both of these. So black arrow, shift click them both and shape builder tool, shift M. Okay, and I'm just gonna drag a box across them both. You're back to being one thing. Look at that, we broke it apart, put it back together. Look at us doing cool stuff. All right, that's it for this video. We stacked some skills, we combined them together, doing awesome stuff. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna redraw these same shapes, but we're gonna use a different tool. We're gonna use the pen tool instead of the curvature tool. For some of you, the pen tool, you might have shuddered there when I said the word. You're like, I hate it. <laughs> uh, why do people not like the pen tool? It's because it is trickier to learn. Why do we bother using it when we go at the curvature tool? The curvature tool is great. It does a lot of thinking for us, but is not as much control. You will find in your eventuality of career in Illustrator, uh, you're gonna need to learn the pen tool, so we're not going to shy away from it. We're gonna get involved. We'll learn about the pros and cons between the two tools, but if you find it tricky, it's okay. It's a tricky tool, but one that'll bring you much joy once you've learned it, honest. All right, let's jump in. Okay, to get started with this one, I have kind of got it ready for you. If you go to file open and in your exercise files, uh, exercise files is one called pen, where is it, pen tool. Open that one for me and you should have everything ready to go. Okay, and this one we're gonna start with the crown. Okay, so zoom in, command or control plus plus plus. Okay, we're gonna redraw this one. So here's our two tools, right? Curvature tool, we know and kind of love. Pen tool, we don't know and you probably won't love. Why are we doing it? It has way more control. It's what people use in Illustrator. You're gonna find tutorials on it and it's the one I use. Okay, so we need to kind of, ah, we need to learn it so that you know, we can either appreciate the curvature tool and never use the pen tool again, 
or more importantly is probably just a little bit of practice with a pen tool, sees its pros, sees its cons, and eventually you will grow to love the pen tool. Um, so let's go in and start. So grab the pen tool, and by default, remember the curvature tool, if you click once, you got a curve, right? Click a couple of times, you got a curve. It's the opposite for the pen tool, of course. Okay, so I'm gonna click once, uh, and click again, and click again, and we get corners by default, okay? What happened here? That might have happened to you already. Can you tell? It's because it's got a fill. It's got a white fill here, can you see? And it's trying to fill it in, even though you haven't finished. Can you see? It's trying to put a white fill in there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go to fill, and I'm gonna say have no fill, please. And black stroke looks fine. I'm gonna continue on my merry way. Click once, click once, click once, click once, click once. Go, 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 Dan. They're watching. All right, we drew a crown. <laughs> so by default, the pen tool, click once, get our corner. So we want to now do a curve. So I'm gonna go over here to our alien blobby thing. So uh, let's do curves. So we're gonna start at the top like we did in the last one. So instead of just clicking once to get a curve, the pen tool, you click and drag, and you get a little handles. So that's one of the perks for the pen tool is the handles are seen straight away, whereas the curvature tool, they hide them away to make things a little easier, but we're hardcore illustrator learners and we want to see all of the goodness. Okay, so again, exactly like the curvature tool, we are looking for the apexes. So I'm gonna click, hold and drag it down. You can see, oh, there's my line, okay and it comes out, and I've just got a bit more control as I'm drawing, whereas the curvature tool, there's a lot of just clicking once and kind of moving around and getting close and then adjusting afterwards. What we do with the pen tool is kind of adjust as we go, which is more advanced, a little bit more tricky, but this is the, I guess, the end goal is getting you good at the pen tool, because we do eventually need all the control. So we're looking for the apexes. Now, not clicking once. We're gonna leave that one, actually we won't. We'll do curves, so we're gonna click and drag. And you're never gonna get it perfect. That's just the way it is with both the curvature tool and the pen tool. So we are going to continue and go that one there. And you're like, oh, what you'll want to do is go and fix that. The problem with fixing this one on the fly is that it's making this one harder. But don't worry, okay? I'm like, oh, there's an apex there. Do it, does the apex go on that? Or oh, does it go over here? Well, we can figure it out. It's a bit of experience. So let's go over curve here. We can't get it. You can try and fake it, but don't worry. Remember, we can come back and fix this afterwards. So I'm gonna kind of line it up as good as I can. Find the apex here, click and drag, click and drag. And what ends up happening is the closer it is, I've still got my mouse down, I'm holding it down. The closer it is to this uh, center anchor point, the tighter the corner or like the curve gets really kind of angular. <laughs> and out here, it passes through in a really kind of, um, you know, straight through kind of way. I'm gonna leave that there, because I've already broken it. A Couple of things that you might do, um, like some of the other tools, is you might accidentally get close to the edge and it does this. Actually, let's drag this, and you're dragging it, dragging it, and it goes <laughs> Okay, and you're off and you're like, where am I? Okay, the trick here is let's go to undo, and let's go command or control zero to get right back. Basically, we just zoomed off down the bottom, okay? It happens, happens to the best of us. Let's zoom in a bit. And the other problem you might have is you'll get to here, and you'll be like, oh, excellent, just leave that there, because that's perfect. The problem is the next curve we made it really really small because we wanted to like oh yeah that's perfect okay we kept it nice and small and then we got to here and we're like there's no curve and you try and fix that one what ends up happening like that seesaw okay and the curvature tool when we're looking at it even though i don't really want it for this curve above i kind of need it for the next one okay because i need that to be flowing through and i can adjust this other one afterwards am i making any sense the pen tool man it's tricky I'm gonna work my way around, and what you'll find is that when you meet another designer, and there'll either be, I hate the pen tool, or I love the pen tool. There's no middle ground. People either hate it because they haven't made it work, or they love it because they have finally mastered it, which took a lot of work. And the work is you need a little bit of a tutorial help like this, okay, from Dan, but then you need a lot and lot of practice just comes with practice. Okay, so I've gone all, all the way around. We've got an average looking thing. A little weird thing about the pen tool is you come back here and the curvature tool, we just click once and we've got this lovely curved kind of line. Whereas now, I'm gonna undo, okay? I get here and I still want it to be a curve, okay? We know if I click once, I get a corner. Not what I want. I wanna click, hold and drag, and then we get that other handle. Look at that, seesaw. 
Excellent. The other thing just to remind you, you might have caps lock on. Okay, some people love caps lock. It does nothing different. It's the same pen tool. Okay, just with a little crosshairs instead of, if I turn caps lock on my keyboard off, you get the little pen. I used to be all about the target one. I don't know. And then I gave up caring. <laughs> now I just use the pen. Don't care. But you decide. I've had students restart, reinstall Illustrator to get rid of the caps lock. <laughs> Turns out it was just caps lock on. So don't do that. The other thing that can be handy when you're drawing is view, make sure that smart guides, I like them off when I'm drawing with a pen tool, but when I'm using anything else, I turn them back on. The other one thing is that sometimes you end up doing something and you're like, ah, oh, get off, get off. Who remembers how to detach it? Escape key, kind of just like, if you keep hitting escape, okay, kind of gets rid of that connection and you can kind of start again. The other thing is, is if you deselect off, let's go, so I haven't finished it, right? I've grabbed my black arrow, click off in the background, then I go, how do I get this started again? So I grab the pen tool, okay, and I hover above this. Can you see the little icon there? So the little asterisk, start new line, okay? It's gonna start a new line. Undo, undo, undo. But if I grab the pen tool and get close to the end, can you see it changes from the little asterisk to the little slash line thing? Just means, hey, I'm gonna pick up where we left off before, okay? Um, and with mine, it's kind of picked it up, because I clicked it once, again, oh, where we go? Let's start back, okay, pen tool. And if I click once to connect it up, what does clicking once do with the pen tool? It's right corner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw that out, go back to here, grab my pen tool, see the little line, click and drag. Makes it a curve. And I've connected back up again. Again, we don't click once, we click and drag, and we get it all nice and fill. All right, so now that we're done, we're gonna go back to the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow, which is the A key on keyboard, and I'm just gonna drag it out. And remember, make sure that it's on the actual line, the anchor point, these little handles, now we can jiggle around. And you kind of fix this one, and this one's not quite right, it needs to come out, and then what's going on over here? I'm doing really subtle movements because I kind of know what's gonna happen, but for you, don't be afraid to go jiggle, 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 okay, and kind of figure out what is it doing, am I making it, should it be in, should it be out, should it be in, somewhere in between. And if you can't make it happen, maybe it's this other one. If you still can't make it happen, grab the pencil again, okay, and watch this, if I go over the line, Okay, let's find a place that I might need it more. <laughs> I need loads of places. Let's say I want one here, because I can't get it over. Say, if I hover above the line that already exists, can you see asterisk, new line. Hover above it, plus, I get the little plus. Okay, so white arrow, and I've added a, an extra anchor point. The more anchor points, the more control I have, but tends to be not as smoother lines. So it's kind of a nice balance of like, do I need just these two anchor points, or do I need this extra one in here? Let's have a look. What do I think? Whoa, that one in there is needed. I don't know. Up to you. Cool. So we've got a few bits that need a bit of fixing, like this one here. Okay, remember we couldn't quite get it earlier on, so now I can go back with my white arrow, click on the anchor point, and go, you're in that way. And you maybe go more on the anchor point, or, you know, on the actual line that I'm trying to trace. Same with you. You definitely need to be a bit tighter, same with you. And you come down here, you go down there, you go there. All right, we're getting there, okay? And you just work your way around, moving these little handles, maybe adding some, maybe removing some. How do you remove them? Go back to the pen tool. P is the shortcut to the pen tool, okay? And you might say, actually, I don't want that anymore. Can you see plus? And if you hover over an existing one, you can minus it and see if we can do it without it. We kind of can't. <laughs> need the pen tool back in. And, oh, pen tool back in, grab the direct selection tool, which is the A key, okay, the white arrow, and we can fix it, Ish. There you go, all right, um, let's pen tool, click, drag, do this eyeball, okay, let's give this a go, good enough, maybe dragging out on that last one is quite important, and I'm going to cheat, grab my black arrow, click off, click on this thing to make it all selected, copy and paste it, and then I'm gonna hold shift, shrink it down, and go to cheat, even though we're meant to be practicing the pen tool. Done, enough. All right, let's have a look at now the ninja. Okay, so the ninja is, we did it before, let's do it again. Um, the only other difference here is we're gonna convert some points. Okay, so let's start with this, because it's nice and easy. Do I click once for a corner, or do I click and drag for a corner? So right, click once, click once, click once, find the apex, click and drag down, Click once, click once, click drag. 
Let's say we click and drag and accidentally get a curve where we want a corner. What do we do? We can undo, which is probably the easiest option, but we can come back to it. I want to show you later. Okay, here I want this one to be a click once, click once and drag, click once. Oh, that's an interesting one. So this one here, you might, let's say I start up here too far and I go back past it. Okay, and I try and come back here and it does some weird stuff. It's because the handle's trying to pull it so far out but you put an anchor point here, so it's going up and then like gravity kind of like being forced back to the anchor point. We can fix it up afterwards, so we're gonna leave it. We'll tidy it up. Okay, click once, click and drag for a curve, click once for a corner. Now, I'm gonna draw this a little wonky on purpose. Not because I can't draw very well with a pen tool. It's a bit of both. Okay, um, let's say I wanna make this nice and symmetrical. I'd use the ellipse tool, that's what I would do. Okay, but let's say, why is this not looking good, okay? The big reason is, is that for something to look symmetrical, like this top one here needs to be flat because it wasn't, okay? How do I get it to go flat? Hold shift, okay? So it's nice and flat. These need to be roughly the same length, okay? So it's never gonna be good when one's short and one's long, kind of get this. And these two need to be perpendicular, parallel. Whatever the one is, these need to be straight and these need to be up and down. Okay, so you can see this one's kind of poking off to the left and this one is mostly straight, but way longer. And um, if I draw an ellipse for you, just get a sense for this one. So I'm drawing an ellipse, uh, holding shift to get a perfect circle, grab my direct selection tool, click on this. Can you see what makes it go perfect? These are the exact same length as these. They both run parallel, perpendicular, away from each other. Whatever that word is. Okay, so that's what I can try and mimic here. I can hold shift, so it goes straight up and down. I'm gonna try and make them the same kind of length. I'm gonna make sure they're there. Have a look at this one. These ones are way longer. So, shorter, shorter. And this one here needs to be longer that way, a bit longer that way. Can you see how just with a few like tweaks, it's not quite perfect yet, but I'm using my arrow key to move it around. It's way more symmetrical. All right, I'm gonna do this last one here. So I'm gonna say click once, click and drag for a curve. And while I'm dragging, I'm actually gonna hold shift because I get that straight up and down. Rather than fixing it afterwards, I'm gonna say, you. I'm gonna get you close, get you. Hold shift again. Can you see holding shift, if I click once there, it will join that one to that one in a straight line. We're getting a bit advanced here. Ignore that bit maybe. Oh, look at us doing reasonably symmetrical stuff. These things here need fixing. Okay, so this need to be longer. Yep. Better. You should be kind of like roughly the same thing. This one should be roughly in the middle. This should be a little bit further down. Oh, up or down? Up. Yep. And then you spend half an hour getting it perfect. Grab your black arrow and then you drag it over there. Grab your ellipse tool because you can't stand it anymore. <laughs> uh, grab your direct selection tool and that's what we do. Oh. Right, one last thing is down over here. Can you see this? This was a corner, but it was meant to be a curve. So there is a tool for it. So if you hold down the pen tool, underneath it, there's one called the anchor point tool. Okay, so I'm gonna grab that. Okay, what it does is it converts anchor points. So if I click it once, it goes from a curve, so I'm gonna undo it, from a curve to a corner. If I want that to be a corner, I click hold and drag handles out the wrong way. If you do end up in a knot, or it's doing something weird, and you're like, what is going on? Give it a wiggle. Don't be afraid, because sometimes giving that wiggle, you're like, ah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> but I want to be a corner. Same with this one here. You can be a corner. Oh. You can be a corner. Ooh, that one was neither a curve nor a corner. It was this handle here was the problem. So A key on my keyboard for the direct selection tool. And I'm just going to move you down there. Don't be afraid to move the anchor point if it's causing you trouble. Right in the middle of the apex is better for them. There we go. All right. That is the pen tool. It is tricky. We're gonna do it more in the course, but you will find eventually that the curvature tool will get you most of the way. And then after a while, you'll be like, oh, I wish there was all this more control. And then bingo, pen tool's ready for you. So start with the curvature tool, but be ready that the pen tool is both um, very useful in Illustrator, but it is the same pen tool that's in Photoshop. It's the exact same pen tool that is in InDesign and it's in lots of CAD and 3D and drawing applications. The pen tool, sometimes called the Bezier pen tool, is everywhere. All right, my friends, that is it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Happy pen tooling.
Hi everyone, it is class project time. Uh, I want you to do basically a repeat of this project, um, but using the pen tool. So we're going to draw the owl, okay? And what I want you to do is draw the owl and then put it next to the version you do with the curvature tool. And let me know in the comments which you prefer using. So we'll do it both for the owl and the creature that you redraw, okay? From the last project, remember you redrew over the top of an icon or a logo, do both of those, put them into two categories, pen tool, curvature tool, put your creature under here and save out the image. Okay, probably put it on a new document, copy and paste it, or just take a screenshot of where it is. Yeah, and post both of those things and let me know in the comments. Coming around to pen tool, what do you think you'll be curvature tool for a while longer? Don't worry if it's yours looks a bit messy or not as smooth as mine. I've got lots more experience doing it. There you go. All right, and like the last one, because we are copying other people's work, um, share it to the class projects, but not um, to social media. Just keep this one between us. So draw the owl, redraw your creature using just the pen tool. I want you to color both of them and then basically put them side by side, upload the image and then share it in the assignments. All right, that's it. Enjoy pen tool practice and I'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, uh, in this video we are going to take some previous students pen tool of uh, owls. People that found the curvature tool amazingly easy, the pen tool a little bit more tricky. Okay, They have been super kind and it said uh, you can use my example. Okay, One that has maybe some uh, more challenging edges with the pen tool. I'm going to show you uh, how I would go through now and fix them. Just so that you can, if you've got some trouble with the pen tool as well, how you might go to that next level. You got all the anchor points in, it looks like an owl, just got the edges and need a little bit of tweaking. And a big thanks to these students here, Rob Thompson, Tedra Uyub, Banks, Teresa Digmian, Valeria Boleslava. These are the four past students that I reached out to and every single one of them said anything to help future students. So thanks team. All right, so let's dive in and make some pen tool magic. Okay, to get started, I've actually included them in the exercise files just so that if you want to play along, okay, you can kind of tidy them up with me. Okay, they're in a folder called pen tool tidy up. Um, I want to show you a trick before we get started. You can open all of these up all at once. Okay, so go into the folder and click the first one, hold shift, grab the last one, and just drag them all into, can you see Illustrator's open in the background? I'm gonna drag it on top, and they should all open up. Okay, and they're all open in tabs along the top. We'll start with this first one, we'll look at Rob's one, and you can see Curvature Tool, basically everybody had a better time with the Curvature Tool, so I want to just show you how to go through and get the points in, and how you tidy it up with the pen tool. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in, and we're gonna go, I'm gonna click on it, and there's this new thing down the bottom here. Um, you can click Edit Path, okay, and then all it does is switch from your black arrow, Edit Path, to your white arrow to make it a bit simpler. We know that we can just toggle the tools over here or use our sweet shortcuts, V, A, V, A, V, A, up to you. Okay, so we're gonna look at one of the most obvious ones, this one here, okay, let's have a look. Basically, we're gonna have a look for anchor points. So there's one, two, three, four, five. These are the little handles that are poking out. And to get this curve, what Rob's done is he's kind of got one that doubles back on itself. That's this one here. So have a look again. So this, if I untangle it, can you see? It's to get the straight line, okay? It's just sometimes when you're drawing, you end up doing this. You go, you, and you drawing it out, and it looks perfect, kind of. But then it can look, you know, it's not perfect, okay? You've made it look good enough, but if you untwirl it, you'll find that actually, zoop, okay, we can tidy that up. And the other thing I wanna do, and the big thing with this one, is that there's just too many anchor points. This one here is, oh, there's another good example. See, this handle is just, these little things are like little gravitational moons. They kind of pull the line. And if you pull it past each other, it eventually says, I'm gonna go this way, no, I'm going back that way. And then try it this way. When you do it just a little bit, it ends up with this little kind of like crooked bit. So what I'm gonna do is say, you go back there, you go back there. And I'm gonna do it with the points he's got. And then what I wanna do is remove a bunch of the points. Okay, because it's just really hard, but you will find it really hard to get it perfectly smooth with so many anchor points. Okay, that's a good enough go. Okay, but if I grab this, grab my pen tool, hover above any of these anchor points, you see it changes from a, a little asterisk or a plus to a minus. I'm gonna say, I don't want you, and I don't want you, and I don't want you. And that's just through experience. I know that the least amount of anchor points, the better. Probably just one here in the middle. You might notice he's got anchor points off these corners here. It's a bit more advanced. We won't cover that right now. Another little thing to tidy up is I noticed here that 
that's actually not joined. How do we join it up? That's a very good point. Okay, grab the pen tool, so P key on my keyboard. Like that'll work fine. You know, most purposes is fine, except that little little notch that's out of there. So what I'm gonna do is move that out of there, grab the pen tool, be very obvious to join them up. Okay, so the pen tool, when you're at the, like a beginning or end point, you see it changes from a star to the little slash. Can I say you, joins to you, and we'll join them up. So now it's complete path. Now, pen tool, I don't need you. <laughs> okay, so you kind of like force them apart, connect them up, and then delete the one you don't need. The less anchor points, the better. Okay, so let's have a look, and any other big obvious ones. So what I'm gonna do is pen tool, I've got it selected, I'm gonna say get rid of you. I'm gonna get rid of you, and I'm gonna get rid of you, okay. And you can see, I did nothing else other than remove some of the anchor points. The more anchor points you have, the more control, the more like fiddly you can be. But when you're looking for smooth, the least amount of anchor points are better. Same with this one, selecting it, pen tool, boop, boop. Use your own boop noise. This is always tricky, trying to get that to flow perfectly with this. I'm gonna hit my A key, I'm gonna bring it down, and I'm gonna do something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Weird noises. Okay, can you get in the vibe for it though? Okay, this one here. What you'll need as well is to get these to work perfectly. See this anchor point, see the angle that it's on? And this one here, they're at totally different angles. I'm never gonna get them perfect. So what I'm gonna try and do is kind of get them closer to each other. So these two are kind of closer and get them at the same kind of angle. That angle, that angle. And you'll notice that when they get closer to the same sort of angle and the same sort of length, they end up flowing better as a curve. It's better, right? Okay, and I can work my way around. Same thing, a lot of just removing anchor points. And let's have a look at this next one. Okay, another interesting one. So curve tool, pen tool. Okay, you can tell without even being labeled that the curvature tool is just so much easier, but it doesn't have all the control. And we do want to get better at the pen tool. So let's have a little look. So I'm clicking on this. Uh, let's have a look at this one. That looks like it's a corner point, and that's kind of right. That is one of the trickiest ones where this comes down and you're trying, like she's done it perfect, exactly how I said, right? There's this curve in the middle and the apex and there's this one. How do I get that to flow through really nicely? It's a little bit advanced. So uh, with your current skills, you should be doing something just like this. So you kind of pull it out so that it lines up and kind of smooths out, see that? And this bottom one here. So I don't really want to get advanced, but I've already said some stuff, so <laughs> let's do that. And what you can do is you can actually make this a curve. So I'm going to click on it, go back to my properties, I'm going to make you a curve. So basically handles sticking out of it. Even though I want it to be a corner point, you can actually have it so that as long as this one, okay, this back one is going completely strapping down. How do I get it to go strapping down? Shift key. Okay, so it doesn't really matter where it goes up here, but it does have a handle out this side, which helps ease that flow. Okay, so there is one out here already over this side. Okay, and there's this one in the middle. So I'm gonna go something like this. And this handle here, okay, holding shift, again, it kind of helps force the line out. Advanced stuff. Okay, how would I tidy up this one? Let's get that one there. Also, I'm looking where this anchor point is and this anchor point. And I'm looking to see the, the same kind of angle and the same kind of distance. See that's that little change there kind of makes them a little more parallel. What's going on over here? Okay, I can see this one. There is an anchor point here that is the little uh, handle here, like the moon. Okay, it's trying to force itself to go, follow me, follow me. And then it doesn't, it has to make a really hard right turn and ends up going up there. So what I'd probably do is pen tool minus, okay, and do the work with this one. And you're like, how am I meant to remember how to do that? That is the thing with the pen tool and anchor points and handles, they're tricky and a lot of it is experience. All right, let's zoom out, see what else. We can keep working through it. And um, what would you do now? Based on what you've seen, how would you fix up this line? What was the first thing you do? You got it, okay? Now that at the top, one curve, whereas here there's this one, this one, and just too many over here. And you can see why, right? You're like, I need to add anchor points here because I need to bring it down to my A tool for my direct selection. And that kind of works, but more anchor points means a kind of more of a wobbly, wiggly, detailed line. What I need to do is grab my A tool for my direct selection and grab this guy and just say, you come out here, buddy. There we go, it's looking great. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Actually, I asked this as an example and it's actually really nice. <laughs> Good work, Teresa. What would I do? I'll probably click on this and have a look. There's just one thing that bugs me, this one here. Boop. 
Okay, and it's, oh, it's this old chestnut. Look, so that one there, the moon's going, come out here, line. And this one's saying, no, you go over here. And because they're kind of going past each other, okay, they're fighting it out. So if I just go, you ease back that way, you ease back that way, just ease up on your controls there, guys, and just smooth it out. So if we look at this last one, okay, curvature tool, nailed it. Pen tool, a little bit squiggly lines. Okay, and let's have a little look. Um, this would be a good example. This one here is a broken anchor point. So you can see it's kind of, she probably had a bit of problem. Who was this one? Uh, Valeria. Okay, and this one wasn't connected up. So this is a very good example of what do I do here? I could just delete it and put it back in. That's the easiest way. But you can actually click on this anchor point and over the top here, okay, it is from a corner to a curve. Okay, let's go to this one. Boop. There we go. Okay, now we've got something that's more like a seesaw. You know, you like drag one side, the other side gets fixed. And what should we do? Let's tidy them up. Let's go my P for my pen tool. Say, you go, you go, you go. Okay, and I'm going to drag you down. And I'm going to drag you up to get it to look like it flows out of that line. Remember, we can do the tricksy thing where we say you can be a curve point. Okay, remember this is a bit advanced so that we've got these extra handles that poke out. Okay, and if we hold it, shift, okay, while we're dragging it, straight up and down, means this goes line goes straight through here and straight out of here. Gives me a little bit of control this way. I can move him in. And over here, this looks like it is broken into a corner point as well. Okay, let's go to curve. And we'll just leave the anchor points that they've got. And there's one here as well. Oh, that looks good. I like that one. You probably gonna go move it across. Sometimes as well, I've got my smart guides off. Okay, I like it, I prefer it off. Okay, so smart guides are ticked off in this case. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, sometimes use your arrow key. So just click on the point and just tap the arrow key around. I'm using the arrows on my keyboard. And in here, done a pretty amazing job here. Can you see? But let's have two. So the before, which it looks perfect, but probably spent a lot of time getting all of these lined up nicely. Okay, whereas over here, watch this. If I do it with just one anchor point, so pen tool, go to this one and just kind of drag that out and then drag that one down. And you're like, oh, I need more control. It's actually probably just needs to be moved around a little bit about there. Actually, it needs to be a straight because there's a straight chunk there. There's no straight chunk on this one. So what I might do is grab my pen tool and add one more point back in. Hold shift. So these things go straight up and down and kind of move them underneath each other. There we go. Now this can probably go down here. So that, that's kind of pulling it through there. So just with one, actually two anchor points now. Does that look much smoother, Dan? <laughs> Not really. Uh, a little bit of this one, a little bit of that one. Oh man, Pentel's tricky, huh? Has he made it better? Has he made it worse? I'm not sure. <laughs> Singing to himself. Uh, I think it's better. Can you see the little just the sort of subtle kinks in that one and let's have a look at this one versus that one what do you think they look the same yeah i agree <laughs> and i think because so much time was spent on this one but can you tell where the anchor point is look there's got to be one there right is there not there is you can see just a little bump in there all right that is it that is kind of what i look for when i am helping students when i'm working on my own work that just needs a little bit of tweaking most of the time you'll see that it's just less anchor points and getting the handles from those anchor points to do more of the work and then a lot of what makes it look good is when this anchor point is in a similar part can you see this one here uh, is in a similar angle and a similar part of the curve okay that one's not too close but close enough and especially because it's running the same kind of like angle and the same kind of lengths and things kind of run parallel and look nice. All right, I hope that was useful. I threw it in there in the course anyway. There you go. So that'll be it. I will see you in the next video. Another class project. Hello, my friend. Are you ready for pen tool redemption? The basics is, is that I want you to take the creature that you have been drawing, okay, with the pen tool, okay, maybe got frustrated with, duplicate them and redraw them or at least tweak them like I did in the last video. So the sub project number one is have a practice with the examples that our lovely students have shared with us. Okay, so go through those and see if you can tidy them up like I did. Okay, and then I want you to work on your own creature. Okay, so 
Remember, mine would have been the fox, whatever creature you're drawing on top of from the last exercise. Okay, so the pen tool version that you might have, I don't know, might have found some trouble with. Let's see if you can make it better. And um, before you go and make it better, I want you to grab your creature and make a duplicate of it. Okay, so copy and paste. So you've got two of them. And then leave that one so we can see an example and see if you can tidy it up. If yours was still really good, that's okay. See if you can make it even a little bit better. And once you've done that, I'd like you to do this, like have a before, uh, original pen tool, and then the, your pen tool redemption version, and save a copy of this. I don't mind if it's just a simple old screenshot or we're doing, remember from earlier in the course, file export, and just see if you can make it just a little bit better. Even if it's like, it's still really bad, but it's better, that is the right direction. If you've made it worse, that's bad, <laughs> okay? But hopefully we're making it even just a little bit better. Some of you will really get into the pen tool and others will struggle. I've taught thousands of people and it's tricky. Some pick it up faster, but the only way to get better is to keep doing it. So give it a try, practice with the examples, update your creatures so if you can make him better, share it with the projects and assignments. And we won't share this one on social media, mainly because we copied our creatures. We'll get back into sharing in social media in a sec. All right, have fun uh, redempting yourself. It's not a word. Uh, see you in the next video. Hi everyone, in this video we're going to start with a drawing of a fox and then bam, colour them in. What tools are we going to use? We're going to use all of them. Everything we've learnt so far in the course, we're going to use uh, the curvature tool, the pen tool, the shape builder tool, the line segment tool, the ellipse tool. We're going to add some new stuff like outline mode to help us uh, with our redrawing. It's a little bit of a long video, but I don't know, I think you'll find it useful seeing all these tools and how they get used together rather than how we've been doing it so far where they've been all on individual videos. Let's do some skill stacking. Let's jump in. All right, to get started, let's go to file new and pick, uh, I'm just gonna, the one I picked mostly, weirdly, is web, okay? And I picked common. It's just this one or this size here, normally this size here, okay? It's just a good rectangle size. It's always defaulting to RGB, which is the bigger color space. I want mine to be portrait though. And let's click create. Okay, let's bring in the uh, image. Okay, so I'm gonna go file, I'm gonna go to place, and I am gonna go to exercise files. I want awake fox v2. Let's make it a template so it goes on its own layer and gets grayed out a little bit. Okay, so this is my drawing. We're gonna combine all our skills here. So get it in and let's start building. Um, I guess just get started, Dan. And um, we're gonna start with some simple shapes because they've got all these easy curves that I could do with some basic shapes. So hold down the rectangle tool, grab the ellipse tool, and which one do I start with? I don't know, draw a big circle. Now, do these need to be perfectly round? Mm, probably. Okay, I wanna get to a nice big one. So hold down shift, okay, to drag it out. Okay, and I'm going to say no fill, please. Thank you very much. And I'm probably gonna pick a stroke. So click off to kind of close the fill. Go to stroke and pick neon green, just so it's easier to see. That's not very easy, go to pink. Okay, and I'm gonna drag the edge of it, not using the ellipse tool, gotta to grab the black arrow. Okay, so our selection tool and kind of line it up. It's not big enough, spacebar tool, drag it down. And I'm going to hold shift here. Okay, and just drag it a bit bigger. And then there's a little bit of just like jiggling around you. Needs to probably be a bit bigger. I'm holding shift so it stays a perfect circle. All right, and that's kind of about it. So we'll start with some shape builder circly stuff. So let's do that one. Let's just duplicate it, copy paste. Okay, and I'm going to grab it, grab it on the edge. Okay, with my selection tool. This one is even bigger, holding shift. Okay, it's a hand drawing, so it's never gonna be perfect. Okay, Ooh, I kind of got pretty close there. Okay, there we go. Maybe you can use your arrow keys just to tap it around. That's good enough for me. Let's get this back one. Let's duplicate this guy again, copy paste. And I'm gonna say, not the right size. I'm gonna copy and paste this one. Hope it's close to what I want it to be. Still not big enough. Hold shift on any of the corners, make it bigger. Go, oh, we're close. There we go. Let's get it close. Let's do the ears and the face. And then we'll do these other ones using the curvature tool or the pen tool. Okay, so do I just keep copying and pasting rather than drawing new ones? Maybe. Okay, holding shift to make sure it's a circle. Get this close. I'm gonna show you another little trick. Okay, when we're holding shift, okay, we can drag it, that's fine. But if you hold shift and option on a Mac, alt on a PC, so shift and that key as well, watch this, it drags from the center, which is really handy because we've been dragging from the side and that's fine, but sometimes it's nice to hold both those keys down. So it's shift and option on a Mac and shift and alt on a PC and it goes from the center. It's what I generally do by default. Okay, 
another tip while you're here is that we've been copying and pasting and copying and pasting is weird. It just kind of like plops it right in the middle of the screen. If I'm over here, watch and I paste just right in the middle of the screen. It's never where you need it to be. So another little trick for you is with your selection tool, start holding. So I'm just dragging it, right? So that's moving it. But if I do that exact same thing, start dragging it, hold down the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC. Can you see the original one's still there? And see my little cursors change to a little double arrow. That means like while I'm moving it, I'm going to make another version, which is brilliant. And now where I get it to where I want, the trick is you got to let go of your mouse first, then your keyboard. Okay. If you do it the other way around, if I start dragging and let go of the keyboard first and then the mouse, it just moves it. Okay. So just make sure start dragging, hold down that key and just make sure you get the mouse first. That is like dragging and duplicating at the same time. If you're like, that's way too hard. Just copy and paste. It's totally cool. All right, we're starting to get pretty complicated. So I'm going to alt or option drag this to get this part of the ear. And now we're all lost. <laughs> good work, Dan. Okay, that's going to be good enough for the moment. So get this far, have the big circles in for the neck. Okay. And then all of these ones for the head and ears. And now we're going to use our shape builder tool. Okay. We can go the long way or shift M. Okay, on both Mac and PC, we'll grab that icon there. And now what do we do? It's not working. Why isn't it working? It's because I haven't selected it. So I'm going to go my V key back to the selection tool. Okay, the first tool in the toolbar, select them all. Then I can go to my shift M for the shape builder. And now there's a lot of like, I'm going to hold down the option key on my Mac, Alt key on a PC to delete stuff. I'm going to say, don't need you. Start with the easy stuff because it's confusing. You're like, what do I keep in here? Start with the stuff like I definitely don't need that or that. All that. I'm just dragging across. I'm going to leave that there. We'll tidy that up with the pen tool. Uh, I don't need that bit. I don't need that bit. And just kind of like drag across and work your way in and then go, oh, deleted the bit I need. Sorry. Hit undo. Okay. So let's do all of this. You, you click in the middle of them. Okay. We're there. So one of the things with the shape builder tool is that you might end up with what's called artifacts or just junk. We'll call it junk. Okay. Stuff lying around. Like, what is that? What is that? So let's look at it first. Now, if I click off, actually go back to my black arrow. Sometimes you can't even see it. Okay. Sometimes it's just junk that has no fill or no stroke. So let's go no fill, no stroke. Okay. And you're like, I know it's there. It's causing me problems. Maybe when I'm going to my like vinyl cutter I've got here or my printer, or it's like, it's just stuff that's getting selected and messing with my life. So how do we get rid of it? First of all, we need to see it. Okay, even these small bits are quite tricky to see. So what we can do is we can look at something called outline mode. Outline mode is a way of looking at your document and x-ray vision. Okay, there's the long way, go to view and go to outline. You'll notice that it has a really super awesome shortcut. If it has a super awesome shortcut, it probably means people use it all the time, except I never use that one. <laughs> okay, but command Y on a Mac, control Y on a PC is a really handy one. Can you see it goes from all these lines have a look it goes from lines and fills to x-ray mode command y and like there he is can't see him there he is so it's really handy as well if i've got like if i select all this and give it a big strange stroke we're going to do this later on it's a dash stroke and it's all just looking a bit weird command y just shows me like a lovely little outline mode and if i turn my layer off back here okay everything just becomes a little bit simpler to work so when you're doing technical stuff Command or Control Y can be a real lifesaver because it allows you to do this. Command Y and say black arrow, select that, delete it. Select you, delete it. Select you, delete it. You might end up with junk all over the place. You can click on it and say get rid of you. I needed that, so I'm going to leave it back there. So Command Y is outline mode and is super useful. I need to select all of this and go to my properties. We're going to do strokes a little later in the course, so I'm going to turn my dash line off. That'll be a fun project for later on. And back to a one pixel stroke. All right, let's turn our library on. Let's turn this on. Let's have a look. What do we need to do here? So I'm going to select it all. Shift M for my shape builder tool. And I'm going to say that I'm not holding anything down. Remember, I'm going to connect all of this up to be one shape. This is going to be one shape plus that. Cool. That's going to be one shape. Just, I don't know. What do you reckon? We're getting there. Command Y. There we go. So we use simple shapes to get started, uh, mainly all circles. Then we use the shape of a little tool to tidy them up. So we're stacking our skills. Okay. And then we used outline mode, which was a new one. Okay. Next thing we're going to use is I want to join that up to here. So from earlier in the course, I have my smart guides off. It's another handy shortcut. Command U, 
control you on a PC because what I want to do is join a line from there to there and I've got a line tool I could use my pen tool here okay pen tool is great at drawing straight lines okay or I could use my line segment tool I never use a line segment tool FYI because it's good but the pen tool does it plus much more so I end up using the pen tool you could use the curvature tool the problem is is lining this thing up it's kind of working okay but if I want to line it up with this line here you're like where's my intersect okay so command U or control U on a PC is that smart guides on you turn it on you turn it off you turn it on you turn it off so what I'm going to do is go to you and hover above and it's going to say oh, I found an anchor point you're like excellent and over here I found a path do you want to connect to it yes not the exact nose I was looking for but good enough now what do you do you're like get off how do we detach our pen tool from like get off it hit escape or in this course you probably do this click 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 get off da. okay and then you go undo 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 and escape all right now I don't really need to do anything anymore because I can fill this with a color because I know that if I select it all with a shape builder later on I can say you remember we did this fill with a color okay I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to kind of like carve it out yet but that was really easy right pen tool just join it across so you need a bit of all of the tools uh, have a look at this circle here okay hiding under the line tool another little shortcut is see these M and L okay use a lot okay so M tool is the square and I'm just tapping L on my keyboard okay to get a circle M and L they're kind of near each other they make no sense M for a m square and L is definitely for a long circle <laughs> M and L don't make sense okay but we're going to do this we're going to draw it a circle what do I hold down to get it to be a perfect circle that's right shift okay but remember earlier on I showed you how we could scale stuffing by holding down the option key as well watch this we can do it uh, with making stuff as well so instead of holding shift and going from like you see from the top left kind of down we can hold down our shift and so shift for a perfect circle and on a Mac it's option and on our PC it's alt so hold both of those down and look it drags from the center often it's easy to find where the center is than trying to guess in the top left so I'm going to say about here okay holding both these keys down bam V key to selection tool grab it all shift M for my shape builder I'm using shortcuts it's probably blowing your mind okay but I'm reading them out shape builder if you want to go the long way Okay, there are just ones that are super helpful and we use a lot. I'm gonna go through the modes in the course. You'll know them by the end because you'll be like, stop saying it. Okay, so I wanna just join both of these up. Actually, and that too as well. There you go. Because I want this kind of cut out slice pie shape for his eye. Okay, next one is let's get these uh, little things. Let's do this down the bottom. We could make loads of circles, but it'd work, but it would take too long. So we're gonna go straight to the pen tool or the curvature tool. Which one should we do? Let's use the curvature tool. Okay, that's a little easier to use. And we'll do the top one with the pen tool. So I want to have my smart guides on. Remember, command or control U. I'd love it to be on that path or even outside of that path. That's okay. Because if I'm on the path, it's actually going to start adding to that line, right, Dan? So we don't want that, actually. <laughs> we want to go out here. So I'm going to click once to get started. Click once on the apex. Once here for a corner. Once on the curve. Once on the apex. Once. Oh, did that wrong. How do I transform it back to a corner? double click it you got it click once on the apex for a curve double click for a corner oh I did that one too geez Dan uh click once for a curve and I'm going to go through it again not joining it up I don't want to try and attach it I'm going to go through it and say click double click for a corner this one over here I've done it wrong how do I fix it okay click it once okay and just double click it there you go now how do I get him from being attached that's right escape key then I'm going to go to my move tool select all of it I haven't grabbed this stuff up here okay can you see if I move this now look I've not grabbed all of that it doesn't really matter for what I'm doing I just need really these chunks because I'm going to grab my uh, shape builder tool okay and go minus and then I'm going to go minus minus then I'm going to go command or control U which doesn't work in the shape builder tool I did not realize that okay used to and um, let's go back to our selection tool go command U it's still not working what's up command you am I using the wrong shortcut you it's command Y <laughs> uh, what is command you it is um it is uh, smart guides right I was just smashing that away <laughs> I was going undo like command you on smart guides on smart guides off whoops it's so command Y is for outline mode 
Okay, so I can kind of just see it. Is there any like junk hanging off the edge here? Sometimes let's undo. Sometimes you don't really see this until you're in outline mode. Let's say it's just like a little tiny bit there. Okay, and you're like, it looks fine. And then you're like, command Y or control Y. You can say, ah, oh, there you are. And you can either delete it with the uh, shape builder tool or you can grab the direct selection tool and say you. And to delete it, we're going to select it all, grab our shape builder tool and say, uh, hold down the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC. Well, there's still some junk in there. What is that? Just, there we go. There can be lots of little bit of junk depending on how detailed your work is. But we can delete it with the shape builder tool. All right, we're nearly there. Let's do this last one here with the pen tool. So P for the pen tool. Again, I'm going to start through it. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, click once. Over here, I'm going to click and drag. And can you see the difference? The curvature tool just adds these anchor points on its own, and it does a pretty sweet job. Whereas me, I want to just click hold and drag them out and put them in myself because I don't know. I don't want the computer telling me what to do, or at least not now. Okay, click once over here. Now click and drag over here, and then so it's hard to know, right? Because I know that. There we go. I'm going to just leave it there because you're like, that's not right. It's so that I can go back to my direct selection tool, the A key, and I know that later on I can go and fix this up and then adjust this around. It's never going to be right perfectly the first time. Okay, but I know with just a little bit of anchor points, not too many. Okay, nice smooth one through there. That's kind of what I'm looking for. So let's select it all with the selection tool. Go Shift M for the Shape Builder tool. And I'm going to say, I'm just going to get rid of the lines. Watch this. You're going to say U, holding down my option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC. Go you get rid of that line there. We're still in command Y, okay, or control Y on a PC for outline mode, and that's okay. Now I think we can color them. Should we color them? Why not? I'm gonna select it all. Okay, so my black arrow, select everything. If you're not sure if you've got everything, what I do is do a selection and then kind of grab one of the lines and move it off and just see if there's anything left behind. Nope, all good. So I've got everything selected. I'm gonna go my shape builder tool, great for coloring things in. I'm going to say fill and I'm just going to use these colors. Okay, you can spend a bit more time looking for colors under here. Okay, um, clicking in here in the rainbow colors. I'm just going to use the pre made swatches. These happen to be good enough uh, <laughs> fox colors. And I'm going to start clicking stuff. Um, you, you, there we go. And I'm going to say you are a darker color. And the face is going to be even darker again. And then the back ear is going to be a little bit darker. Actually, you can go to the full dark red we got there. And for this bit here, I want it to be kind of like an off white. So that's white at the top here. This is just a little bit gray. So I'm going to say you, uh, that color. And the bottom one is just going to be even darker again because it's kind of under his belly. All right, let's select it all. Let's remove all the stroke. So I go to stroke and go to none. Can you see the fill now that all selected has a question mark? That just means like you've got lots of things with fills and I don't know what to show here. So question mark means nothing wrong with it. Just like, I don't know what you want to show. <laughs> There's so many colors you've got selected. And let's go to layers and let's turn off our background. And you will find that everything looks better on a black background. So, or a dark background. I like going to my, remember M and L, okay? M for a rectangle. <laughs> so the M tool, um, zooming out, and I'm going to grab uh, my smart guides are on. So I snatch to the edges nicely. I'm going to put a big background of dark gray. I'm going to give it no stroke. I'm going to send it to the back. Remember with it selected over here to arrange. Let's go to back. Okay, and I don't know. Is it just me? Everything feels better on R. Uh, dark background. I'm not super happy with the colors. So last thing I'm going to do is I won't actually show you it all, but I'm going to go to the mixer and I'm going to mess around with this and probably pull some saturation out of it. Not really happy with that um, orangey color. So remember if you're on RGB or CMYK, you can switch it to HSB in the corner here and start messing with the colors. Um, I'm going to spend more time doing that, but I'm not going to show you because the video is already long enough. What I'm hoping you're seeing though is a mixture of techniques and tools in Illustrator. Okay, curvature tool, pen tool, shape builder tool, simple shapes, the line tool. We introduced outline mode. All these skills kind of build on top of each other and kind of stack our skills as we go through. And we're only in like the first quarter of the course. Imagine what you're gonna be able to do by the end of it. We've got so many more skills to add to it. We're gonna be Illustrator masters by the end or at least not illustrated newbies, somewhere in the middle. All right, so I hope you're working through the video. If not, start at the beginning, work your way through, see if you can get close to where we're at, because guess what? The next video, class project time.
Hello, hey, it is time for some uh, practice drawing. I have drawn some stuff for you. Um, they're called skill stack 0102. Don't check 03, <laughs> it's the embarrassing one. Um, so I drew some things that should be easily drawn with uh, all the tools that we've known, uh, we know so far. So there is some bits that I kind of ignore that bit and it kind of looks like Darth Vader. So I'm not looking for like perfect exactness. Okay, I just drew something that I think will be good to practice with and use all the tools we've learned. But you don't have to follow it exactly. So there's this one, there's skill stack 02 as well. Started off as a swallow and ended up being generic bird. But check out the class projects. So I want you to bring them in to Illustrator, draw over the top of them, okay, and using things like the basic shapes with the shape builder tool, like we did with the awake fox. Okay, use a pen tool, curvature tool. I want you to experiment with the outline view. Okay, going to the x-ray mode and turning smart guides on sometimes and having them off and just practice drawing these shapes. Color them when you're finished. And when you're finished, save an image, upload it to the assignment section and share it on social media. I'd love to see what you made, especially if you get time to color them. When you are posting on social media, if there is a chance to say, hey, I'm doing this course, Here's a link to it. You don't have to, but kind of helps me if people know where you're getting these man good skills, where they too can draw a Darth Vader looking swan thing. It was better in my head. And you know what was <laughs> way better in my head that came out really badly? Uh, skill stack 03. I'm not even gonna show you. <laughs> you have a look at that one. I drew that one a long time ago for the original version of this course, way back when. And I thought it was great, great drawing. And as soon as the course was live, I was like, the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's meant to be a swan. So I've redone myself with a different swan, a better swan. But if you get a chance, you can redraw 03 as well. You're not allowed to, you're not allowed to laugh though. Uh, just me. All right, so redraw one or three of them if you get time. Number three, if you dare. You can totally modify it to make it look better. I would be grateful. Make sure you share it online. And one thing I do want to show with you though is when you are bringing in an uh, image to trace, I've purposely not made them the right size. Up until now, every time you've imported something, it's been, oh look, magically the right size. So what's gonna happen is, let's say that I'm using my uh, web large, I'm using it horizontal, sorry, portrait, and I bring it in and I'm gonna go file place, and I'm gonna bring in the new swan, the better swan. So on exercise files, uh, skill stack, if I bring it in as a template, it's gonna go, Kabam, I'm way too big. And if you're doing it, maybe your own stuff, and you've got a super duper camera, it might come in ginormous. Okay, so to resize it here, we just need to go to our layers panel, unlock the template, click on it, and shrink it down. Okay, now you need to hold shift while you're shrinking it, otherwise you end up doing stuff like that. Okay, the other cool trick is, we've learned already, there is another key we hold down. We hold down shift, and what else will go from the center? So shift, make sure it's height and width are locked. But remember on a Mac, we can hold down the option key and on a PC, it's the alt key. You see it goes to the center. So you might go like something like that. So it fits on the page. Then lock it again. Make sure you're working on layer one. Otherwise, if you stay on this layer and go to say your circle tool, it goes, won't work. Okay, so just make sure you're on your layer one and you go to properties and back to normal drawing. All right, so have fun. Don't follow the drawings too hard. Ignore the bits that look wonky and not the right size. It was, I don't know, I spent a good 15 minutes making these things. So I lie, it was probably about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. Okay, so they're not perfect. You're allowed to take some creative liberal freedoms with them to make them look a little bit better or how you want to make them. And then share them on social media. All right, I will see you in the next video. Looking forward to seeing what you make. Hi everyone, in this video, we're going to go from this plain old fox to... <gasps> Techno, disco, all sorts of cool colors for the fox. And we're gonna let AI, artificial intelligence, not Adobe Illustrator, that's confusing now, but AI do the recoloring by using prompts. It's a great way to bust out of our regular old color schemes and explore new and pukey colors. Some good, some bad. All done with artificial intelligence using something called generative recolor. All right, let's jump in and make some cool and not so cool colors. Not cool, not cool. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, the ratio is not great, but hey, it's really quick and easy to do. Let me show you how quick and easy it is. Let's jump in. All right, first up, uh, open something that needs to be recolored. I'm gonna use the uh, fox that we're redrawing, the awake fox. I've also got sleeping fox ready to go. Um, and the other thing is before you get started, it needs to have some kind of color. You can't have it um, with no color or just one standard color. Can't all be black or all be white. 
some variation of color, even if you just go through and kind of fill it with any old swatch you feel like, okay? And just need something to kind of grab onto. The one thing though is that it will kind of keep or try and honor the dark colors, replace with dark colors, light with light. So put some a little effort into maybe not the color hue, but maybe the lightness. You can adjust them afterwards. And so what I wanna do is I wanna select everything, okay? I want the background to change color as well. And there's a couple of ways of getting to the generative recolor. There's this little thing that pops up, okay? There's recolor over there. You can go to edit, uh, edit colors, recolor. There's a thousand ways <laughs> of getting to the exact same tool in Illustrator. So if you do find a way that you're like, why isn't it used that way? Just because I kind of have to cut it down somewhere. Nobody wants to see the 10 ways of getting to generative color. You start off on recolor, go to this one here and have a play around with clicking the sample prompts. Okay, that's easy to do. Let's click on one, give it a sec. I'll speed this up. And what you'll find is nothing changes over here until you click one and then it kind of applies it. Okay, can you see all the different color variations? So I wanna get rid of salmon sushi and give you a few for instances of things that I like to type into it. It's kind of one of the new skills I'm trying to develop, like how to talk to the robots. Okay, so we're gonna go something easy, Seaside. And the nice thing is, see it's generating four new variations, but down the bottom is still those ones, that sushi mushroom thing that was there before, so you can go back. Okay, and you're gonna go Seaside. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. You, oh, you, oh, I bet you if you type in Seaside, yours will be different from mine. It's amazing how, like, I guess it's not like, this doesn't look like the Seaside. It's about getting you out of your own kind of way for choosing colors so that you don't end up doing the exact same thing every time you design a logo or a brand or a icon. And if you're new to design in general or in color, it's tricky to kind of find colors that all work together and generative color does a really good job of it. What else are we gonna tell it? Let's type, I like typing in cyberpunk. It's one of my favorite things to type in for making cool colors. Let's have a look. Oh, cool. And you can see even the background color, which is gray, can you see it changes? Like that's a really warm one, and that one's quite a cool gray in the background. So it's retained some of the lights and darks, which is really cool. Okay, oh, cyberpunk. I think I like that one the best. What other things can you type in? So think kind of art movements, okay, that have distinctive colors pop up. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, some cool stuff. Oh, oh I hate it. <laughs> what else? Artists, you know, okay. Um, now everyone's thinking Andy Warhol, maybe that Marilyn Monroe kind of uh, lithograph kind of print thing. And it's kind of got lots of yellows in it. For some reason, I haven't got it. So it doesn't know exactly what artwork you're talking about. And I don't remember the name of it. But think artist, think movie, think uh, like I'm thinking uh, movies that have really distinct kind of like color casts or color grading. Something like Blade Runner. That's, oh, is it that green? I feel like this needs to be more purples in it. But anyway, uh, AI is getting better and we're getting better at communicating with it as a designer. And um, like the other thing is I typed in this the other day. I was like, New Zealand flag, wonder what will happen. Does it know the New Zealand flag? It kind of does. It's red and red, white, and blue, like the American flag. There's no real color differences. So none of these are really close. Close-ish. You can generate again. Say you did bad. <laughs> Keep going. Getting worse. New Zealand flag, very similar. All oh, lots of flags that I'm going to type in all have the same colors. The poor New Zealand. Oh, let's go Irish flag. New Zealand flag, mm, not very unique. Looks like the Australian flag, almost exactly the same. British flag, same colors as the American flag. And the Irish flag, though. Oh, I think we nailed it. Look at that. Good work, artificial intelligence. Anyway, so you might be way better at prompts than me. Think of cool stuff to type in. Have a play around with this one. Have a play around with the uh, fox as well. All right, a little update to the video. A few people having problems with coloring it sometimes. Okay, so I just wanted to throw this in. Um, I've got this. There is no fill, okay, on these strokes. So if I use generative fill, okay, I won't work. It will color the strokes, but because there's no fill, it won't color them in. And because they're all the same stroke color, we end up with the same stroke. So uh, same with this. If I've got a fill and they're all the same color, it doesn't work. You, you see the variations? Okay, it's using the same colors and trying to recolor them, but they're all the same. So all you need is you don't need a lot. 
okay but you do need some variation in brightness doesn't have to be color okay so i've all got grays here but look at this i do not know what that will do hopefully it's good looking colors i wonder where it got it from anyway <laughs> best i don't know from my file that it's keeping on me i love you ai and um, but as long as you've got tone in there okay it will apply color on top of it to an appropriate level dark light that's more me <laughs> oh, okay it's not more me but anyway you get the idea just a reminder that you need to have some uh, variation in tone to start with and then recolor will work great all right that is it i will see you in the next video you can experiment around but uh, join me in the next video that's why i've come back and uh, we do this in the next video as a class project so join me there we learn some shortcuts and do some cool coloring and some bad coloring i'll see you over there Hi everyone, in this video we are going to create a mood board for the product that we are developing. Okay, uh, it's not a particularly exciting video, no real skills. I'm just showing you what I do when I'm building out a new project. And basically the crux of the whole thing is find stuff you like, stick it on an Illustrator artboard. That is it. Um, why is the video so long? I'm going to show you some places that I like to go to get inspiration for products and how to get screenshots and how to dump them all in Illustrator, but it's actually not that hard. Find stuff, stick it on the page. Mood board done. Uh, for those of you who want to hang around, let me show you the places that I get inspiration and kind of how I throw together a mood board. All right, let's get into it. Unless you're skipping it, then I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Okay, to make a mood board, it's just a page with lots of stuff that set the mood. Um, so when I make a file, I make sure it's RGB again for the bigger color range. And I pick anything, any size, because what ends up happening is you end up with this like, um thing that ends up all over the place okay just a big mess it's not meant to be presented to a client although you can do um but for us for now it is just for us to get our ideas in one place and illustrator is a great place for doing this now my one member was uh mills hot sauce okay so what i went and did is have a look around a few sites and uh, to get ideas for other, what other people are doing inspiration set the mood things that i like that's out there already not to copy but to reference from and kind of i don't know parallel or use as a contrast you can do something completely different but um yeah we need to figure out what's out there first and a couple of places I go to is uh, Dribble with uh, three Bs, okay? And just typing in hot sauce, hot sauce, okay? And going through and finding the ones that you like. Also like using uh, Behance, okay, dot net. Uh, another great place to get ideas from. Now, often these are really heavily designed, which are also beautiful, but sometimes are not real products. So often I'll go to Google Images as well to have a look at what's out there and you get a different mix of kind of like some super cool looking ones. And then you have some like average made at home, probably extinct brands kind of stuff as well. So it doesn't matter where you get your inspiration from. If something takes your liking, it doesn't even have to be hot sauce. It might be something, you know, similar. Okay, do some searching, find some stuff. And getting them into Illustrator, a um, couple of ways. What I tend to do is just do screenshots. I find something and I go on my Mac, Command Shift 4, and I drag a little box around it. Okay, and there it is there. It ends up on my desktop and I can edit. Okay, uh, in on a PC, it's different. You'll have to check how it works on a PC. Different versions of Windows do it differently. Normally it's print screen, but have a little Google on how to do screenshots. Otherwise, go into them, right click them, and say save as image. Okay, and once you've got a pile of them, what I tend to do, I'll give you some tips for that, is let's say I've got a new document. Okay, and I found all the screenshots that I've taken. And what I like to do is just have the finder window, either Mac or PC, open over the top of Illustrator, and then just drag the whole chunk in there. Okay, give it a second, click into Illustrator, and you get them all dumped into there. Okay, and then it's just a matter of just kind of moving them around and like we could make them all official and line them all up but all the screenshots are different sizes and i think i like the mixed collagey look of just everything being a funny size in a random place and if there are things that you're like oh man i really like this okay you can do some sort of biasing with sizes so that when you go back to it later on you're like that was the one okay or when you're working with a client you can kind of influence like this is a really strong leader of what you think the brand should be heading towards or the kind of style and that's it presenting to the client we might spend a bit more time but for us for now and um, in the next video i'm going to get you to create a quick mood board for what we're doing but yeah just throw everything on the page if you want to resize your artboard, okay, remember you've got an artboard tool, which is this one down here. 
Did I show you that already? <laughs> the artboard tool, okay? Or have nothing selected, and you can go to your edit artboards and you can make the size, see the height and the width here, or just drag the edge of it to bigger to incorporate everything. Okay, don't worry too much about it though. Don't worry about fonts and stuff unless you want to do fonts and stuff. We'll do that later in the course. Again, okay, we'll start kind of looking at fonts and how to get cool ones, and same with colors as well. Just throw in at the moment, just kind of like products that kind of align with what you want to do, even if they're not exactly the hot sauce. Just things that you think are interesting and would work for your brand. All right, that's it, Mood Board 101. I'll see you in the next video. Hi everyone, uh, it is not homework time, it is class project time, which is way more fun. Uh, this is an easy one. I want you to make your own Mood Board, just like we did in the last video. So add whatever the brand that you're working on to the top, and then just start searching and finding images that take your fancy. Put them on the page, uh, save it, and upload it to the assignment section. Um, you don't need to share the social media because it's kind of only for yourself and for us to see as part of the assignments. So yeah, make a document, call it mood board, uh, research related products and imagery and stick them on the mood board. Save an image from Illustrator and you're away. All right, that's it. Make your mood board and I'll see you in the next video. Hi everyone, I think it's time. It is time that you take all the skills and you make your new amazing creature. Okay, so the same animal that you've been working with or creature or insect or whatever it is. And, and I want you to build it out kind of like we've done here where we've redrawn something kind of uh, stylized. Okay, we've done some coloring using the skills that we learned that when we were redrawing the swan and the, what is the other thing? The bird, but for your own creature. How do we get there? Uh, start with your mood board. Okay, and go out and have a look at other illustrations. Okay, illustrations or icons or logos that use your animal, even some real photographs of it. Okay, different positions. Okay, kind of iconic looks. And just dump them onto your mood board. I'm just on that same mood board. Where did I put them? Randomly up here. That's totally okay. This is our rough place to work. So throw them in there to get an idea. And then you can either start drawing straight into Illustrator. Okay, just kind of like, oh yeah, something like this and start drawing. Or you can start with pencil and do what I did here for the Awake Fox. Okay, and there we go. And we draw over the top of it in Illustrator, bring it in. Now, I gotta put my hand up. I never draw that nicely. I never spend ages with the curves and I did this because we need to be able to redraw it in this class. I wanna show you the original image, where is it? It is in your exercise files, actually, it's on the mood board as well. It's called Rough Drawing, have a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that is Sleeping Fox Original 101, and that, the see this one down here? That is what I started drawing. I didn't even take a, a scan of it and start drawing over the top. I just kind of looked at it and I was like, eh, something's in there, and then I started drawing in Illustrator. You know, you don't have to be a great drawer. You don't even have to get it perfect in pencil. Just kind of, I find it easier to get my ideas down on paper first. You might be different. You might be using a, a tablet or something else, Okay, but I like doing these things and then kind of, drawing them out and then kind of getting far enough and going, oh yeah, I'm close enough. And then just start drawing an illustrator. Okay, so however you get to it, I want you to draw your creature. Then I want you to go through and use generative recolor to experiment with colors. Okay, and pick one. This is the one I picked. So draw it, pick a color, and when you're sharing it, share something like a screenshot of like all of this. I'd like to see the final product plus some color variations. I'd like to see uh, any other versions. Maybe you've drawn it twice or three times because they all look not as you'd hoped, okay? So I'd like to see all the bad ones as well. Showing the bad ones, really helpful for this class, especially when we're sharing it online, okay? Other people can see it and, you know, there'd be great people out there sharing this stuff. I want the people who did a really, really, <laughs> one that they're not super proud of sharing it as well. Like, I'm not super proud of this stuff, but it's good to see, because otherwise, I don't know, there's people out there think, oh, man, I'm not amazing, so I'm not gonna do it. Show the bad stuff so that other people can go, huh. Also, my, my stuff is also bad, <laughs> okay? And, and a bit of shared confidence in the group. We're all new, we're all getting started. Some of us are better than others, it's okay. Share the bad ones, share the good ones, even if you're not super happy with it. You can write that in the comments, say, hey, this is where I'm at. It's not exactly what I'd hoped, but this is where I'm at. And say that you're open to some feedback. There you go, get it out there in the world. So let's have a quick look at the overview here. Uh, so research, uh, photographs of your animal, plus any existing logos and icons, okay, and illustrations. If you're looking for that kind of swooshy thing, if you use the search term gradient animals, okay, so I've just Googled gradient animals and it gets you to this kind of stuff that's quite mm, in that scope. And we'll do gradients later on, but you can still get all this kind of curly, whippy stuff that's really cool. Up to you, you can go for any style. But Get them all into your uh, mood board. Okay, there it is there. There it is there. Then draw your creature. 
use any of the skills that we've learned so far, try and mix them up, but use whatever you can to get it working. Okay, remember starting directly in Illustrator or hand drawing first, experiment with the generative recolor to find some colors, then save an image. Be great to see your final creature. If that's all you have, that's okay. But if you have drafts of, uh, I don't know, versions that didn't work out, okay, and include any hand drawings, that'd be great. Upload it to the assignment section and share on social media. Please, please, please. I love to see these sorts of stuff. Make sure you tag me, let other people know what course you're doing and how amazing it is and they should go do it. Okay, and yeah, love to see what you're making. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Baby steps, small steps. All right, draw your amazing creature, spend a little bit of time. You might spend 10 minutes, you might spend an hour. Up to you, where you're at, how much time you've got. You might spend a whole day. You might get readily into it. Either way, uh, that is it. And I will see you after this homework in the next video. It's totally not homework. Hi everyone. Hey, it is me in the real life. And um, in this video, we are getting into the real life because I want to uh, show you how to make a t-shirt. Not this one, this one's cool, but I want you to show, we're gonna take our designs and make it into this one. And terrible jump cut. There you go. Uh, I put zero effort into that transition, but most importantly, I've got a shirt. Okay, so we make this together in a little bit. Um, but yeah, digital, real world, good fun. Uh, I'm gonna hand you back to the slightly younger version of myself and we're gonna get started making this sweet t-shirt. Came out all right. Thank you, future Dan. Uh, how did the shirt come out? I'm interested because that was future me. I haven't made the shirt yet. Hope it looked all right. Even if it didn't, I'm gonna show you the steps to make it. Uh, the reason why is that Illustrator is such a like gateway creative tool to so many things. Like we do digital stuff, okay, but there's so many practical physical things that Illustrator is like the starting design point for. And I wanna show you those in real life and show a few of them in the course. Also, I wanna mention here that this is gonna be the last thing we do together. Boo! At least in this particular YouTube video. And um, remember, this is just like the first chunk of my larger Illustrator Essentials course. There's like another, I don't know, 85% to do, okay? There's so many things to make. I give away this free chunk to uh, get you kind of started, hopefully kind of got started, um, but also just to kind of, I don't know, get you excited about Illustrator and show, you know, there's so much more it can do. But even if it's not with me, okay, find some sort, some extra education. There's so much more to learn in Illustrator. So many cool things you can make. Illustrator is awesome. Uh, all right, making stuff. Let's go make the t-shirt. Actually, we need to make files first. Start on the computer. The file's ready for the print. All right, to get our files ready for on-demand printing, that's kind of like one-off t-shirts. I found a few ones that I'll kind of give you a quick run through. Okay, just companies that you can send your file off from Illustrator and they will send you back one t-shirt or allow you to start a store and start selling your shirts. So let's look at that first. Okay, basically it's the same as printing in-house like I'm gonna do, but let's get this file working. Okay, so first of all, create a new document because you might have junk all over this file. Just grab everything you need not the background, okay, because I don't want that. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go to File New, make a new document. I'm not worried too much about um, the uh, size at the moment because we're gonna resize it. Pick, again, Web, mainly because it goes RGB. Most of the uploading, uh, you know, the print-on-demand sites, they will say you need to use RGB. They don't wanna see CMYK. Not for the kind of one-off printing they do. They have special RGB goodness to make the colors really bright. I'm gonna leave mine at pixels just to show you to go between millimeters and inches is not hard. So let's go, I've gone portrait, okay, because I've used it before. I'm gonna paste this in. And first thing we need to do is tidy it up. Who remembers the shortcut to um, viewing the X-ray vision mode, the outline mode? Nice work, you remembered. Command Y or Control Y on a PC, and mine is fine. What you can do is just grab it and kind of move it around. We can undo this, but just give it a wiggle around just to see if there's anything kind of like lurking. This can cause problems, especially if you're going to things like embroidery machines or other kind of things that want to follow this path. The shirt's probably going to be fine, but it's good to go around, delete anything you don't need, join all the lines. I'm happy with that being nice. Next thing is I want to get it an appropriate size. How big do we want this on my t-shirt? So what I do is, let me jump out to the camera. So I grab my handy dandy measuring tool and I go, I got myself and I go like, oh yeah, about that big. 
um, about 180 millimeters, that looks good, seven inches. And then I print it off. And I print it off and I stick it to myself with the scientific uh, tape and say, yes, that is way too big. Look how big it is. <laughs> Luckily, I printed it off in the real world. And then I go back and I make a smaller version and I'm like, oh, this will be good. And then I'm like, yep, that is good. That is about, there's 140 millimeters and about five and a half inches. I Googled that all beforehand. I have no idea how to do the conversions, but I was like, yeah. It should probably be, be a pocket size, right? Like a cool pocket size thing for the store. But I want it kind of big and bold for this course intro. So that's the size I'm going for, maybe a little bit smaller. But yeah, that is the high tech solution I come up with. I just print it off and stick to myself. Um, there you go. So I've got a size, 130 millimeters, about five inches. I'm going to put that into Illustrator. It's going. Okay, so to get it the right size, I'm going to select it all, and you'll notice that we are on a width and height of, we're using pixels, it's not what I want. So what we can do is you can type in over the top any sort of measurement you like. Okay, so if I type in my original 180 um, millimeters, okay, so mm, make sure the link is on so the height and width change at the same time, hit enter on my keyboard, and that is exactly 180 millimeters. Say you want it to be five inches, put that in there, hit enter. Don't put five inches pixels. I didn't like that. So I'm going to delete everything off the field. Five inches. There we go. That is five inches. Let's see how close my calculations were. So I wanted it to be about 130 millimeters. Yeah, close enough. Okay, so we've got our fox the right size. Uh, the paper is not. Most of the time it won't cause any problems, but I like to wrap, make sure the artboard is perfectly around the outside. There's a nice easy trick to do this. Select. Uh, all of our fox or whatever thing you're exporting and go over to the artboard tool. Okay, this is the artboard tool that helps us resize the artboard, okay, the page we're working on. And what we can do is over here, there's some presets. Okay, so on your properties panel, click on this, scroll all the way up to the top and go to the one that says, I want you to fit the, um, uh, the artboard to the selected art. So just make the artboard what I've got selected. Boom, cool, huh? Now I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and I'm gonna export it. Before we export, just double check we're in RGB. You can kind of tell up there, RGB along the top. If it says CMYK, we need to change it. Okay, so we need to go to file and go to document color mode and go from CMYK to RGB. You'll notice your colors change a little bit. When we get to the color section of this course, I'll explain it a bit more. I know I keep kind of saying I'll do it later on, but RGB often, unless you're going to commercial print, is the way to go. And that's what all the print on demand sites want, RGB. So we're in RGB, how do we export it? We did some basic exporting earlier on. Let's do some slightly more advanced stuff. And um, so let's go to file. Let's go to this one that says export. And we're gonna to go to export for screens. This one's handy because it can export lots of different file types all at one go. Okay, and I've already demoed this, so let's tidy back up. And so basically we've got one artboard and we're gonna say, I'm gonna put mine on my desktop. I'm going to make a folder on my desktop. Actually, I've already got one. Let's use that same exporting one. Okay, I'm gonna click that, stick it somewhere, uh, open it after export, fine, create subfolders is normally on. I'm gonna turn that off. And down here, we can decide what we want. So most sites will accept PDFs, but some sites don't. So let's add all the kind of flavors that might be um, useful and give us a good result. So uh, from format, choose PDF. From this one here, this one's kind of fancy for when you're doing mobile devices, um, kind of uh, UX design. We're gonna ignore all that and just go, I want them all just one size. You don't want them three times the size, just one X the size. Okay, so we're gonna do PDF. The next best is going to be an SVG and then the final one is gonna be a PNG. Widely used, great quality, not as much used. PNG, um, not as great as these ones, okay? The file format will look and print fine. These ones will look better, but some sites only accept PNGs and that's just the way it is. And um, we talked about WebP, it's kind of new. Most of those sites don't accept it, so you might export that one here as well. You can add a scale. Uh, I want it just one size, and I'm gonna go WebP. And then you hit export and kick back, relax, and look, I've got artboard one, Okay, I've got a PDF, I've got a PNG version, I've got an SVG version, and I've got a WebP version. And just kind of work in that order, okay? PDF, SVG, PNG, in terms of what they accept. Let me show you just a quick demo. So I use Printful quite a bit for work things, personal stuff, t-shirts you see in the course that I don't print myself. 
other ones that I've used that I like. There are so many out there. Look for print on demand. That's cool. That's kind of the general one. But I've used Spreadshirt loads. Uh, I've used Vistaprint loads. Uh, I've heard good things about Printify and Printful. There's so many different versions. Most of them want you to set up like a business to start selling your t-shirts because they want you to sell like hundreds of them. But pretty much all of them will allow you to order just one. So I'm going to go speed mode. I'm not going to take you through all of print form. It's going to get to the bit where we upload it, but we'll do it in fast mode so you can kind of see. Okay, they're all a little different, but eventually you find a t-shirt you like, and I'm going to pick, I'm going to use navy because that's the shirt that I've got in the office here, and I'm going to upload the design. They're all slightly different places. I'm going to upload a file, okay, and you should go and check the specs, but I've done it enough that it, as long as it's RGB and it's the right size and it's one of the formats, generally a PDF, I should be able to go in here and say you. Actually, let's upload the WebP, see what it says. Couldn't support that one. That's all right. PDF is still going to print great. I should have named it better. It's called Artboard 1. I'm going to click on it and skip to when it's loaded. Bam, it's in. Uh, and there you go, we've got a shirt. We can move the position around. Okay, we can resize it in here. There's lots you can do in a lot of these online editors. They're pretty amazing what you can do. Um, but that's it. We can hit order and print it. I'm not going to, because I'm going to make it myself. But the files are good. Even says, look, it's good, it's vector. That's lovely. But again, all of these print-on-demand sites are slightly different. One of those files will work. Look at all the cool things we can get it printed on. Look at us. Um, all right, let's go and get it ready for the vinyl cutter and we're going to print it on an actual t-shirt in real life right now. Okay, so uploading to the vinyl cutter that I've got, it's like a slicing machine, it's called a Cricut. Um, most people, it's a pretty common thing, Google it if you haven't seen Cricut. Um, really cool home use um, thing for cutting out stickers and card and all sorts of crafty stuff. And there's a free bit of software called Cricut Design Space, and that's what's going to control the little printer thing. So what files does it want? You can see there, a bunch of different files. It accepts lots of stuff. SVG is the best one for uh, this kind of work. Okay, so I'm going to go to Upload Image, and I get to use the SVG I've already exported earlier on when we did it for the print-on-demand stuff. Okay, and there's my SVG. Hello. There it is there. Okay, I'm going to upload it. I'm not going to go through all how Cricut works. Okay, the software, it'll change by the time we get there, but just give you a good sense of like how you can take your Illustrator files and I'm going to add it to the canvas. I'm going to say, let's make this thing and I'm going to add it to a roll of color that I've got. I'll show you in a sec. And because I'm going to print mine all on separate bits of color, that's one slice, that's another slice. Can you see all the different parts? They're all kind of rotated around to be as squished in the top left as possible. It's not to waste any of the um, vinyl. Okay, but there's all the different parts to my fox. Cool, huh? Let's jump out to the camera and I'll start printing some stuff off. This is the exciting stuff, making things. All right, so we stick it on the mat, shiny side down. Remember to mirror it because it's a t-shirt. Always forget that. Then, fire it in here. The white stuff's different. It's in a big, big giant roll. Now what we do is what we call weeding, which is a lot of just picking off the stuff you don't need. It's therapeutic uh, unless you've forgot to mirror it or cut the wrong side of the vinyl. Less therapy. Now we just have to iron them on. And why iron them on when you can invest in a giant blue heat press that does basically the same thing. Let me show you. Oh, holy smoke, this thing's heavy. Oh. Big blue. Here, I'm gonna stick it right in the middle.
kind of line it up with this printout oh, out kind of there. That looks good. Look. Get it nice and hot and then do that. Please hold. Wait for the nuclear fallout siren. Ah! And wait for it to cool. Tear it off and hopefully it sticks to the t-shirt. Jackpot. Step and repeat. brand colors but uh, I don't know. T-shirt's a little snug. <laughs> oh, awesome. So what do you think? Came out all right huh? Um, the colors aren't kind of on brand what I was hoping for for my special source company but it's what we had in the drawers so that is what it is but came out all right. Um, I hope you found it nice to kind of get off the software and see some practical applications of Illustrator and um, we do lots more in the course um, but uh, this is going to be us, the end of the um, our little session together here. Uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, make sure you give the video a like, uh, subscribe to the channel as well. And if you want to go further, um, basically we, if you start the course, okay, Illustrator Essentials, link in the description, um, you basically pick up exactly where we finish here. I'm saying goodbye and the course, we carry on with lots more of the course. We kind of start here. The next step is taking your brief further and you'll create all sorts of graphics to bring the brand to life. You'll explore creative brushes and lines and strokes to enhance your designs. And you'll be empowered to create seemingly impossible illustrations using the latest tools, uh, including the generative AI features in Illustrator. Super cool. You'll learn how to create and manipulate type like the pros do. You'll finally know where to go to pick great uh, type and color combinations. I'll share all the tricks of the trade. And once you've mastered a lot of these tools, we'll have fun together putting your knowledge into like creative action and experiment with cool effects. And you'll also learn how to turn anything into a vector illustration in seconds. Plus you'll learn how to get all of your graphics out of Illustrator easy for all sorts of cool applications. So come on, join me for the full course. Bye.